Still poorly? Yeah, but no worse than they expected. He's in the neonatal intensive care unit. Have you seen him? No, I tried to, they won't let me. But he's born now, you're his dad. Doesn't matter. I can't go in there unless Sarah gives a consent. Well, there's got to be something we can do. Well, the only thing we can do is just to stay on the premises, hang around. He's mine as well as hers, you know. She's got no right to keep me away from him. Better, eh? No, I don't want to. Let me talk to her. Sarah, darling, it's your gran. Come on, wake up. No. Don't you want to see your little baby boy? No. Oh, hold his little hand. Leave me alone. She's very tired. <sighs> she looks washed out. We'll wait till you feel better, love. No, I don't want him. She doesn't know what she's saying. Just give her time, eh? That garage, you know, it should be a gold mine. It pays the bills. Yeah, well, it won't pay Rosie's school fees, will it? There are no fees. Well, there will be. Oh, and that book's going to tell you how to pay them? Yeah. It says you shouldn't run a business without having a, a set of goals. It's like having a wish list. I know what's on your wish list. OK. Look, I'm not wasting money on that place, Sal. If Rosie's clever, she'll do well at Weatherfield High. No, she won't. Look, it don't matter anyway. We can't afford it. Well, we can if you increase your takings. Oh, I know. I'll charge everyone double. I'll do it. Don't be flippant. I'm determined to work out how to run that place better. Yeah, well, it'll take you a while, cos you don't know the difference between a spanner and a spare wheel. Yeah, well, maybe I don't. But with this book and a few hours' research, I'll easily show you how to boost your profit. <sighs> oh, yeah? Yeah. And it won't only be Rosie going to Oak Hill. Sophie will be going there, too. See you later. You're early. Mm. Impressed or what? Well, I know you're keen, but you don't have to prove it. Oh, I proved it yesterday. Another couple of months, the Queen's Award for Industry will be on it, Will. I should have brought you in years ago. Too true. I can't wait to put my money where my mouth is. Oh, yeah, well, talking about that, uh, you signed on the dotted line, but what about seeing a little bit of that cash, eh? Well, you'll get it the minute the house sale comes through. Give us an excuse to break open a bottle. What is it they drink up here? Stout? Anything they can bite the top off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be careful if I was you. You trying to scare me? If Janice Battersby's big gob hasn't done that already, you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, I've got nothing to worry about. I've said everything I can think of to her. She won't see him. She'll come round. He's her son. And Todd's. No, Gail. However much we hate that fact, we can't change it. Sarah nearly died because of Todd. Little Billy's problem started weeks ago. I mean, ages before we knew about Todd's other life. Well, the emotional upset hasn't helped. Well, of course it hasn't. But if Sarah only hears us raging against Todd, she'll never want to visit the unit, will she? Sarah doesn't want to visit the unit because... Because the baby reminds her of Todd. And that's what she can't accept. Well, can you blame her? No, of course not. But it's a little time. 
tiny baby. She'll grow to love him eventually. Bound to. Oh, I I'll have a gin and tonic. He hasn't offered you a drink yet. He was about to, weren't you? Gin and tonic, please, Bear. Coming up. Hello. Oh, hello. Shouldn't you be at work? It's a late start. I was just going out of the house when Tracy rang. Oh, so presumably she said something to make you look miserable. <sighs> she did, actually. What? She hasn't fallen out with Peter, has she? No, worse than that. The mind boggles. Thank you. No, she's uh, decided to stay down in Portsmouth. She's not coming home. Has she got off with a jolly Jack Tar? No. She's got an interview for a job in a flower shop. Oh, well, that's uh, good news. That makes sensible. Sensible? Leaving your grandmother on her own in a big house? What big house? A lonely house is a big house. It doesn't matter what the size is. We'll miss her too, Blanche. Not as much as I will. We won't see anything of Amy. That's what I was thinking. Look, you can go down south whenever you please. It's a long journey for an old woman. Oh, we'll take you with us. Look, you're jumping the gun. She hasn't even got the job yet. Well, I hope she doesn't get it. Little Amy's brightened up my life. I want to spoil her like a great-grandmother should. But I can't if she's at the other end of the country. I know how you feel. You don't. You can't. You, you've got each other. You're always welcome in our house. Yes. And you always let me know when I'm imposing. You can't understand loneliness when you live with someone. It's not so bad in the daytime. But night after night, and no one to talk to, no one to look at, no one to listen out for. Oh, give me that. I need it. Sarah? It's all right, it's me. Get out. Just go away, I don't want you here. Take me to see the baby. They won't let me in without you. No. Tell me how he is. I don't know, and I don't care. I don't want to see him. So just get out! No, take me. I won't hurt him. Love him. Get off me! Nurse! Martin! Sarah? Mum! Sarah! Hey, hey, get away from her! I want to see my son. You are joking, aren't you? I will. I've got rights. Oh, yeah? Who cares about your rights? I just want to look at him. He means as much to me as he, as he does to her. Just get him out. Nurse, get security. Please. I'm worried about him. He's sick. I love him. Oh, yeah? What do you know about love? you knew anything about love? You wouldn't put her through all this. I want my son! I'm Martin. I'm begging you, please, just let me see him. Yeah, mate, get rid of this fella. Come on. Sarah, help me! He's my son! me out. They won't let me see him. I don't deserve oh, this. Oh, no, you don't, love. He's mine. Yeah, never mind, so I know how you feel. They all hate me. I never meant to hurt anyone. I only want to see my son. And you will. When? When he gets better, when he comes home. But he won't know me then. You'll be across the street, love. Everything will be all right. Will it? Yes. We'll make it all right. You, me and Jason. But he's not just yours, he's ours. Mum, well, come on. Come on. Here you go. This should make you feel better. Drink it, love. How's the baby? Why don't you go and see for yourself? He's holding his own. He's a fighter. Um, the nurse has sent you this. Oh, he's tiny. Don't let Todd into him, will you? No, no. No one can see Billy unless you say so. I don't want to call him Billy anymore. That's the name me and Todd decided on. Well, it's your baby, love. You can call him whatever you like. I might think of something else. 
Have you seen him? No. Have you? No. He's been on his own all this time. Well, the nurses are there. I should be with him. Todd's right. I want to go to him. He'll need me. Well, you can go any time you like. But not right now. He's fine at the moment. Whereas you've had a shock. So have your drink. Calm yourself down. Rest up a while. And then can I see him? Yes. Of course you can. Girls are talking about you. Good. At this stage, they should be slagging you off. A couple of them fancy their chances. A couple? I normally do better than that. If you were to take their good bits, bang them all together, you'd still end up with an organism way down the food chain. Added to that, they've all been round the block, up the street, over the viaduct, and twice across the red wreck. And what about yourself? I'll tell you sometime. <laughs> it's size in bevel. What charity does he work for? Oh, she can pull them all right. She can't hang on to them, though. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's bothered. It's just another boss man. You're jealous because you won't get a look in. Oh, I see. Are you claiming him for yourself, are you? I might give him the once over. See how I feel. You'd run a mile. <laughs> Shall we uh, go back to work? Yeah. <laughs> I can come in with you. Oh, thanks, but I'm all right. Yes. She should have him to herself for a little while, eh? I just want to tell him I'm sorry about the way he was born. There's no need. Just tell him you love him. I will. We all love him. Yeah. We hold this for me. Oh. So little and tiny. Yeah. Can I touch him? Of course you can. Just put your hand in gently. Exhausted. Thanks to Todd. Oh, Gail, come on, put yourself in his place. Do you, I don't understand why you're on his side after all he's done. Well, I'll tell you, when I was having you, your father didn't even know which hospital I was in. He didn't care. But Todd does care. He's not another Neil Ferns. No, he's worse. Well, at least he's here. Neil didn't even give a glance in Bethany's direction. We didn't want him involved. But Todd wants to be involved. He wants to support his child. And if we ignore him, we're just going to let Sarah have even more years of some kind of half-life. I know. I did it. Sarah doesn't want him. Well, she might. I mean, if not for herself, for the baby. Oh, ma'am. Oh, look. They made this child together. And at least when he was conceived, they loved each other. Right? Your father never loved me. Did it matter? Yes. And it matters even more for Billy. I mean, a, a boy needs a man in his life. A man? Well, a father. I mean, Todd's still capable of being a father. Well, I don't think he is. <sighs> and anyway, it's not a role I want him to play. Yes, well, it's not your decision. Something's happening. What? Calling the nurses over. Oh, no, they'll just be checking you quick now. Oh, it's worse. I think I wasn't coming. Well, now you turn up. Do you know, I've been to every garage and every showroom. I'm just full of ideas. There's nowhere for customers to wait for a start. We're on the street. Rovers, Rose Rolls. Oh, we need a reception area. We need coffee machine, biscuits. I'll tell you what, I'll put the lads in waiting uniforms if you'd like. Other garages work faster than you do. That's why the customers wait for their cars, because there's no point in going home. You start selling coffee, boss, you'll need bogs. Yes, I've thought of that. I don't know where we're going to put them now. On the roof. So, uh, have you come into some money then, Kev? No, why? Well, it sounds like you're going to be spending thousands. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to earn it first. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Wait, why have you took Sally on now? He took me on the day he married me. Now he's going to reap the benefits. Oh, I'll get, get lost. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> dog's dinner or what? <laughs> Is that top new, then? It is, actually. Did you run it up yourself? Well, oh, I wish I had a trade. You look gorgeous. Are you going on a date? Maybe. Yeah, she's got her eye on Danny Baldwin. Well? She's that desperate. <laughs> You're that jealous. Do you want a drink or are you waiting for him to buy you one? Give us a pint. Just the thing to enhance your femininity. 
She's no competition. He's coming over. Watch how she throws herself at him. A lesson in how not to do it. Well, I've got to say, you girls are one hell of an eyeful outside factory hours. <laughs> we were just saying what decent lighting will do for a girl. Well, the lights in here must be fabulous. <laughs> Why don't you come down this end of the bar? Because he likes the company up this end. Oh, I'm sure he's spent enough time with you lot today. Can I get you a drink, Danny? No, oh, don't know what to say. I'm sport for choice. Just take the booze. You don't often get things for free in this pub. A well-stocked bar and a bevy of beauties. That's my idea of paradise. Just think of Janice and Company as the fallen angels. They're usually half cut by this time of night. Oh, I don't believe that. You will when you get to know them better. I can't wait. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Dinner's in the oven. Time for a quick drink? Um, I don't think so. Look what's heading towards us. Oh, let me guess. It's old, it's lonely, and it wants someone to talk to. And it's sick, or it's hurt itself, and it wants to move back in. Hello, Mother. I fell over. No. Oh, that's terrible. Have you hurt yourself? Not physically. Well, not very much. But you're psychologically damaged. I'm in turmoil. I can't stay in that house by myself. Well, what if Tracy doesn't get the job and comes straight home? Oh, she won't. She's gone for good. Oh, dear Ken. I don't know what we can do about that, do you? It's a difficult one. Have I to stand here all night? No. Your bed's already made up. In fact, I never unmade it. I'm not keen on that lumpy mattress, but it's better than nothing. We're going to the Rovers. Oh, I'll be along later. I could do with a brandy to steady my nerves. No point fighting it. Appeasement. Peace at any price. Come on. I'll come with you this time, Todd. I can't go back, Jason. They'll call the police. Well, what if you rang and apologised? Why should he go and grovel to them, eh? So he can see his son. That's what we want. Don't know what to do. Shall I get it? No. Could be the hospital. <sighs> Hello? Todd, it's Audrey Roberts. Audrey? Uh, look, I can't say much, but uh, I think you should be here. Will Sarah let me see him? I think she will now, yeah. I'll come straight away. Thanks, Audrey. Todd, listen. I can see him. Oh, great. Is he a bit better? Well, he must be. Come on, we'll all go. Run over to the street, Carl, so we can get a taxi. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are going. <laughs> How long are you going to hang around? I can't do out while he's in the gents. You haven't done out for the past half hour. He was talking to Mr Baldwin. Yeah, and now Mike's gone home. You're still not going to get anywhere with Danny. <laughs> you want to bet? Here he is. <sighs> oh, 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 hard luck. Bev's intercepted him. Well, he is a man and conscious. <laughs> so, uh, are you just going to sit here and watch? No. So, you got the rest of the night to yourself? Looks like it. Well, if you need any help filling up the empty hours... Oh, no, I've got plenty to do. Don't be lonely, will you? No way. It's not my style. Mr Baldwin? Yeah? Danny? Uh-huh? Can I have a word? Sure. I wanted to ask you out. It's the 21st century. Women don't need to sit tight and hope for the best anymore. Do they? No, they don't. So, what do you fancy? Uh, another pub, uh, another drink, a meal? Well, you know, Sonia, that's really nice of you. And um, I'm very touched. Are you? Yeah, I am, yeah. Touched and grateful. Grateful? Yeah. You see, the fact is, I don't date employees. I'll have to add my notice in there. No need. No? No. Sorry. That changes things. I suppose it does, yeah, but like I say, I'm sorry. No problem. Hmm. No hard feelings? No. Good. See you tomorrow, then? Yeah. At work? Yeah. Best place? Yeah. Oh, oh night, Sonia. Night, Sonia. Night. Night. <laughs> so, you don't like the pushy type? 
can't say I do. No, I don't either. They get what they deserve. Yeah, but you can't blame a girl for trying. A girl, yeah? You obviously prefer a mature woman. Yeah, well, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't need things spelling out. Neither do I. A little subtlety goes a long way. It certainly does. Sunita's very attractive, isn't she? Bev, don't put words into his mouth. Well, he might say no. That'll be the day. So, why don't we get together sometime? Get together and do what? Well, we can decide that later. What do you say? I'll think about it. Good. I look forward to it. Ta-da. Thanks. Oh, you must be so disappointed. It's his choice. Men always go for young stuff, love. Every time. Stay here. Don't let you go any further. Right. Good luck, mate. Thanks. Go on. Say hello from Granny Grimshaw. I know, Queen Jason. Gail, Audrey. What are you doing here? I can see him now. Oh, Todd, you didn't let me finish talking. About what? Well, you put the phone down. I rang back, but there were no reply. Well, yeah, we came straight away, all of us. I know me, Mum and Jason can't see him, but... I'm sorry. Sorry? He was holding his own all day, but then he seemed to get worse, you know? And they said it might happen. They did everything they could. What do you mean? Well, they thought he might pull through. Well, you... You told me... Well, because he was so ill, love. He died, Todd. Billy died. and your birthday wasn't too hideous. That's, that's it, really. You don't have to ring me back if you're, you know, tied up and that. OK, bye. Oh, and uh, I hope everything's all right with Sarah and the baby. Bye. Look, at least ring the hospital. See if you can talk to someone, get them to explain. I only wanted to see him. I know, love. Sure demanded to see him, mate. Jason. Are you sticking up for him? Go and make your brother some toast. I don't want any. But I mean it, love, ring the hospital, cos you're not going to get anything out of the plats and it might help you. Well, I suppose one good thing's come out of it. Them lot are out of your life now. So that's a good thing then, is it? That my baby's dead? I never said that. If that's what you meant, Jason. He didn't mean that, love. I meant you can start again, can't you? We're having to think about Sarah. Well, it's a shame a kid didn't die earlier then, isn't it? Oh. Well, if it is Sunita Danny's after, you'd better hope that she's less mithered about keeping work and relationships separate. Eh? You have lost me. <laughs> well, if she sells him supper, he becomes a punter, and that's work, isn't it? Can we drop it now, please? Hey, come on, Sonia. No shame in being knocked back by a bloke with a code of conduct. <laughs> Went out with Dev, though, Sonia, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, and that's work, isn't it? Yeah, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching. So? He's had enough work out of us to last him the week. When your mouth is giving it that, the needle isn't giving it that. Oh, looks rude, that. Rude? And working hours? 
Got a lot of that. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm beginning to think my first boss had it absolutely right. He would never let his girls talk back to him. Did he have a strict code of conduct as well, then? No bullshit. He had what was called a rollicking mat. When you went in his office, there it was, laid out on the floor. A mat? Yeah. Sounds funny, doesn't it? Unless, of course, you was the one stood on it, getting the rollicking. Well, I'm surprised you were allowed soft floor coverings. I mean, doesn't that just encourage people to mix work and pleasure? <laughs> right, can we drop it now? I know this is hard for you, but I'm afraid the birth has to be registered. And then the death as well. We know. Shall I carry on? OK. Father's name. It's Grimshaw. Who let you in? I'm the baby's father. Was. Or was his father. That's what she asked Gail. Is he the father? Yes. Can you spell your name for me? Yeah. Um, G-R-I-M-S-H-A-W. Todd. And the baby's surname? Platt. Platt. Yes? Yes. Any first names? No. Yeah, there was. There was no first name. Sarah, we named him. There was no first name. There was nothing. He was nothing. Okay, come on. Out. Boy, she doesn't need you. Out. You've no right to be anywhere near her. Do you understand? Your part in her life is over. Her baby is dead. I never saw him. I can't picture him in my head. And now she's taken away his name. What am I meant to remember? I try and imagine him and there's nothing there. I've got to get back. I can't do this, Mum. I'm sorry, but we do have to register the death. Can't I do it for her? We do prefer a parent. He can do it. It's his fault. Get Todd to do it. Would you like me to ask him? She's a collect monkey, she's a kid, did Claire. This was a favourite, Lana. So hello, Lana. Where did you get her? Well, you know, I had to. Not for a three month anniversary. Well, she obviously thought it were important. She'll be disappointed in you. It were only a joke present. Well, I should get down to them shops and get her something proper. I'll go to the shop and help Boris. Proper? Fred, bitters off. Right. Aye. I would be thinking somewhat along the lines of somewhat gold that'll go on her finger. That's somewhat me and Claire ain't ready for, Dad. Of course you are. You've got a lot of ground to make up, you. Disappoint her now, and she could break your heart later. You could be on the first step of losing her, so think on. He's always getting on at me, isn't he? Hey? Well, I suppose it's one up on an imaginary friend. You are. I'm sorry, I'll have to serve you. There's no one younger or prettier available. Yeah, a bit all or nothing, ain't you? I thought you and me were going to grow old together, flirting across this bar like some gangster and his mole, meeting through the grill of a nick, looking, but never touching. <laughs> What can I get you? You don't have any local flats going, do you? Now, why would you want to move round here? Oh, you see, that's more like it. What's your budget? Why, well, might you know somewhere? I might do, if you're serious. I might be. What you got? Two bed, fully furnished, immediate let with a fair and friendly landlady who won't meddle. All I need now is your signature. It blank, his first name. It was blank on the birth register. It's best it's the same for the death. Yeah, but we decided weeks back, I, s I swear we'd agreed. I'm sure you had, but I have to consider the mother's feelings. And what about mine? I'm sorry. Thank you for your time. He was Billy. Please. I'm sorry I didn't get you anything on the actual day. Well, 
the three month day. I made too big a deal of it. They were only meant to be a daft thing. No, you didn't. No, it's set a notice. Says my dad's been getting at me. Wait, what? Well, he says I'm not trying enough. He says tech thing's too slow. And he thinks I might lose you. Well, you're gonna have to tell him. I have no intention of being lost. And I don't want to rush things either. Honest, I'm happy the way things are. If he had his way, he'd have me marching you straight to the jewellers. <laughs> is that what he said? He says what the lass wants is a gold thing on her finger. She wants no tells, I say no tells. <laughs> Take no notice of him. I've got just what I want. Well, for now. 2004 yep. minus yep. 1964. Yep. Well, that's easier. It's 40. 40? Yep. Exhibit A, Dev Allahan, 21st birthday party. 1985. 21 <laughs> in 1985. 1985 <laughs> minus 21 equals, um... That's not me! 1964. 1964 from 2004 equals, according to your maths, 40. So why tell me you're 39? You've stolen a whole year of your life from me, not to mention a significant birthday. Well, Dan, that's not me. What do you mean, stolen? So to make up for the next year, yeah. every minute I spend with you has to be double as good. Starting now. Yeah, but babe, that's... You see, this particular girl, you know, the one I asked out, well, I want to take her out tonight. A drink, a bit of dinner, you know the stuff. Anyway, so what would you, as a woman, and you are a beautiful woman, what would you advise me was the best way to get this girl out on a date while still letting her play hard to get? Well, she'd probably want to turn you down twice. Um, you know, to give him the third time a dignity. Ah, I see. Well, I asked her out last night, so that's once. Why not ask her out for lunch? Bang on. Come to lunch. Calm. I've had my lunch break. Got it. She's playing hard to get. What about dinner? OK. Meet me in the Rover, 7.30. Yeah. I'll be there. First date. First shy steps to romance and you choose the Rovers with all eyes watching you next class. Yep. I'll be upstairs if you need me, right? Oh, Sarah. I'm not come to talk about that. Oh. I know that baby was your son. And I know his death is affecting you very deeply. I trust you. Please, just let me speak. I've come to say I don't want to know what you're going through. And I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, but I've just not got enough room for it in my head. I've only got so much to give right now. And all that belongs to Sarah. And believe me, it barely feels enough for her. So, I'm giving you this. And don't think of this as forgiveness, because that's something I'm not able to offer you. It's to ease my conscience so I can concentrate on what's important in all this. Seeing my daughter through an unbearable time. Please, stay away from us. Coming out of there. So? So what do you think you're doing, you trip? Hey! Hey, hey! Don't you what's dare going speak on? to me! Yeah, like leave that. him, leave him, I'll handle him! You get back here! Come on, let's go inside. Uh, Martin. Not now, Katie. So what is it? Hmm? <laughs> it's an appointment for what? The health check. Sure, what do I need a health check? <clears throat> is it because you found out I was like a 40? <laughs> I've got one too. All oh, right, so you're wanting me to have a check up to make sure I haven't passed my sell by date. <laughs> no. Uh, what? You don't want to commit until you find out the goods aren't faulty? I want us to have a long and healthy life together. Oh, you're just going to have to chance it, dear. Please. No. To show we want to be around for each other? No. 
I booked it because I love you. Give an hour of your life to this. And when you get back, I'll give an hour of mine to anything you'd like to do, deal? Anything? Is Shelley in? Oi! Who's at the shop? I've just locked up for two minutes. I need a change. Shelley's out. When's she back? No, I don't know, love. I'm not a keeper. I can take a message. No, it's nothing. Wouldn't have out to do with a fella, this nothing. I best get back. Funny, I thought you wanted change. Oh, this stuff. Hey, are they snogging? <laughs> Maybe. She's ordering some custom pants. Yeah, what a thumb. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I shall see you later then. It's a date. I look forward to it. Right. Were you girls talking again? Well, then that was your break. So, break's over. Get on with it. No, 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 no. I'll be going for my break now. Oh, All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course it is, Bolshe. Just pop in the office for a sec first, eh? So, uh, it's the, the she what's it then? Are you rollicking that? That's the one. Your voice is starting to screech inside my head. Well, I can't help that. Shut up. I think it's time I set an example. But I'm a decent bloke. So I'm going to give you a choice. Either you show that lot out there how fast a girl can learn to stop pushing me we can show them how fast a girl is out of a job if she don't. Well, you can't sack me. I won't have to, darling. You keep doing what you're doing, and I'll make your life so miserable, you'll be all over them job pages like a rash. So you've got a choice. Get the attitude right out there, or make an enemy in here. And... You wouldn't want me as an enemy. So that's decided, isn't it? Isn't it? Good. I'm glad we've had this little chat. Get to know each other a little bit better. No hard feelings. Well, our workshop is free. Pardon? You're right, I should. That's the organ grinder. Well? Well, I took your advice about Claire's present. Did you? Oh, Ashley. Well, where is it? Why aren't it on her finger? Shall I? Quick sticks. I'm proud of you. What did I tell you? That lass is like sunshine itself. Well, it's a big commitment, but Claire reckons she's ready for it. Of course she is. Mind you, I don't know about it being gold. It seemed a bit yellow in shop. White gold, yellow gold, sky blue, pink gold. Women don't mind the details. Gold. And a snug fit on that important finger. Oh, I said all right. She's called Marigold. Is there lots of granddad Marigold? Is it not what you meant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I give up on you two. I say, I give up. I'll have to get that back room redecorated. I ain't got much call for a nursery. Well, so long as it's now garish. And it'll have to come out of the rent, you know, till it's done. You wouldn't want me paying for a room I couldn't use. Why don't you just squeeze the very blood out of me veins and dip your roller in that? Of course, if you're uh, losing out on some of the first month's rent, you know, you'll need more of a commitment from me. More than three months? Six. You'll rent for six? I reckon. What are neighbours like? You've shook on it now. Can't go back on a shake. <laughs> Will you come and do a free haunting? I beg your pardon? I said, I think moving up here is going to be a bit daunting. I'll just put this in the outside bin so that your dad do not see it. You can't stop me sending my boyfriend a birthday card. Katie, you'll not do yourself any favours. With my dad? With Martin. These pregnancy scare things are awful frightening. I had a couple with you. Your dad were climbing up the walls. Exactly. And when it settled down and all back to normal, I do not want him looking back thinking, uh, where was Katie when I was going through all that? And you don't want him thinking, why were Katie hassling me when I was going through all that? I am not hassling. 
It's only a birthday card. A funny one, so he... I don't think I've been heavy. Oh, he's pain though. Katie, why don't you wait till Sarah gets home? I want him to know that I understand that her and a baby are what's important at the moment. And that I'm here for him when he is ready. I'm not even going to knock. I'm just going to put it through the door. I miss him, Mum. I sleep last night. I can't try to imagine what he'd look like. And all I knew was he's dead. And then I get these pictures in my head. Well, you can forget them now. Because you can see him. He's just a normal baby. He's just not meant for this world. It, it was going to make sense of it all, of, of me. So... I'd have known what I was. Cos of all the other stuff about who I am, gay or straight or a waste of space, everything people have said about me, that would have come second. Cos first I'd have been a father. And nothing could change that. And I thought no one could take that away from me. You have to go back to bed! I'm not staying here! You're not well enough to go! You can't make me! Sarah, she wants to go. Oh, why is there baby? He's okay. Why are they still alive? What did I do? Nothing. You told me he'd be okay. Well, we thought you let me sit with him and hold his little hand. Oh, sweetheart. Why didn't you tell me? Come here. No, just get off me. What did I do? Nothing. You did nothing. Oh, get off me. Shh. Why didn't anybody tell me he was going to die? It's all right. I've got you. You're okay. Why did anybody tell me? Did my mum tell you? What? Why she were creeping around tops? Please, David. Everyone's trying to do what's best for Sarah. We need you to do the same. What? And forget about what he's done? Look, I know you can't forget it, but you're going to have to put these feelings away somewhere. The best way to do that is to concentrate on Sarah. Just try not to think about him. Look, go and get a couple of sausage bones, will you, from Roy's? Go on. I was uh, just going to put it through. Thanks. Open it. I bet everyone ignored your birthday, didn't they? Maybe once Sarah's home, I could take Is this you a out. joke? Well, yeah. I mean, it was It's meant to be funny. It's to say... I know where your head is at the moment. You knew that Sarah was rushed to hospital, right? Yeah, I know that. You didn't think it worth finding out how she is before buying rubbish cards like this. Well, she's all right, isn't she? No, she's not all right. The baby's dead. <sighs> I didn't. I didn't even know. You don't think, do you? You just don't think. How was I meant to know? Uh, by asking. <sighs> you have been avoiding me. No. I've been looking out for my grieving daughter, my ex-wife and my lad. Don't me to carry you as well? No. When I'm going out with someone, I imagine that while I'm looking out for everyone else, she could be looking out for me. I want to. Yeah, well, obviously, you can't. Look, that was just a mistake. Oh, yeah. Too right. And so was us even thinking we can go out together. <gasps> Martin, what? Get off me, will you? Right, just go on. Take your stupid card with you. And I don't want to see you here again. Ever. No, you're not on. I'm going home. Just do the fan. No. We need to clear the forecourt. I don't care. We've had Mike's nephew making snide comments about us blocking access to the factory. Well, you shouldn't go accepting more jobs than we can handle. Well, if we all pull together like a team... Well, you should talk to us before you go taking jobs at a quarter to five on a Friday and telling them they'll be ready next morning. Well, you are the man. He was desperate. He's got two bookings tomorrow. He needs his van. Yeah, and we've still got two MOTs and a service to do tonight. And I told Kevin weren't working late. That van can stay there all weekend as far as I'm concerned. Hey, watch my lips. I am not touching it. There's no I in team. <laughs> Do you think that's going to make me change my mind? <laughs> well, remember this. Well, let him go, Sam. I'll come in early tomorrow to get it done. And when you do want overtime, you're going to be the bottom of the list. Look, he said he wanted an early dart and he's worked his socks off today. Yeah, he's not the only one. 
Happy birthday, Grandad, it says. <laughs> it was meant to cheer him up. Look, you weren't no yeah, love. I want to be there for him, Mum. And he just said us getting back together it was a mistake. He thinks I'm even more of a stupid kid now. Oh, Martin. <sighs> Dad, before you even start... Just forget him, Katie. You've got your whole life in front of you. Just put him out of your mind. Don't give him a second thought. Tom, Sarah's lost the baby. Yeah, his grandchild is dead. Try putting that out of your mind. Come on, love, I'll put the kettle on. You coming in? I'm gonna have to work late again. I'm sorry. What you working on there, then? Just a standard contract, and I'm making a few amendments. What do you mean, a few amendments? I'm changing knickers into houses. So, what do you mean? I shook on a deal today. I'm meant to be renting the gaff across the road. What, that one over there? Yeah, good, good price on it and all, but I want everything down in black and white so as the old bird who owns the gaff don't back out on me. And houses or hosiery, it's all the same, innit? A contract's a contract. She ain't gonna know the difference. Well, are you sure you want to live around here? Well, to be fair, once I've given you the money for my art for this place, I'm gonna be a bit strapped for cash, and I? So I'll just have to rough it till I get myself sorted out. you change your mind? you start feeling guilty about leaving your workmates in the lurch? Or did you finally realise that a business like this can't afford to turn work away? I've just found out that Sarah Platt's baby's dead. So I'm going to get that clowns van fixed and out of the way so they don't have to look at it all weekend. All right. You know... Sooner or later, we're going to have to start thinking about the funeral. I don't, I don't want to talk about funerals. It's um, Bethany's birthday next Wednesday. We need to organise that. And I haven't got a thing yet. I need to get to the shops and get out of here. And when you're staying where you are, we can do all that. Do you know what she wants? She wants a baby Annabelle. No, if she, if she wants a baby Annabelle, that's what she's going to have. Don't see why she should miss out, because... She can have whatever she wants. And she's going to have a party. And I'm going to bake her a cake and everything. She got me to register the death because she thinks it's my fault. It's nobody's fault. No, she's right. Well, if Sarah wants to blame you because it makes her feel better, then fine. There's no point in you blaming yourself. It just happened. It's medical, that's all. It's nothing to do with anything you or Sarah did. It just happened. Things don't just happen, Mum. They happen for a reason. If I hadn't put her under so much stress... Women lose babies every day. They're not all under stress. But Sarah was. And I did it to her. Don't torture yourself, Todd. When I was told that Billy had died... I felt it right here. Because what happens in here can be affected by what's going on up there. You wouldn't get butterflies otherwise. Only this wasn't butterflies. It was a bomb going off. Gutted, they call it. Gutted's what I am. And it's what she was when she found out what I'd done to her. And it's not all in your head. It's a real physical thing inside you. And you'll never convince me that what I put her through, what I did to her, didn't kill our baby. Taxi for Buffo. Am I glad to see you. Rush home in 20 minutes. Can you do it? Yeah. Why? Where'd you live? <laughs> Rush home. Yeah, I mean that. There's a lot of taxi or what? Yeah, he does. I've got a party to get to in Rush home. How much will it be? About six quid. Cheap as chips. Wouldn't you say, Dave? Dev. Dev. <laughs> yes, a bit price, mate. Right then. Right then. Let's go. <laughs> oh, where? Uh, Thanks for sorting the cab for me, Dave. <laughs> oh, hey, nasty twitch you got there, Dave. You're going to be late. Yeah, come on, what are you waiting for? Hi, who's your friend? Don't know. Uh, can I have a white wine here, please, Dave? Oi, Dave! Yeah! What a bobby dazzler! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good job of not taking my blood pressure now. So you had your medical, then? Mm-hmm. And what did they test? Ever since they set my patients and then they sent in the clown. 
And was everything OK? Well, there's a couple of results I have to wait for, but if the doctor was a policeman, then he'd arrest me for wasting his time. I'm fit as a fiddle. Good. And you? Fitter. Ah, <laughs> so you did go, because it looks more like you've been shopping. Of course I went. Mm-hmm. And so did I. And you said that I could have an hour of anything if I did, do you remember? Mm. Mm. Take a look in the bag. <sighs> Shopping. Mm, no. Nope. That's what I was wearing before I went for the medical. I'm completely naked underneath this coat. How's your blood pressure now? It really has to go home. Oh, I think I'd rather have a drink. Mm. Bring them over. There's a good boy. Two pound twenty, please, Dev. Dev? Dev? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Martin! Martin, hang on a minute. Look, Tommy. This is about Kay. Just forget it. No, it's not. I heard about what happened to the baby. And I just want to say, well, what can you say? Not much. I'm sorry. Listen, mate, there's anything we can do. Yeah, I know. Cheers, Ken. Oh, Sarah. Uh, she's not great. Listen, I'm just going to get a few clothes and I'm going to get back to the hospital. They didn't know what caused it yet. I mean, they didn't know if it's got anything to do with... What happened with the other fella? Oh, I don't suppose it helped. I'd break his neck if he did that to my daughter. Yeah, but that'd be your reaction to everything, wouldn't it, Tony? I'm just saying, that's all. Look, I'll leave you to it. Do you know, I almost envy him. Wish I was thick enough to think that breaking someone's neck can make everything feel better. But however you look at it, Todd's lost his son. What's the point of taking out on him? No one could blame you if you did. I just feel so useless, Kevin. I mean, you're supposed to look out for your kids, aren't you? Make sure nothing bad happens to him. You can't blame yourself. Well, who else can I blame? I've got all this anger, Kev. Who else can I take care of? Very switched. Hi. It's good. Where are you off to looking like that? Well, I've got a date with your new boss, if you must know. Have you now? Is he not here yet? Oh, should he be? Oh, no, I'm early. I hope he doesn't let you down. He was working late tonight, though, wasn't he? Er, um, yeah, he, he said he had a lot on. Yeah, well, the lot he's got on is me. My cousin married this man. Played squash twice a week. Went running, cycled. He had everything. PhD, his own business, lovely big house. And cancer. 41, he was diagnosed. 42, he was dead, leaving her on her own with two kids. Doctors told her that if he had regular checkups, they could have caught it and saved his life, which is why I think it's really important to. Are you listening to me? <laughs> what? What was I just saying? Yeah, what's something about your uncle? I was talking about my cousin's husband with terminal cancer. Right. I'm sorry, right? It's just really hard, you know, to concentrate on a story when you know the storyteller is uh, dying. Let's just, just finish their drinks and let's get home. Yeah. Mm, pleasure deferred is a pleasure multiplied, darling. Enjoy the anticipation, mm. savour the moment. That's what I think Sunita's doing. I'll just go get us another <sighs> couple of drinks, shall I? just got the impression you were a you know, cockney wide boy, you know the sort. Not the type of man you could rely on. He'll be here. I hope so. Tell you what, love, if he does leave you standing on your own all night, done up like a dog's dinner. Well, there's no chance of that, is there? No. But if he does, we'll make him pay for it Monday morning, won't we, Jan? Oh, we will. He won't do that. Well, I wouldn't put it past him. Neither would I. He's not that bad, is he? I wouldn't say he was bad. No, just untrustworthy. Oh, let me buy you a drink. What's your? Hiya. I've got a cab outside. What do you want to do? Stay or go? Let's go. Maybe some other time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a nice evening. We will. 
it'll all end in tears. I feel sorry for her. Like a lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> I wasn't sure you'd turn up. Why not? Well, no one else seems to think you would either. Oh, are you kidding? Wild horses wouldn't keep me away. I was just getting my landlady to sign the lease on my new property. Of course, she took some talking round, but I got it there in the end. Hello, mate. Can I have a bottle of Chateau Neuf de Pat, please? Are you sure? What, you're not keen? No, that'd be fine, thanks. Good. Oh, of course, I forgot this beautiful lady is a purveyor of fine wines, but a bottle of Chateau Neuf will hit the spot. Don't you worry about that. Cheers, mate. Well, it must be good, is it? I don't know, I was going by the price. <laughs> There's no need to go over the top, you know. Listen, I don't want you to think I'm the sort of bloke who's too quick out of the traps. Slow and steady wins the race, especially with a beautiful lady. Do you wear knickers? Of course I do. <laughs> Good, then this is research. <gasps> and it's all tax deductible. <sighs> what? As far as the accountant's concerned, it's like a consumer survey. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Yes, but as far as we're concerned, it's just a nice meal and a chance to get to know each other. And I promise I will never mention your unmentionables again. In fact, from now on, they are completely out of bounds. Listen, lads, I really appreciate this. I'll tell you what, Kev, appreciate it in hard cash. Yeah, I will do. Look, I know it's been tough with Sally around sticking her nose in. Yeah, well, are you going to have a word with her? Because we can't carry on like this, you know. I will do. I'll talk to her. Do it tonight when you get home. Look, yeah, I will. I'm as fed up about this as you two are. I think he will. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. And even if he does, will she take any notice? <laughs> right under the thumb. Yeah. Patrick! What the hell are you doing? Look at my coat. Sorry, sorry. Give it in. I'll get it dry for you. Get off. I'll wipe it down. Yeah, it's OK. Really. I'll, I'll put it under the hand dryer in the gents' Look, box. There's no need. Come on, take it off. It's not cold. <sighs> I'm perfectly capable of drying my own coat. Thank you very much. Shall we go, Dev? What's she doing wearing a coat? It's June. Yeah, but did she actually have anything on Shut under? up! But did she? Shut up! What are you doing with a, a, a horn and a balloon? Your mate, Buffo. But Buffo is not my mate. Well, he had no money. And the party he was doing won't box him off in advance, so I'll let him pay me in kind. With a, a horn and a balloon? In the shape of a dog. I was telling him about my dog, right? And about how you won't let me have him in the cab with me. The next thing I know, I look over my shoulder, and he's made me this. Wicked, isn't it? Are you coming? What's wrong with you? What about her? Oh, coat and no knickers. Mm, I know what you mean. No, seriously. All coat. Now underneath. In your dreams. Well, I bet Sanita's not far off that stage by now. You probably think I'm a bit of a cliche. Well, I like nothing more than good old plate of pie and mash. You know, so we're all a bit of a cliche, aren't we? It's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, I'm not ashamed. It's just when you go out and somebody asks you what you do, I'd rather not say I worked in a corner shop. Well, from now on, you're a purveyor of fine wines. I remember that. Or a consultant to the textile industry. <laughs> you see, you can be anything you want to be. That's my motto. But you must be proud of who you are. I am. Good. So you should be. And as for that other business you were talking about, all that arranged marriages, my grandfather tried to get out of arranged marriage but couldn't manage it. Seriously? Seriously. My great-grandfather Sid arranged it with his army issue rifle. <laughs> when he finally caught up with my granddad, according to family legend, his actual words were, you make an honest woman out of my daughter, or I'll make a calendar out of your head. Oh. Now, you wouldn't have thought it would have lasted, would you? But I'll never forget the knees up we had on the night of their 50th. Well, arranged marriages often do last. And my dad had this beautiful gold-plated plaque made, like to commemorate it with the Baldwin coat of arms and the family motto underneath in Latin. Yeah, and he was going to present it to me, Nan and Grandad, on the night of the do. But when it arrived, my dad loved it so much, he wanted to keep it. So he said to my granddad, whoever stands up on stage at the end of the night and can recite the family motto in Latin without looking at the plaque gets to keep it. Now, there's two things you need to know about my granddad, right? First, he stutters when he's nervous. And second, no one liked to bet more than he did. So he can't resist it, my granddad. The night of the do, he's walking round all night like a priest, mumbling to himself in Latin, driving everyone mad. So the end of the evening comes, New York, New York finishes, up come the lights, and my dad and my granddad get up on stage to have a go. 
So my dad has a go, he's had a few drinks, he can't get anywhere near it. My granddad stands up on stage, follows him straight away and does it verbatim, word for word. Perfect. Unbelievable. My old man was gutted. So my dad's in front of everyone and says, OK, double a quiz. Do you actually know what the motto means? My granddad says, it don't matter. That weren't the bet. I've won it. I've done it fair and square. So my old man goes, OK, fair enough, but just so as long as you and the rest of the family know the motto means make an honest woman out of my daughter or I'll make the colander out of your head. <laughs> Brought the house down. Everyone loved it. Laughter everywhere. My great-granddad, Sid, who was still with us, 92 years of age, he fell out of his chair laughing. He almost died laughing. With all his family and friends around him, loving him, now ain't that the way to go. Kevin? Hmm? If you're not watching that, can I have a word with you about the garage? Oh, yeah, I uh, want to talk to you about that anyway. What do you think of that? Webster's Auto Centre. Rebranding, the call it. All the big firms do it. Yeah, and everybody hates them for it. Yeah, well, it must pay off or they won't bother, would they? I mean, it's all about image these days, Kevin. Now, the thing about flyers is the bigger the print run, the more economical it becomes because most of the expense is in the artwork. Where are you going? So once that's all been set up, the unit cost comes down, the more flyers you get. Look, I'm not paying for adverts I don't need. Well, you can claim it back on tax. It's an allowable expense. It's a pointless expense. Well, it'll pay for itself in the long run. How many have you got here? 5,000. And another 5,000. So, we're working flat out as it is. We can't cope with any more. Oh, do you know what you sound like? What? You sound like a father who sends his girls to Weatherfield High, a parent with no ambition. But us, me and you, we are all kill parents. Huh? And what about the lads? Oh, never mind the lads. We'll take on some new staff. We'll expand. Because all that matters is the girls, our girls. Our maths genius helped me with all this, you know. Yeah, well, I think you should have spoken well, to me. Well, you've been too busy. You've been worked off your feet, so I got Rosie to help me. I got quotes from three different printers, three different thicknesses of paper, one, two, or three colours, and Rosie worked out all the different unit costs for me, so we've all been pulling our weight, which is why I need to talk to you about the apostrophe. What apostrophe? Well, Rosie was the one who spotted it. She's so sharp, I should have got her to do the proofreading. Anyway, it's only a little mistake. The printers put it after the S in Webster's, see? So? So it should be before the S, apparently, because the way it is now, it's as if the auto centre belongs to all of the Websters instead of just you. It's going to cost another 300 quid to get them redone. I'm not paying 300 quid for an apostrophe. Well, exactly, that's what I said, but only bright sparks like Rosie will notice, and she'll probably be your accountant in a few years' time. And with you being so busy, I'll have to start coming into the office and doing your admin full-time. But oh, so. don't worry, Kevin, I'm not expecting any wages, because you'll still be in charge of the lads, because you do what you're good at, I'll do what I'm good at, Rosie can go to Oak Hill, the apostrophe can stay where it is, because in a way it's all fate, isn't it? We will be the Webster's Family Auto Centre. for me to leave the room. No, I just thought... I just wanted to say how sorry I am. Oh, right. And you think a sorry from you is going to make a difference, do you? You're the last person she wants to see. I know. Oh, yeah. I know you know. Or you'd have been here when she was awake. So she could have spat in your face. You used to be quite friendly. Yeah? So did we. But not anymore, pal. What are you doing here? <laughs> I can see this was a bad idea. I'll get going. You can take your flowers and all. I don't want your sympathy. And we don't want you in here again. In fact, I don't want you near me either. So swap your shifts if you have to, but stay out of my face. Yeah. OK. OK. Cos you see all this here? You caused it! Martin, nobody caused it. You know that. You're a nurse. You must have seen the notes. No, no, no. You caused it, Foster. Look at the notes, Martin. It was placenta abruption. She had a first hemorrhage before she knew anything about me and Todd. It was just one of those things. No 
nobody's to blame, and you know it. You should explain it to Sarah and to Todd for that matter. No! You're the one to blame! You're the one who ripped her and Todd apart! You're the one who ripped her guts out in the process! Okay, I'm sorry! It was you were behind her back! It was you got Katie on your side! And you were meant to be a mate! You deserve that! My granddad went on strike for three months so he didn't have to work a seven-day week. And that's nearly 50 years ago. You should try the hours some people work at the hospital. And they're mending lives and not cars. One or two of them are good at wrecking lives and all. But as we're not mentioning any names, I won't moan about him bailing out before it was time to give you your driving lessons. Good. If you like, I'll take you when I finish work. Whenever that is. OK. Ta. Keep your chin up, kid. See you later. Mm. Did I hear you get up in the night? Couldn't sleep. Oh, don't go making yourself ill. I've got to talk to Martin, ma'am. I'm just trying to work out what to say. Right. Do you know what I think you should say? Nothing. But if I don't try and make up, he'll think I don't care. And he's got no one else to talk to. He knows you care. And when he gets round to thinking, he'll realise that, that him knowing about Todd wouldn't have made any difference to anybody. Todd would still be gay. He'd still have finished with Sarah. And what happened to the baby? It would still have happened. Be there all morning, Kev. Sally finally moved your bed over, has she? <laughs> I'm just trying to make something of this business, that's all. Tommy, if we've got a problem, I think I should know about it, seeing as I'm going to be working here full time. <laughs> Do you want to get on with this service then, eh? I'm going to go and see Rita about these leaflets. So you're going to sort her out? Me too. If she starts getting on my back, I'm going to show her a new use for jump leads. Do you know what I mean? Did I hear Kevin opening the garage just now? We've got so much work on, it just shows you what you can do with a bit of initiative. Which is why I'm here. I was just wondering if you could put these in your newspapers. An advert? Uh, we're only scratching the surface of the market round here. Still, if Kevin's already opening the garage on a Sunday... Rita, with all due respect, that's why you're still running a backstreet news agent at an age where you should be putting your feet up. I don't want to be putting my feet up. No, and we don't want to just make do. I mean, tech schools for a start. Rosie is going to do so much better at Oak Hill than she ever would at Weatherfield High. So you set on sending her private? Oh, yeah. It's all about potential. Hers as well as ours. Well, sounds like you've got it all mapped out, Sally. Oh, yes, it's only just the beginning. Oh, you're friendly with Archie Shuttleworth, aren't you? Well, um... You don't know where he gets his hearses service, do you? Well, it's a shame he's not doing the funeral tomorrow. I could have had a word for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Audrey. I, I just didn't think. No, it's OK. Next time you see him, that'll be fine. Oh, I wish I'd had some business cards printed. Still, never mind. He knows where to find us. Look, there's 200 leaflets there, and I'll bring some more around later. Thanks, Rita. Mum thinks I'm bam if I come in. So why did you? Because I wanted to see you. Look, about the birthday card. I didn't yeah, know that... Yeah, I know, you said. Look, it's not a good time, Katie. When is it going to be a good time? Look, I will say sorry as many times as you want me to. You know, actually, to catch up on the gossip. <sighs> what gossip? I had a bit of a go at your mate, Carl. He's not a mate anymore. You know that. A bit of a go? Yeah. I'll turn into your dad. The man that messed up my daughter's life was studying from him in and couldn't help myself beating the hell out of him. Don't compare yourself to him. I'm proud of you. No, I'm not. It's probably cost me my job. I could talk to Carl, ask him not to say out. I thought you two weren't still mates. Oh, we're not, but I could but... just... It's none of your business, Katie. Not anymore. Well, lads, before you get stuck in, you put this up for us. What is it? 
Ta da! New sign. Webster's Auto Centre. What's wrong with Garage? Well, Garage's a small town. We're advertising too, it's all part of our new approach. We need a mission statement and all. A what? Well, I've been reading all about it in the books about the best businesses have a mission statement, an aim. Like Star Trek. So boldly go and all that. Exactly. And I thought you two might have some ideas. I don't do ideas, I do cars. And what's this? Flaming buses. This is a wind up, innit? Well, we can do buses and commercial vehicles. They're just cars, but bigger. It'll take more than a. What do you call it? A mission statement? Well, it'll take more than a mission statement to get a double decker on that ramp. <laughs> How about. There'll be no fuss when we service your bus. Hey, Tyrone, that's great, isn't it, Kev? Yeah, it would be, yeah, but Tommy's got a point. We've no space for out like that. Well, we can always look for a new premises. Or uh, if it's a wrecker or a double decker, you were meant to bring it to Webster's Auto Centre. <laughs> I'm on a roll, me. Hey, Tyrone's got the right attitude. We need to embrace new ideas, not rubbish them. OK, embrace this. You don't just go announcing new ideas without talking to me and Tyrone, or we won't do them. So when you decide to let us know what you're planning, we'll be in the pub. Oi, come on. Great. I'm going to see Sarah. All oh, right. I thought your mummy's missed you. Yes, she has. You'll go see her, though. No, I'm working. I think. You think? Mm. Yeah, it all depends if Carl Foster reports me. Oh, uh, Todd's friend. Why should he do that? Because I had a word with him about what happened to Sarah. So? So, I punctuated every sentence with a kick in the ribs. Good effort. Any damage? David, it's not funny. Isn't that man done enough without risking your job for him? I wasn't thinking about my job. Or out else. Oh, I'll see you later. See ya. You what? You slept with him on your first date? Yeah. I know this sounds a stupid question, but why? Well, I know this sounds a stupid answer, but why not? You hardly know him. Self-respect and... You can't love him. Self-respect and... Where's tacky? Self-respect. And you don't do that sort of thing. You mean you don't? Well, neither do you. Well, you didn't. Well, I did with Kieran. Anyway, it just happened. We kissed. And I thought kissing's for kids. And I'm not a kid anymore. Well, he certainly isn't. He must be well over 40. Experienced. And that's another thing. Now you'll be a notch on his bedpost. Well, I was thinking he'd be more of a notch on mine. You're not the least bit sorry about this, are you? Well, why should I be? We're both free agents. Yeah, but is he Mr Right? He's Mr Right now. And that's close enough. It's ages since I've been with a fella. Who's this? Danny Baldwin. So need to trust me on this. He's never going to fancy you quite as much as he fancies himself. Typical southerner. Yeah? Hey, well, lads. <laughs> Cheers, Kev. If it's a car, or even a lorry, Bring it to Webster's. You won't be sorry. <laughs> Please tell me you're not going to go along with all this. Look, you only get the latest ideas. I get them for breakfast, tea, the lot. She was even talking to me through the toilet door yesterday. Eh? Hey. So tell her to take a running jump. It's your garage. What? More work equals more money. Hey, Shakespeare, this will wipe the smile off your face. We're going to be doing 24-hour call-outs. Yeah, and what's the problem with that? We already do call-outs. During working hours, not at night. Look, can we talk about this after we close today? We've got a load on today. I'm not doing out till I know where we stand. Sorry. Have you seen this? Aaron Kirk have gone for a day out. Oh, heck. I've been called in to cover the shift. I needed her to look after Chess. I have to tell Steve I can't work. What? You know, I never told you what a good mother you were to my Leanne. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. I am having a nice, quiet day on my own. OK? I don't know what you're on about. You want me to look after Chesney? What a good idea. Thanks, Jan. You're a star. Uh, hey, I never said I'd do it. I'd have to leave him on his own. Matches. Sharp knives. I'm all that poor little lad's got. I need to work to buy him some new shoes. Give over. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, it's not like I can sit here reading my paper and having to listen out for fire engines and ambulances. Magic. Oh, uh, you're a cheeky. How you doing? 
Yeah, you're all right. All right. You're all right, love. Hiya, darling. Hi. Same again? Yeah, go on, then. All right, good. Turns out I'll have a bottle of lager, please, love. If I didn't tell you how much I enjoyed Friday night, let me tell you how much I enjoyed Friday night. Me too. You're settling in OK, I see? Yeah, very much at home, thanks. In fact, if home had been as good as this, I'd have never moved it. Why did you up sticks? Jealous husband, lone sharks, vengeful woman? Yeah, all of them, yeah. It was either Weatherfield or the Foreign Legion. So, do you fancy doing something tonight? Like? Like, uh, don't know, go for a meal or something? We could stay in. Get pizza. Good, yeah. How about uh, my place, then? Yeah, you bring the pizza, I'll get the wine. Decent stuff. Well, don't go wasting good wine on me. I can't imagine anything good's wasted on you, mate. You know, him walking in just now, give me the butterflies. Maybe he is Mr. Right after all. Mummy's told me she's not very well. She doesn't understand. No. Shouldn't have left him. Sorry, sweetheart. Billy. Billy? I can't pretend that's not his name just because Todd picked it. How can he have any dignity without a name? Absolutely. I shouldn't have left him on his own. After everything that's happened, it just doesn't seem right. Leaving him with all those strangers who don't care. All the other babies crying. Sweetheart. Billy isn't there anymore. If I still shouldn't have left him. Billy's still my baby. I'm still his mum. When we were leaving. Listening for him crying. I know it's silly, but it was it was just so perfect. Hey Sarah. My dad's an hero, you know. You give that Carla right seeing her. The undertaker's looking after Billy, my darling. He'll take him to the chapel of rest. It is so peaceful. Oh. If you like, we can go and see him there. You let them blackmail you. If we want them to work round the clock, we've got to pay them decent money. And if I hadn't agreed, they'd still be in the pub now. Like I said, blackmail. Tommy? Tommy, Tyrone, have you got a minute? Looks good, eh? Yeah, that's splashing. Hey, Kevin says you want paying for being on standby and then more money if you get called out. If you want me sat by a phone waiting for it to ring, I want pain. Yeah, but it might take time to get established. We might not get a few call-outs for the first few weeks. It's not our problem. No. All right, until we get sorted, then Kevin will do them all. Hey? Well, we can't afford to pay Tommy and Tyrone for sitting on the backsides, can we? Sarah was. Well, she's home. Good. Is Todd okay? It's all right. I'll tell him that you asked. Don't bother. Why are you talking to her? Nicky, was Todd's baby and all? No, you know? it was Sarah's baby. I think it was just a way of showing the world he's a real man. Oh, come on. Just because he's gay doesn't mean he's not green. Look, if Todd cared about anybody but himself, Sarah would be all right now. You don't know that. Anyway, if it was something to do with Todd, how do you think he's going to feel? I don't care. Neither should you. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. Uh, where's Chesney? Having a bath. How the heck did you manage that? I told him he smelt like you. Oh, sir. He's not even at school tomorrow. No? Training day. 
Do you fancy throwing a sickie? Look, it's one thing giving up an afternoon of sitting round my flat to come here, but I'm not risking my job. I was going to suggest we had a bit of fun. I mean, neither of us are getting much of that these days, are we? Oh, what do you want about you? Well, you used to love a day out. Me, you and the girls. We could take Chesney. Where were you thinking of, like? Surprise. Oh. The last time you surprised me with your day out, it was so I wouldn't be in when the bailiffs came for the telly and the video. Aye, well. You don't have to worry about me getting up to out anymore, do you? Leslie, I think I'll always worry about you. Right, go on then. We'll give the lad a proper Battersby day out, yeah? Yes. Hello? Gran? Gran? Hello? Who the hell are you? I'm the bloke who lives here, darling. Your turn. No, I'm sorry, but I live here with my baby. Where's my gran? <laughs> yeah, OK, yeah. The factory girls have put you up to this, haven't they? I want to know what you're doing in my house. Your house? No, look, I'm renting this from a Mrs Hunt. She lives up the street with her daughter. Now, if you don't mind, I'm expecting someone. Yeah, well, I am sorry, but you're going to have to leave. No, no, I've got a contract, darling. It is you who is leaving. Stop calling me darling. It's Tracy. Well, then, Tracy, darling, go and sort it out with Grandma. I have been round there. My family are out, and if you don't mind, I'm taking my baby upstairs to her bedroom to change her. No chance. Get what you need for tonight and pick up the rest of your stuff tomorrow. OK? Patrick, it's 10 Rochdale Road, name of Thomas. Oh, I hope you're not in a hurry, love. I haven't got anything for half an hour. No, I'm supposed to have knit back to it flat. I'm over at Gale's. You don't know about the funeral. I've not had it. No, it's tomorrow, one o'clock at St Christopher's. And they weren't going to tell Todd? But don't they realise he's suffering just as much as they are? More, if anything. Yeah, they're blaming him for what's happened. You know, the upset and everything. Well, like he hasn't been to hell. Maria, he's my son and I can't say anything to comfort him. Them lumping the blame on his shoulders doesn't help. He's doing that to himself. Yeah, but he is. Look, it's dead caring, I know that. Todd's always been great with me. He knows what it's like to be an outsider with that love. Well, could you go and see him and tell him some of that? He'd really appreciate it. Oh, look, Eileen, I would, but you know what they're like. Just whatever you do, don't tell anyone how you found out. Please. Right, Amy's in bed. I'm going to watch TV and have an early night. You've got to be joking. You seem to need help packing, love. I... No! Look, there is taking liberties, darling. Then there is taking the... Oi, turn it in! Oh, she ain't gonna believe this. I don't believe this. Now that's what I call a welcome. Hmm. Not the usual class of gaff, Danny. Nice wine, though. Hi, I'm Tracy. This is my house. I'm the wife, and he wasn't expecting me. He didn't tell me you had a wife, Danny. Always forgets that bit, don't you? I think the phrase is bang to rights. No, no, I'm renting this place off her nan. Fully furnished, double bed, hot and cold running tart. <sighs> Giving him his marching orders already, dear? Must be losing your touch. You normally keep him sweet longer than this. No, this is not what it looks like, you see? I am totally innocent, I promise. Please tell her. Don't bother. I've heard all his excuses before. I'm straight back down that motorway. No, you're not. I'm not letting you go again. Well, you're not letting him off the hook that easily, I hope. You did come here to try again. If you're forgiving me. It's over with Vinnie, then. Vinnie? Why oh, are you two as bad as each other? I've never hit a woman before. Well, it's not me having the affair with Vinnie. This has got nothing to do with Vinnie. This is about me and you, babe. Stupid bitch that I am, I can't live without you. Me neither. Oh, excuse me, but this is still my house. I didn't know if I'd be welcome. My legs were shaking so much when I walked in. I needed that glass of wine. Have another. So I can't drive back? Have the old bottle. You're going nowhere. <sighs> Your face when you opened the door. I should have had a camera. <laughs> yeah. Martin, wait. 
I've uh, been seeing Carl and he's not going to make a complaint. I thought I told you not to. Well, thank you, would have done. Look, I'm serious. He wants to forget all about it. Yeah. Well, what he wants don't matter. Where are you going? Home. I've been suspended. But <sighs> Carl promised. Apparently half the hospital saw what happened. For those that didn't, he's recorded on security video. Do you want a copy? Will you explain and tell them what Carl did? I'm a senior nurse. Senior nurses can't go around beating up with staff. What if I told him? I mean, I know the whole story. Oh, so right now you want to tell everyone, dear? You? Only not so long back. You couldn't even tell me. Are you expecting someone? No. Oh, I'll get it then. Right, let's get out of here. Come on. We've got the mics and we'll sort this out in the morning. Uh, Danny, it's for you. Oh, pizzas, yeah. Two pizzas? Yeah, well, we've got this business sorted out. Tracy hadn't eaten. See, it's all heart, really. I forgot to pay. And what the hell's going on? Here's, uh, here's 20 quid. Keep the change. I'm sorry. She gone? Should have invited her in. Right, come on. Mike's. I'll drive. Come on. Uh... Give me the keys. Give me the keys. What about your clothes? I'll pick them up later. Oh, you're not stopping. That's a shame. There's enough pizza for three. It's not what you had in mind, I know, but. Get in the car. Right then, nice meeting you, but don't call again, eh? Sent a card. Cheeky cow, like we want to hear from her. David, we got cards of fallen neighbours. Well, she's more than a neighbour, Nick. Is she? Oh. Here we are. I think we should ration this today, you know. I can't remember if there's uh, anywhere to spend a penny in that church. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Ta. Everything all right? Yeah, fine. Except Sarah's refusing to get up. She says she's not going to the funeral and we can all go without her. You're joking. Oh, poor little thing. David, how many times have I told you you eat your breakfast at the table? What does that matter today, Gail? Well, if you don't mind picking up the crumbs, then don't let me stand in your way. Ma'am, will you have a word with her? Oh, Gail, we can't force her to do so much she doesn't want to, even if it is the right thing. Oh, go on. See if I can tempt her with this cup of tea. Do you need a hand with anything, Gail? No, I've, uh, I've just got the sandwiches to do. Come on, four hands will be quicker than two. Yeah, OK. She will go, watch you, man. She can't miss her own son's funeral. Yeah, of course she'll go. Wish I had your confidence, Martin. It's just I'm going to ask her if I could carry a coffin. What, all on your own? Yeah, you want my nephew. Well, it's a nice thought, that, David. Yeah, it's a lovely thought, David. But I think the reality is going to be a bit much for you. Well, I'm just as strong as you. I can carry Barney such, no problem. Uh, David, no disrespect, Oh, but... don't be too hard on him, Nick. David, your emotions are going to be all over the place today. I don't even know I could do it. Somebody's got to. Yeah, well, um, we'll ask the undertaker. We're going to have enough to deal with. Actually, I'll do it. it would be an honour. Shouldn't the, um, baby's father be carrying the coffin? Todd gave up your right to that baby the minute he dropped Sarah for another man. Yeah, too flipping right. It turned the funeral into a laughing stock. Well? Any luck? She's adamant. Oh, girl, what am I gonna do? So, let's get this straight. Piece of toast, darling. When did you last see a carbohydrate pass these lips? Yeah, cos you're too busy giving it that to eat. I can just about get my head around the fact that that scraggy little tart with the baby's got nothing to do with you. But there was something going on with that bird with the pizza. Morning, Frankie. Still giving him earache. That's the way he likes it, Mike. He's one of them what's -its. Masochists. Yeah, I must be a part with you. Right, come on then. We're gonna make a move. Right. Do you know an Asian girl round here, Mike? Partial to a spot of pizza? Do you know what I love about you, Frank? How you turn everything round onto me? 
I love your colour scheme in here, Mike. What do you say those walls were? Smoked salmon? Orange. I'll be in the car, all right? Right. See you, babe. What? Can I just remind you, babe, if you hadn't have slept with Vinny, I wouldn't have been young, free and single on me tot up here, would I? You bought me pizza on our first date. Just a slice from the takeaway place when you were driving me home. I didn't like the capers, so I stuck them in the ashtray. You were worried in case you found them. You're like an elephant, you. You forget nothing. Oi! Watch the hair. I struggle to remember what happened yesterday, never mind 17 years ago. You're getting old, Dan. Tell you what, a couple of years from now and I'll be jabbing in the Botox. Yeah. We'll talk later. So, he grabs the pizzas and slams the door in my face. The cheeky git, what's it like? So I bang on the door, he opens it, shoves £20 at me, and I smacked him one. <laughs> Good for you. What does his fancy piece look like? Oh, hard faced, a bit brassy. Or like a shire horse with highlight. <laughs> Something like that. You all right, mate? Decided to go then. I'm sorry my father would have been if I didn't. No one's forcing you, love. Mum, I never even held him. I never even said hello, never mind goodbye. I never even told him I loved him. I know. It's just, I've got this knot in my stomach that something bad's going to happen. Something bad did happen. I lost my son. I'm, I'm just worried that the plats are going to kick off. You know what they're like. And I know I shouldn't care, but funerals are supposed to be dignified. If you show your face, they might turn this into a bun fight. And I know that Billy was your son. But you're mine, Todd. And I don't want to see you any more upset than you already are. Well, I suppose the coffin will probably be about the size of a shoebox, wouldn't it? Oh, it depends how big it was. Don't bear thinking about like Patrick Cracker joke, will you? Put me on the right down now. Yeah. I've heard about the uh, one legged pole dancer, Wonky Wendy, right? She. <laughs> Sorry, lads, left these earlier. What do you reckon? Now I need a day off, because I'm taking Janice on the treat of a lifetime. She's through a sickie and everything. She's not gonna know what set her. Oh, oh. Uh, oi, oi, Battersby. Lot of short staffed as it is. Eileen's off because of the funeral. Collins off with food poisoning from eating dodgy nuts at the Nexus wine bar. Oh. I'm sorry, Steve. But there's some things more important than work. I'm taking Janice and Chesney up to this new fun pub near Winnishaw. It's got a big bouncy castle and 18 different types of lager. Ta da. Here you are. What about my birthday bags later? Change your plans, mate. Change your plans. You pack a mean punch, girl, I'll give you that. Pizzas in the freezer. I've just come to explain... What? That you're a complete and utter twerp? Don't worry, I'll work that out for myself. Where'd you keep the humble pie, then? <laughs> so go on, then. Who is she, your mystery blonde? The missus. My wife. It's one thing messing me around, Danny, that I can cope with, but making me the other woman... But I thought it was over between us. She just turns up. That is the God's honest truth. Where'd you get your paper and kiss, Anita? Toiletries over there. Not interrupting anything, am I? Don't like to uh, break up the party. No. Danny was just telling me all about his wife. No. <sighs> Quel dommage, as they say in France. I, I realise. I know that it was a big step. You know, sleeping with me and that. Have you come to buy something or just to make my skin crawl? Sonita. Get out, Danny. Go on. Men like that should come with a health warning. 35p, please. It's always the women who pay, isn't it? Everything ready. I'm up to my elbows in coleslaw. Oh. Look, Sally's bought a cake. 
Well, actually, it's a roulade. Hello, Sally. Hi. I heard you were putting on a bit of a spread, and I have this going spare. Black Forest roulade. It's a nice one. It's from that freezer place on Balaclava Terrace, so it's not cheap. Oh, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll put it on the table. Yeah. Make some room for it, Gail. What's that? Oh, Sarah, I can't begin to think what you're going through at the moment. So you brought me a cake? Well, actually, that's... Well, why okay. didn't you just bring some balloons and party poppers while you were at it? Sarah! Um, I'll go to... No, I'll go. Kevin said this was a mistake. I should have listened to him. Nonsense! No, come on, we appreciate it so much, Sally. No, it's just Sarah. She's got it into her head she's not coming to the funeral. Why not? You tell me. Hiya. Cheer up, love. It might never happen. Sarah. Just get lost, will you? Sarah, I think it's time you start getting ready for the service. Leave me alone. No. Sarah, if you miss today, I swear you'll live to regret it. Oh, you're getting off on this, aren't you? You're such a drama queen. Sarah, that's unfair. Like, I care. Yeah. Tracy. What the hell are you doing here? It's the lady's prerogative to change her mind. Some lady? It was supposed to be in Portsmouth. Yeah, I know. You know, that Sarah Platt was just really weird for me. Her baby died. Funerals today. That's where we're heading. You are joking. Do we look like we're joking? Oh, I feel terrible now. Good. Oh, poor cow. Anyway, Missy, what's this I hear about you renting my house at the minute my back's turned? You said you were gone for good. Look, I had the shock of my life last night. Some bloke walked in on me with all his bits hanging out. His missus had me down as some kind of floozy. Oh, well, there's a first. So what brings you back from down south? Dare we ask? Well, it's Peter, innit? He's like an old woman. All I did was ask him to babysit when I went to the cinema and it hit the roof. He is so selfish. Oh, are you going to let me in or what? So uh, you're just assuming that you can move back in with us? Yeah, well, I've got nowhere else to go, have I? It's a pretty big assumption, Tracy. Oh, you'd rather see her on the streets, like Cathy come home. Kenneth, I thought you were left wing. Could you bring that furor out in anyone? Oh, don't stress yourself out, Dad. It's not good for your blood pressure. So that's it, is it? You're back for good now, are you? Oh, Mother, you know I don't do good. <laughs> Reminds me of when we went to Black at weekend. You drove me all the way there. We couldn't find a parking space. So you drove me all the way back without stopping. Oh, it were nothing like that. There were plenty of parking spaces. <laughs> and that pub looked great. It's him. Oh, come on. It's not his fault if he's travel sick, is it? Oh. Come on, son. Let's get you inside. You can have a little lie down, eh? <laughs> oh. What? The day's ruined. Oh, get over yourself, Les. It's fine. I wanted it to be special. Hey, I'll tell you what. Let's get him in bed, crack over some lagers. I'll put some oven chips under the grill. What do you say to that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and they say romance is back in fashion. Mm. I say it never went out. Mm. Come on, cock. Princess Diana went. Um, I know this is going to sound a bit daft, but I don't know. I always felt that if we'd met, she'd have been my pal. She believed in the underdog. It hit me ever so hard. I took myself off down to London, camped out near the Abbey. The atmosphere were amazing. The sea of sleeping bags. She'd touched all our lives, saying we all wanted to say goodbye. I can say goodbye. Be her. It weren't right the way she went. It was way before her time. The flame blown out when it should have gone on burning. And I know it doesn't seem right for you. I mean, at least she had 30 odd years. Billy didn't even see 30 days. But Sarah, the reason I think it hit me so hard with Diana, listen to me, first name terms, was that 
I always felt she'd have fought me corny. My mum and dad never did, but but she would have. I've got no fight left, Haley. I sh I can't face it. Who knows? Maybe if Billy had lived till till he were thirty odd, he'd have made an impact and and been celebrated, and thousands of people would have lined the streets of Weatherfield to say goodbye. But they didn't. There's only an handful met him, and even though he wasn't here for very long, I still think his life's worth celebrating. Don't you? I'm so scared, though, Haley. I feel like a little kid. Only I'm not supposed to feel like this today. I'm supposed to be someone's mum. I'm supposed to be grown up. And all I want is someone to put their arms around me and tell me it's going to be okay. We all feel like that. No matter how old we get. I bet Gail feels like that. I bet Audrey feels like that. But we get on. Sometimes we just have to. Sarah's a bit upset. Is it any wonder? Must have been wondering where I got to. Well, I know now. You are fancy. Nice hot bath. Come on, Lyle. I'll run you one with lots and lots of bubbles. Is the time? Yes. There is. Come on. Thanks, Hayley. We're all thinking about you, Sarah. I think you'd better go upstairs and check on Chesney. Oh, let him sleep it off. Is he named after Chesney Hawks, do you know? Who? Chesney Hawks. Mouthy hair, small on his face. Only it's funny, because I named our Taya after Taya, what's her name? And Scylla has obviously named her kid after another pop star. <laughs> Toya Wilcox had more staying power than Chesney Bleeding Hawks. Lisp or no lisp? Yeah, well, I, I'm just saying that me and Scylla might have a lot more in common than you think. Will you stop banging on about Scylla? And she's probably named after Scylla Black. Janice. Les. Do you think this is romantic? What, some oven chips and a couple of lagers? No, this... You, what are you playing at? I'm not after any nugget. No, no, neither am I. Yeah, well, you could have filled me. I want you to move back in here. Oh. It'll be great, Jan. You and me under the same roof. <laughs> Snuggling up at night. <clears throat> Jigging with the quo on a Saturday morning. <laughs> hey! That is it. That is it. I am going. You are doing my head in. Well, Jan. No, oh, I can't cope with this. Seen the girls then? Hardly a line up for Miss World, is it? Listen, I'm going to go and suss out the shops. Have you changed your money over yet? To Manchester money? Where did the joke stop, Dan? When it stops being so hard to say what needs saying. And what's that? Try. The pizza girl. Oh, shut up about her. I don't care, Danny. Really, I don't. I'll tell you what this is about. This is about you messing me around for nearly 17 years, and then the one time I messed you around... Yeah, but it never meant anything to me, though, Frank. See, the one time you play away, it's like a full-blown affair. And you love him. And he ain't just my boss. He's my best mate. He's my best mate. 
You've broke my heart once already. What are you doing here? Come to break it again? No. I came to make a go of things. Come on, Dan. We can give it another go. Nothing's changed, not really. <laughs> Everything has changed. I like it here. I miss the kids. I miss you, you soppy cow. But no way am I going back down there. Because everywhere I go down there, every corner I turn, I will see him and I will see you. He was like a brother to me. We can move. It's all right, we can. We can move up here. I've got so much stuff going on in my head. I think I'm going mad. You're normal. You're not mad. All these things are what I say to Sarah. Well, why don't you put it down in a letter? But I can say it all today. Yeah, but with a letter, she can read it, keep it, and think about it. If you say something now, it's all going to come out wrong. Your feelings are going to get the better of you. You don't want me to go, do you? It's not a matter of what I want, Todd. In an ideal world, I want us all to go. Heads held high. Say goodbye to him properly. While we're on the subject, if I really had what I'd wanted, I'd want my grandson alive and well, keeping me up at night. We don't always get what we want in this life. We both know that. Mum, there's no milk. Where's the milk? Come to think of it, I'll have a full fridge and all. You'll have to go to the shop, love. Hey, if you want to go to the funeral, mate, you should go. I mean, just cos you're through, it doesn't make you any less the father, do you know what I mean? I want to give him this. I never got the chance. Don't give it to him any time. Hey, we'll all go, the three of us, together. And there's no sign of the plats. Is that how she went from the shop? No. I'm still going to wear my suit. Later. Yeah. Look dead smart. Dad to be proud of. Let's get the jacket off, eh? Don't want to crease it. I'm not living with Uncle Mike, Dan. You don't have to. I've sorted out the misunderstanding over the house, and that girl has moved out. I want to give it another go, Frank, but I want to do it up here. It's a baby. Hello again, Mrs. Platt. 
She's been very brave, Reverend. Sarah, you know Billy has the eternal love of his family and the eternal love of Christ. Thank you, Reverend. She's only a baby herself, man. I thought this would be perfect for the wedding photos. Time to go. You were going to give me away. I used to dream of you walking me up the aisle. I never thought I'd be behind my baby's coffin. They'd turn up hanging with their own knitting, that lot. They were showing respect. Yeah, some were. Some were having a nose. Drink your tea, love. You're not eating anything. I'm not hungry. Funny that. Sorry. My head's cavity's done up. I know. The size of that coffin. I don't know who I'm crying for. You don't need it, do you, love? I'm not allowed to grieve for my own son. We're going later, though, yeah? Charlie said I can buy the van. Why have I got to skulk around? I'm Billy's dad. My son has died. Come on, Todd. Mum's right, they'd only say you'd hijacked it. Just something else to throw at you. Look, maybe we should go out a walk or something. The what, I'm taking my mind off it, yeah? But, Todd... Just leave it, eh, ma'am? I'll go and have a soak and just uh, get out of his hair, just to keep an eye. The lad was fine. But, oh, no. Janice is giving it to full nurse Nancy. Said we had to get him home, get him to bed. The old days are washout. My life's a washout! Where is she now? Gone. I had to give her the Heimlich manoeuvre, didn't I? You what? <sighs> Nearly broke her ribs, but it did the trick. You broke her ribs? Well, you've got to use brute force, or else it won't hit the spot. Do you reckon Fizz would like it, the Heimlich finger? You've got a one-track mind, you. I saved the woman's life. Hey, Move back in, I said. Next minute, she's choking on a chip. That's when I did the old Heimlich. She manoeuvred right out the door. Well, there's no point sitting in here moping. Time for plan B, come on. You what? Patrick's birthday, Bender. I'm going to get that wasted, I'll need a blood transfusion. Right. A couple of cans in the fridge, help yourself. I'm coming with you, you clown. You're on Chesney watch. You what? Janice stuck a bucket by the side of the bed. You shouldn't have to do out. See ya. Hey, what the hell are you playing at? No. August 2003. Oh, well, there you go, then. It's the new me. Who's the long hair? What? Oh, I don't know. They all blend into one. Liar. So what do you reckon, then? I'd miss my mates. Do you know there's this a most amazing invention, Frank? It's called the, um, M6. If it's that amazing, why can't you commute on it at weekends? Cos we meant to be making a fresh start, you donut. Oh, yeah, cos you're worried about bumping into Vinny. He's the one who should worry. Unbelievable you are. I've been bumping into your conquest for donkey's years. Every time you say hello to someone under 75, I wonder if you've had her. I have one fall from Grace and we've got to move 200 miles away. So you're thinking about it, then? I'm thinking all kinds, darling. And the sirloin steak for me, Tap. Cremated. Certainly, sir. I wonder how the funeral's going. Mm, no good at funerals. Well, who is? 
Can't exactly take an O level in it, can you? Didn't sit O levels in anything exactly. I was a total waste of taxpayers' money. Mm, I couldn't get out of school quick enough. It was our Sharon who had all the brains in our family. So who got the looks? <laughs> now nah, you're pretty easy on the eye. Ish. <laughs> no, just where to shove that sirloin, lover boy. Well, if you must know, I've got my dad's eyes, I've got my granny's nose, my mum's hands. I wish I had her calves and all. She's still seeing that fella. Well, she can make his life a misery instead of ours. Oh, don't. What? It's win-win, that's all. She'll be too busy with her own love life to guilt trip you about yours. Don't count on it. What's up? You know that date she was meant to go on? The pictures? He didn't blow her out, did he? He didn't exist. Hey? She invented him. Now, if you crack on that I've told you, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> At least they got the chip out. And whose daft idea got it stuck there in the first place? Oh, I can see you and Les back together. No bother. Yeah, so can I. And it has got disaster written all over it. <laughs> well, I've got to be honest, Lippy. When you rang in this morning, I thought, aye, aye, she's throwing a sickie. Charming. Well, you actually look like you're in a bit of pain there, girl. A sickie? Johnny's. <laughs> a couple of paracetamol down my neck. The work ethic. I like it. So, you were up all night with the trots, and uh, now it's travelled to your ripcage? Yes. Bog off. <laughs> well, can you bog off in your own time, because Dindin's is finito. Oh, no, boss, we need a one-minute emergency extension. Do you now? Yeah, cos uh, Janice's ex wants her back. Yeah? Pining for me. Reckons he's uh, mended his ways. Has he now? Well, you should give the guy a break. He might surprise you. You said you'd keep an eye. What am I meant to do? Tie him to the chair? If that's what it takes, yes. Mum, let him do what he's got to do. I'll get dressed. Just bring the van round. Too married. Hey, look, have you got any house specials? It's his birthday today. They all say that. Straight up. I'm 39 today. They all say that and all. Hey, how about a birthday kiss? I've got foot and mouth. She wants me. <laughs> hey, what time's the pole dancing, gorgeous? What time are you getting your wallet out? Hey, oh. they're all up for in here, I'm telling you. Oh. You'd have to. You just have to. Oh. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Okay. I've been better. She's dead brave. Wouldn't surprise me if she threw herself in after the little mite. Well, at least the father had the decency to stop at home. He didn't show his face more like. Where were we? Oh, let me see. Uh, 
you were telling me that my mother's a psycho. <laughs> Let's face it, she's not exactly the full shilling, is she? <laughs> Careful, you. Girls turn into their mothers, remember? Now you're really scaring me. <laughs> she's not a psycho. She's she's just a bit lonely and, well, she misses our showering and she's a bit green-eyed because you and me. A bit. First, she forgets to give you that message and then she starts going to matinees with the Invisible Man. <laughs> She's Looney Tunes, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, why don't you and that dirty laugh of yours come back to mine? There's nothing I'd like better. But I've got to get my head down. I've got to be back behind the bar at five. We could get our heads down together. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go on. We need to get the dates in before your mum whacks me between the eyes with a corkscrew. <laughs> I'll swap with Kieran and we'll go out tomorrow night now. Is that soon enough for you? Not really, no. But it'll have to be. <laughs> hey, that, that lad. This is the best birthday I've never had. Hey, do I know how to pick a good venue? Or do I know how to pick a good venue? Look at that. Hey, free stack up. Any chance of getting served or what? No, I'm busy. Oh, it's Babe Central. It's rough as a bear's. Let's go to Belgrave. What? And Mr. Paul dancing? I'll, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Get a good handful, did you? Come on, it's my birthday. Get your hands off me. Don't be like that. Yeah. Well, let's cover it. Oh, thanks. Any a Right? Uh, there's no need for that. Yeah, give me five of that. off. You all slappers in here. It's like the trade descriptions. Oh, I'm a slapper, am I? Yeah. Oh, I've got to so pay. Well, you said I'm a slapper. Uh, and a slapper. Uh, what? Uh, Get off me, I'm working. Get off me, I'm working. All right. Hey, I'm a peacekeeper. Hey, me, mate. Come here. Congratulations, Patrick. Nice one. Don't be blaming me. Hey, there's one thing that does my head in, and that's a feminist slapper. Dad. Leanne. To you, gentle father, we humbly entrust this child so precious in your sight. Take him into your arms and welcome him into your presence, where there is no sorrow nor pain but the fullness of peace and joy with you forever and ever. Amen. I can't see him. He's here somewhere. Yeah, there's plenty of room here. What are they doing here? David. We have entrusted Billy to God's mercy. We now commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Do us a favour, Mike. Big up Manchester for us, will you? Well, I don't know. Uh... Handy for Scotland. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. You get more bricks and mortar for your pound? Hey, oh, what did I tell you? Shoes and handbags, half price. Now you're talking. <laughs> you know, I reckon the old man would have been dead chuffed if he thought you and me were going to be... Leave it, Michael. Leave it, yeah. He sounded a bit of an old schmaltz there. Yeah, well, don't take all day. I want to run through that Kinlock order with you. Right. See you, Mike. Go on, then. Scare me with the contents of that head of yours. Well... Good job we ain't got a cat. Right. But we can splash out on a nice country pile once we sold up back home. <laughs> we'll be quids in. 
So if you want to go and work for Mike... With Mike? Whatever. I mean, end of the day, what's Chingford if you're not in it? And what about Vinny? I've chosen you, haven't I? Have you? I'm not the weakest link in this marriage, Danny. I know. You concentrate on making knickers instead of removing them and we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be better than that. I love you, you dozy sod. May the love of God and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and console you and all who have loved Billy this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good night, Billy. God bless. Sleep tight, precious angel. Rest in peace, Billy, lad. No way. No way! I need to say goodbye to my son. Great dad, you turned out to be. You killed him and you bring a teddy! Hey, baby, come here. If it makes you feel any better, no one can blame me as much as I blame myself. But Billy is my son. I wasn't there for him when he came into the world. And I wasn't there for him when he died. But I have to be here now. You understand that? said our goodbyes. We'll leave you to yours. Thank you. I don't believe this. A daughter of mine working in a dive like, like that. It was Babe Central half an hour ago. Streetcars ringing out. I mean, I'm under the flaming boss. Try 715 all the fines. Low's cheaper than us. Better cars than all. So, what am I meant to do now, Dad? I don't know. Get a job in a bank. Your mate's just got me the sack and lost me me digs. Hey? I've got a room on top floor. You've... No, not like that. Half an hour, forget it. You were meant to be abroad. I was. Hey! I'm homeless and jobless because of you, and you haven't even said you're sorry. Wake up and smell the ashtrays, will you? A bloke puts a bluey down your bra. You say, cheers, nice one. You don't throw a flaming paint all over him. Hey, you ever mention my little bra again, and I'll knock you into the middle of next week, all right? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know about you, like I'm going home. All right, for some? We'll have to flag one down. Anthony's don't come round here. Well, we'll have to walk then, won't we? Here, cover yourself up a bit. There's a lot of dirty old men about. Right, come on, no argument. Weatherfield, <laughs> whoopee. Fleet of cabs, I am. Fleet of them. And here we are, walking. What's all that about, eh? have put Sarah's name and yours on the card. Have they? Quite right, too. It's a bit muddy. Sorry, mate. Thanks. 
You wrecked it in no time, weren't you, mate? Uncle Jay's found it for you. It's been a right kick off here. Mad, innit? Saying goodbye for being said hello. I think about you every day for the rest of my life. And I'm sorry I let you down. But it's complicated. And I would have been a good dad. Sleep tight, Billy Grimshaw. The most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. Kirk, don't want out. So what are you doing here? How did you get in? We didn't have to get in. We live here. Well, where's Les? Les Battersby? Les who? You know, Les. Not come down yet. Well, come and have her on. Lara thinks you're in the wrong house. Oh, yeah. Les who? Oh, I. You're awake, then. Who are these two? They said they live here. They do, yeah. This one's Kirk. He's my lodger. I'll do. This is Chesney. He's a... Uh... Well, he's a bit harder to explain. Ugh. My mum lived here. Then I did. And then she went. Yeah, I suppose that'll do. To be going on with. And who's she? I haven't with to ask. She is my daughter. Oh. Though I wasn't keen on admitting that yesterday. When I seen where she was. What she was getting up to. What was that, then? <sighs> Never you mind. Now, come on, get your breakfast. Then get out, the pair of you. Me and her have got things to talk about. Maybe. Right, I'll be off. Right, uh, see you, love. Todd, you will let us know if you want to go for a drink or won't you? You needn't be around here, we can go anywhere you like. You mean where nobody will know me, so I'm not as likely to get beaten up, yeah? No, I just meant that... It's all right, love, just uh, get yourself off to work, eh? Although now you mention it, that is something you want to be careful about, mate. I'm so bothered. He's only saying that because he's like the rest of us. He wants to help. He doesn't know how. I think he's right. Maybe I should just go and stand outside so they can all have a go at me, just get it over with. Oh, don't say that. You know, it's true, though, isn't it? It's what a lot of people around here like today. And a lot, a lot more, are very sympathetic. Yeah, like, let's see, there's you and there's Jason. Except I don't think he's all that sure which side he's on, is it? I don't think drawing up lists is going to help. It's just that I know that people realise you suffered a terrible loss the same as Sarah. Do you think it'd be all right if I go and take Bethany's present across to her to birthday? Would you like me to take it? Well, why should you if what you said's true? That people are sorry for me as they're for Sarah. Because it's not true, is it? It's our Jason that's telling the truth when he says I better be careful or else I'll get beaten up, yeah? I just didn't think you'd want to face them. No, it's OK. Don't want to go anyway, just forget it. Right, I better go see what the old harem's getting up to. That's what you're getting up to with them. You're having a laugh. You have seen them, haven't you? Fairly normal bunch of women to me. Well, you want to look a bit closer, cos that so room's the only place on this planet where evolution's gone into reverse. Oh, charming. So what are you going to get up to today? Well, I should think, trying to work out what I'm doing in a dump like this. Oh, I shouldn't have asked, that, should I? When we have a perfectly good five-bedroom detached house we could be living in. Well, when you do work out, you will let me know, won't you? See you later. If I'm still here. Oh, you will be. Do you know what, Frank? Deep down, I think you're starting to like it. Get out. I hate funerals, mate. You'd have hated this one, Charlotte. The coffin was this big. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, there is one good thing about funerals. They do remind you that life is for the living. Hiya! Looking for me? 
What makes you think that? I just thought maybe you couldn't wait until tonight. Oh, I can wait longer than that. I just hope you can. He can't shall know. He's done nothing but complain, this lad. Oh, he has, has he? Shut up, you. Now, I'll pick you up at, what, 8 o'clock? Yeah, I yeah, suppose so. And then, it's going to be a night to remember. Right, let's get some work done. How do you think I felt, eh? Eh? Going into a dump like that. And there's my own daughter. My own flesh and blood. Dressed up like... Well, like a... A tart? Well, yeah. I didn't want to say it, but yeah. And how do you think I felt? Seeing the usual load of pathetic losers we get in every night and then seeing my own dad, my own flesh and blood there in the middle of them. It was Patrick's birthday, I've told you. <laughs> what difference does that make? It means it's not the sort of place I go in regular. Yeah, well, it's not the sort of place I work in regular either. And it's not the sort of place you'll be working at anymore. I can tell you that. Oh, you can, can you? I can, and I am doing. Why? What are you going to do? Keep me? Have me living here as part of your new funny family? Soon stop in club, thanks. You are not going back into that club! Oh, am I not? Just you watch. Oh, come on, hey, hey, hey. What's happened to you, eh? What happened to all that travelling abroad? All them good jobs you're supposed to have. I decided to come back, didn't I? Well, OK, but why didn't you come back here? Cos why should I? Toya told me how Janice had gone, she'd gone, you'd been in Nick. Wasn't a lot to come back to, was it? Every family has its ups and downs. Uh, no, they don't, actually. Not like we do. Anyway, never mind what's happened. Or hasn't happened. <sighs> this is still your home. Yeah, well, I can tell that by the way we're rowing. We're rowing because you won't see sense. Well, I've told you once and I'm telling you again. You are not going back into that club. And I'll tell you again. Yeah, I am. So I'll tell you what. What? Next time you and your pals want to come in, let me know. I'll save you a table. Oh. So anyway, it's the opening night and he says would I like to come and bring a guest, so... Tonight. Short notice, I know. Um. Morning. Morning. What? Who's she? Come with me tonight and I'll tell you. I'd love to. Trouble is, I said I'd see Charlie tonight. No, no, I haven't. He said he'd see me and I said yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. Oh, yeah. Go on, I've seen enough of him anyway. Go on, yeah, I'll come with you. Won't Charlie mind? No, I'll be fine when I've talked to him. Be fine, yeah. Give him something else to talk to his dimwit mate about. Excuse me. Is this the only kind of bread you've got? What's on the shelf, yeah? Still, I suppose it's pizzas you specialise in, is it? Not anymore. What's she on about pizzas for? I'll tell you tonight. Suspended? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, I'm fighting. <laughs> you are joking. No. I told you I had that set to with Carl. Yeah. Well, I don't like that sort of thing. So I've got myself suspended. Oh, Marty. Mm, no. I might be older, but still as stupid as ever. So, what's going to happen? Well, I suppose I'll have a disciplinary hearing in a couple of weeks. I'll say I'm sorry. They'll say don't do it again. I'll have my job reinstated. You won't. Yeah, I do. So, anyway, while I'm off, I thought I'd take a break and take him with me. Well, okay, by me. See what he thinks. Yeah. David, can you come down here a minute? All right, you two. Yes. And how are you then, birthday girl? How old are you? Four. Four? Yes, you are. You know, I'm nearly eight, don't you? Eight. Uh, your dad's got a suggestion for you. How do you fancy a week's fishing in Wales? Fishing for whales? Well, you can do that instead, if you want. No, you know, that place where we've been to before. Oh, Cadavan side that doesn't let you play music after nine. Oh, all right. Nine's late in Wales. Do you want to come? So how is she, then, your little girl? It's taken a long time to grow up. Well, she's only how old? Four months. Longest four months of my life. I tell you, I can't wait for her to get a job, find a flat of her own. Don't believe that. Two fifty change. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Hello. All right. What do you want? Coffee, tea, and some biscuits. Oh, uh, Charlie. Hello. I just wanted to say thanks for not minding. You're going to have to give me a clue. About me going out with Shelley tonight. So, I mean, not minding that she can't go out with you? Oh, no, she hasn't told you, has she? 
Cheers, okay, sexy yeah. love. Hey, you were in a good mood today. What do you think? Is it something to do with that woman he's got? Unless Sonia's seen him on the side. He's had his chance with me. Yeah, but you give him another. I would not. <laughs> you would. <watch>. Hiya! <laughs> I've been stopping with my dad, so I thought I'd come and find you. Oh, well, I am so glad you have. <laughs> Let me get you a drink, then you can come and sit with us. <laughs> Betty, Betty, look who it is. Hi, Betty. Hello, love. It's a long time since we've seen you in here. <laughs> what do you want to drink? <laughs> Pint, is it? No, chat. I just want a word with Shelley if she's around. If you wouldn't mind waiting. Waiting's what I'm good at. And then I started working at this club in Manchester. Oh, very nice. That, Betty. Well, it's a change, isn't it? Then my dad turned up. <laughs> Who were he like? Oh, just his taxi driver, mate. Some kind of birthday do or something. All right, well, that's OK, then. So I came back with him. But it was only for last night, though. Oh, no, that's a shame. I'm back at work in ten minutes. I wanted mm. to have a proper catch-up. Hiya. You got something you want to tell me? Uh, yeah, I have, actually. How did you know? I've just been talking to your friend, Sunita. Oh, and she said, look, I was going to give you a ring when it got quiet here. So, what's a big idea? Dumping me so you can go out with her? No, 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 it's not like that. See, she knows this guy who's opening a restaurant. He's invited her in... OK, OK. Well, do me a favour, will you? Ring her when it gets quiet and tell her you can't go out with her because you've already arranged to go out with me. We can go out another night. No, we can't, no. Because I'm fed up with this. Either we go out tonight or forget it. Oh, come on, Jack. I'll be here at eight, as we arrange. And if you're not here, if you've gone off with her, well, then I know where I stand, don't I? <laughs> You're going out tonight, then? You know I am. Which is why Betty's stopping on, for which I am very grateful, Betty. You're all right, love. Out with Charlie. I'm sorry, should I not ask? Not Charlie, no, as it happens. I'm going out with Sunita tonight, if you really must know. Oh, is that why he didn't look too pleased? Whether he's pleased or not, it's up to him. I'll not be ordered about. What would you, Betty? <laughs> would you let a man tell you what to do? It's a long time since any of them asked. <laughs> So, if uh, Charlie comes in tonight looking for you... Well, I'd be wasting his time, cos I won't be here. But he knows that. I told him. If you bring anything back, you cook it yourself. Yeah, we'll eat it ourselves and all. Won't we, mate? <laughs> Bye, Mum. Bye, love. Take care of each other. Yeah, you take care of them in there. I will. Right. Oh, what's he want? Oh, no. Go on, you get off. I'll see to him. Come on, David, get in. I said get in. Otherwise, I'm going without you. See ya. See you, love. What do you want? I've got a present for Bethany. I'll see she gets it. What, are you saying I can't see her now? No, you can't. And that's Sarah saying that as well, is it? Sarah's saying what? It's all right, love, I'll deal with it. No, Mum, it's all right, I'll talk to him. I don't want him in the house, OK? brought this for Beth. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't want her to have it. Sarah... If I give it to her, who do I say it's from? From me? No, I'm not going to tell her it's from you. I told you, I'm never going to mention your name to her ever again as long as she lives. Yeah? What are you going to do that for? Revenge? Getting your own back via Beth? No, I'm not doing it for revenge. I'm doing it for her sake. So she doesn't think you're ever going to be coming round again. She won't be waiting for you to come through the door. Todd, please, if you want to help, just go away and stop away, cos neither of us ever want to see you again. Come on, love. Come inside, eh? Come on. <laughs> it's OK. He's going. He's going. How's your little baby, then? Fine. I bet she gets fussed over, you know, by a grandma and a granddad. <laughs> yes, when it suits them. And then, of course, you've got Blanche. I bet they can't wait to get their hands on her. <laughs> Betty, you wouldn't believe how many times a day I get reminded that Amy is my baby, my responsibility. Actually, that's why I came in here, so I wouldn't have to talk about her. Right. £1.80. Thank you. I just thought I'd stop on a bit, if that's all right. Oh, yeah. I'm really glad. Like I said, 
barely had a chance to exchange a word before. Right, come on, love, what do you want? No, no, it's all right, I'll get them. Can I have a pint and a gin tea, please, Tad? Pint and gin tea, yes. Look, to be honest with you, I rang the club to tell my bean tonight. They said, don't bother, you're sacked. No. <laughs> what for? Well, there was a bit of a carry-on yesterday. They said I was sacked then, but, well, I was hoping that they'd change their mind. Still, one door closes, another one opens, eh? Ta. Well, let's hope so, love, eh? Betty, can you take over here? It's a gin and tonic and a bitter ta. Mm. Yes, what can I get you? Nothing, ta. Shelley in. Shelley? No, no, she's gone. Oh, dear, did she not tell you she was going out with Sunita? I'm not sure I believe you. I beg your pardon? Betty? Sorry, I'm serving. Yes, I know, but could you just confirm to this gentleman that I am telling the truth when I say that our Shelley's gone out, hasn't she? Yeah, about half an hour ago. Don't worry, I don't expect an apology. Cheers, okay, I'm sorry I asked to meet you in here. It's OK. I wanted to get out the rose in case Charlie turned up. Oh, no, I've really messed things up for you, haven't I? No. I have. He's the one who's messed things up, telling me I have to do this and I have to do that. No, this is good. Let's me feel like I'm in charge. You still like him, though? A lot more than a little to him. I must admit, I probably pushed things to the limit tonight. Oh, my fault. Tomorrow night, I'll put a smile on his face. Now, come on, you. Tell me who that woman was in the shop this morning. It's just a pub. It's nothing special. Huh. And there was me thinking it was the Ritz. Yeah, well, if you don't like it, we'll just have the one, then we can scoot off. Oh, hello. So how are you finding my house? Very nice. How are you finding the rent we're paying you? Well, it's not me you're paying. Wouldn't be anyone if I had my way. Yeah. Can we have some drinks here, please, love? OK, love. See ya. Uh, hang on. Do you know them two? As much as I want to. Well, we know him, but who's she? Well, who do you think she is, the way she's bossing them about? Like all wives boss the husbands about. Another one in there, please. You're fairly knocking them back tonight. Well, why do you think that might be? I don't expect me to criticise my own daughter, cos I'm not going to. Though I will say I think she's treated you pretty shabbily. We can agree on that, then. Making arrangements and then changing them on a whim. I'm disappointed in her, to tell you the truth, and I'm sure you must be. Disappointed? Putting it mildly is her. She's a funny girl. Sometimes I don't think I understand her at all. Right, that's 180, please. And one for yourself. Thank you. Do you mind if I make it a gin and tonic? As long as it's a large one, I wouldn't mind at all. Last of the big spenders. Oh, it's nice to have somebody to spend it on. <laughs> Should have stuck with you, shouldn't I? Water under the bridge. Tide can turn, though, can't it? Come back in again. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Is it all right if I get off? Of course it is, Betty. But I don't think there'll be much more now. No, and if there is, I should take care of it. All oh, right. <laughs> so we asked Tracy who she is, because we'd seen her talking to her. Yeah, and we all know Tracy's lying cam. We wouldn't usually believe anything that she says, but, I mean, she did seem to know him. Well, what did she say? She said it's his wife. <gasps> Honest. His wife that's come down to live with him. Who are you going on about? I knew, boss. They're mini Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Mind, Tracy's only telling us that because that's what she was told. Well, so it might not be his wife then. She could just be somebody he's picked up, and that's the story they're telling. And why would we be doing that? To stop you gossiping? Doesn't seem to have worked, does it? Well, so are you his wife then, or not? Well, I've got a certificate that says so and a ring on my finger. Will that do for you? Yes, it will. <laughs> we were just wondering, love, because she didn't move up here together. Well, now you can stop wondering, can't you? I'm sure it won't stop you talking. I'm sure nothing does that. But maybe now you can find someone else to make up stories about. Cos if I hear any more about me, I'm not going to be taking it as well as I am tonight. I can promise you that. Did you do that? I think everybody did. What do you want to do? Get out of here. It's my fault. I shouldn't have bought us. We don't have to go yet, do we? Well, no, but... Let's I'm... have another. I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. Would you it's not just losing Billy. It feels like I've lost myself. I don't know who I am anymore. You. Oh, my lovely daughter. I know. 
I'm Bethany's mum. It was when I was talking to Todd earlier, telling him he couldn't see Beth. Which you'd every right to do. I suddenly realised that my life with him... It's over. Well, I know how that feels. I can't go back to what I was before, can I? A schoolgirl again. I don't know what I am. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can we have your glasses, please? Not you. You can stay. Do you want a whiskey? If you're having one. I'm having a large one. Wouldn't say no, though. See you tomorrow, girls. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Good night, your wife, we hope. <laughs> you don't have to go back to Leslie's, you know. You can start with me. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Yeah, well, it'd be better than waking up with that what's-his-face Kirk leaving all over me. Cheers. Cheers. I hate this place when it's empty. Do you want to go through into the back? Are we talking upstairs or downstairs? <laughs> you want everything on a plate, don't you? <laughs> Which means she's left me to clear up. Why don't you come back to mine for coffee? Yeah, why not? You're supposed to be night off after all. So take it off. Come on. <laughs> 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 well, where are we going now then? Up to you, is that? Oh, well, if it's up to me, come on then. <laughs> <laughs> Not long. Hmm? How was your night out with Sunita? Oh, yeah, it was good, thanks. We had a really nice time. Um, Charlie didn't come in, did he? Charlie? Come in the bar looking for me. Uh, no, no. Oh, good. Still, I think I've got a bit of making up to do. If you think he's worth it. Yeah, I think he probably is. Anyway, I'm going to open some windows and then I'm going to have a bath. Do you want to get in the bathroom first? No, no, I'll wait. OK, I won't be long. Turns out to be his wife, yeah? Who, oh, Mummy? Our new boss. Right. So, Mum just turned up and he's now suddenly living with him. Morning. Reminds me I'm gonna have to tell her. What, that you've sold the house? Have you not told her yet? No. No, I've not had time, have I? Oh, well, I could tell her. I mean, I could tell her. No. I'll do it later today. Sorry, go on then. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Um... Rover's return. It's me. Can you talk? Depends what you're expecting me to say. Look, what happened last night? Can we just, um, pretend it didn't? You're frightened I might think of it as the start of some big romance. I just think we both got a bit carried away, so... We were both drunk, you mean? Might as well, yeah. I shall never touch a drop of alcohol again. <laughs> what I'm saying, we, we're both grown-ups. We both know these things happen. I shan't tell Shelley. Is that what you want me to say? In fact, you didn't even come in. I didn't even see you. I think that's best for everybody, don't you? Best for you, you mean? I could cook you some it. No, sir. What do you want me to do with this Bethany's present? Um, throw it away. Are you sure? Turns out I'm not allowed to give her presents anymore. I'll see her. I don't have anything to do with her. I know you won't believe me, but it might be the best thing in the long run. If you know I won't believe it, then why bother saying it? I don't know. So what are you going to do today? I don't know. I'm supposed to be working in the shop. Well, you don't have to. Well, no. 
Don't need the money, do I? No family to support. I meant they'll understand if you need to take some time off. What? What is it you want me to do? Sit here thinking about everything for the rest of my life? I don't know what I want you to do, Todd. Me neither. Bathroom's free. Mum, can I ask you a favour? Only, I know I were out last night, but would it be OK if I went out again tonight? I'll ring Betty, see if she come in. I wouldn't leave you on your own. You don't have to ask my permission. Yeah, but I don't normally like taking two nights off on the run. It's just the way I cancelled Charlie last night. I feel like I owe it to him. Yeah, yeah, fine. I mean, there's one thing, keeping him in his place. There's another thing, rubbing his nose in it. And I think I might have overstepped the mark, so... I was thinking of taking him for a nice meal somewhere. Shirley, or... I don't want to know. Oh. Right. I'm sorry, but what you get up to with Charlie's your own business. Anyway, I'm going to get ready. I mean, I'd have to say summer, because anybody with normal feelings would. Oh, your boss is here. Well, I'll tell you what I've been telling her. I wish you would. I nearly didn't come in this morning because of who might be serving me. And I may not come in tomorrow because of who I might be serving. You change. Well, I don't know what you mean by that. Look, I might not be able to keep my mouth shut. Having to deal with somebody that suddenly decides he wants to be gay. Mm. Yeah, and then killing his baby in the process. Oh, c come on now, Vera. That's, that's, that's a bit over the top. No, no, no what, not with his bare hands. I'm not saying that. But as good as, that baby died because of the shock the mother got when he told her what his preferences were. Anyway, listen, if he's going to be working here, I won't be doing my shopping here again, and neither will anybody else. So, is he going to be working here? He's down for today. Well, we look to our leader for his customary wisdom and moral guidance. What does King Solomon say? Well, if you're going to tell Todd he can't work in here, I shan't be doing so either. Oh, please. Oh, it gets trickier. Who do you offend, loyal employee or loyal customer? Look, I've got nothing against Todd. No, I haven't, right? I feel sorry for the guy. But? Mm. What time's he on? One o'clock. Fine, I'll be back then. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Putting it off doesn't solve anything. <laughs> There's something funny going on in that storeroom. There's some debt here needs collecting. Did you know it's very rude to refuse to answer when somebody's talking to you? Not when your sanity's at stake. You've been going on about that stockroom all week. Well, yes, because it, well, there's something... Oh, I don't know, something peculiar about it. Well, go on, then. Tell me again. What? Uh, what? Well, well it, it's not so much now as... It's when I come in at six o'clock in the morning. There's a definite chill in the air. There is in most places at six o'clock in the morning. Not at this time of year. And anyway, it's not just the cold. It, it's something else. Hello? Hello? Anybody in? I know that voice. Leanne. Oh, hello, love. Oh, what a lovely surprise. <laughs> just thought I'd come and have a quick look at you. Well, I'm very glad you did. Now, are you back for good or just passing through? Just passing through. No, where to? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> you, you know Norris here, don't you? Yeah, you still here then? Mm, just about. <laughs> we don't normally huddle together in the back, but uh, Norris here thinks that we might have, well, what, a ghost? Not a ghost, Rita. I never mentioned the word ghost. Give me a bit of credit. Don't make me out to be a total idiot. Mm -hmm. Well, not a ghost then, but um, our storeroom gets very cold in the morning. Oh, yeah, it does. Do you know, I always used to think that. Oh. Did you? In winter, yeah. It's the middle of summer. Anyway, never mind that. What have you been up to? Oh, I'm late. I'm sorry, I know. Well, yeah. It's today a quarter of an hour. Oh, what, you didn't have to? I found you in the Rovers. Yeah, I know, but I just expect you to turn up when you say you will. What? I know. Ignore him. Come on. I don't know why he dare show his face. Nick, so come on. You've gone. Well, I haven't. So, where were you last night? I stopped at Janice's. Well, you didn't bother to tell me, eh? What were I supposed to think had happened to you? Think what you like. Well, are you going in or what? I've got stuff I want to collect. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Why shouldn't I be? No, go on. Go and get your lunch. It's fine. 
Todd. How are you, man? I've been thinking about you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't be not uh, after everything you've been through, but um, I think you should take a little bit of time off. Yeah. No. Let me finish. A little bit of what we call um, compassionate leave. Wait. I'd rather be working. No, and I admire that. I mean, don't misunderstand me, but something like this, you need time to come to terms with it. And, um, well, I don't want you to worry being out of pocket. You don't have to worry on that shit. No, so honestly. Let's just say a couple of weeks, shall we? Hmm? And then I'll be glad to see you back, or, or not, whatever you decide. So, why don't you get home? Oh, right. Okay, then. Just take some time out, you know, sort yourself out, and um, we'll talk again. Right. See you then. Bye. I know, all right, I know, but what could I do? You could have been more honest with him. Oh. Told him you were frightened of what your customers might what, think. You really think that would have helped? Anyway, look, do you mind taking a late lunch? I've got to meet Maya. Oh, yeah, right. Was it her idea? Compassionate leave. Sounds like a lawyer's trick to me. Look, I am just trying to get us all off the hook, including Todd. Looking at your watch for? We've only just sat down. I promised Avril I'd only be half an hour. Well, don't you get an hour for your lunch? Yeah, we do, but she wants me to be there when these bars are on. All right, well, better not keep Avril waiting. Hey, I'll hurry up. Maria, she's not. Yeah, you'd rather be spending time with than me. I think this one's for you. Well, he hasn't given up then. I decided to forgive you. Well, I'm not sure that I forgive you. Me? What have I done? Sulking when I said I couldn't go out. All right. Do you want a pint? Please, yeah. Anyway, I thought if you're not doing anything, maybe we could go out tonight instead. Yeah, I'm all for that. See if I can make it up to you. say out about me? Oh, she mentioned that you know been seen one another again. Yeah? Yeah. Well, and then what? She must have said more than that. No. Hey, well, how did she sound? Did she sound, you know, chuffed? No. Oh, well, tell me now, then. Look, I think it'd be really nice if you and her got back together again. And I know I thought you would. Oh, give us a favour, will you? You tell her that. You know, just drop it into conversation. Right, I'll try. See you later. And tell her I've never been happy since she left. In fact, you think I'm looking poorly on account of it. All that, yeah. See ya. See ya. Look, at least I might be able to see. Oh, well, next time, don't bother. What's the point when all you're thinking about is what time you can get back to your precious Avril? She's not my precious Avril. This is Grimshaw, is it? It is, yeah. I'm uh, Graham Lewis from Rylands and Rylands. Thank your pardon? Chartered surveyors. Just come for a quick look around the house. What do you want to do that for? Well, on behalf of the purchaser. Beaumont Estates. No? I'm sorry, I haven't got a clue what you're on about. That's just three pounds, please. And just three pounds is all you're getting. <laughs> so. Do you think Norris is going worse? Or is it just me losing patience in old age? Oh, it's getting worse. There's no doubt about it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I thought either somebody's shop window dummy had come to life and escaped, or it's Nick. <laughs> well, he's around, yeah. So what happened to Canada, then? Which I never thought far enough away, but at least he was stepping in the right direction. Yeah, you're right there. Anyway, he's come back. Started knocking about with this right little madam. Her dresser called Maria. Yeah, I saw her. Maria? Is that the little cow that did the dirty on her, are you? She's the one, yeah. You know, I said her only stopping last night. You don't mind if I stop on a bit longer, do you? <laughs> I know we said we wouldn't mention last night. We did? 
I am Shelley's mother. So? So what am I supposed to do? Just sit by and watch while she goes out with someone with the morals of a tomcat. If I'm a tomcat, what does that make you? Oh, I know what I am, and I'm not proud of it. But can I not ask? Can I not beg you to leave her alone? Just go and find somebody else. You can ask. And the answer's no. I won't. So now what are you going to do? Nothing. So if he comes in here while you're serving? Well, I don't think I've got a lot of choice, Vera. What would be the reason for not doing? Well, all I'm saying is, if you serve him, there'll be others coming in like-minded. And before you know where you are, it'll be one of them gay bars. And normal folk will be drinking elsewhere. So, will you take him back? Well, let's see if he wants to come back. And what does Sunita have to say about it? Or did she just look at you in that disapproving way that she has? I don't know what you mean. Well, I do. It's how she looks at me all the time. Actually, I bet she blamed it all on me, didn't she? Nope. I'll bet she said it was all my idea, didn't she? Go on, admit it, didn't she? She didn't, no. You're lying. He's got a thing about the stock room. It's cold. I always told you, it never stops. Do you think he's sickening for something? Well, he's always sickening for something. It's usually whatever's next in his medical dictionary. I think he's up to the ends. So it will be mumps or, um, myxomatosis. <laughs> so, it's tonight. Definitely. No last-minute changes of plan? No. Nope. Right. I'll pick you up about eight. Just got to ring Betty. Be all right for a minute, won't you? Yeah, of course. Well, what else can it mean? I mean, our house has been sold from over our heads and Steve McDonald doesn't even have the decency to tell us. So what? Will we have to move out? Well, I should think so. I mean, what's the point of buying a house with us still in it? This is just all we need. Right, that's me done then. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Can you just tell us what's actually going on? Um, well, as I told your mother, the, the house is being sold and as part of that process... Yeah, I've yeah, we got... know that, but we live here. What's going to happen to us? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't really deal with that side of things. Um, but I, I imagine you need to talk to your landlord. And... Yeah, if he'll talk to us. I'm really sorry. I... Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's not your fault. And, uh, yeah, we will speak to the landlord. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. I'll see myself out. Thanks. What am I saying thanks for? He can't do it, can he? McDonald, he can't just throw us out. Well, you wouldn't have thought so, which almost certainly means yes, he can. I'll go and have a word. No, no, I'll go. No, but hang on, think about it. You work for him as well. Yeah, I know. And I thought he were my friend, someone I got on with. Just shows you how easy I am to fool, doesn't it? What a soft touch I am. All I'm saying is you don't want to go sounding off at him and end up losing your job. What am I supposed to do? Just say nothing. If I lose my job, I lose my job. <laughs> Then you'll have lost a family, I'll have lost my job, and we'll both have lost our home. It'll be a week to remember. Now, didn't I do well? I bought this lady a drink and she's come back with me to pay for her papers. I don't like being in debt. That's what we <laughs> like to hear. Now, how did you go on with your ghost? Rita, I was not the one who suggested we had a ghost. You told me how there was something peculiar going on in the storeroom. Yes, well, I won't be telling anybody else. Is that a promise? It is, yes. Glory, hallelujah. That's 960, love, to the end of the week. Thank you. Thank you. You. Though, I, I suppose if you were using the word ghost as convenient shorthand for certain phenomena, strange movements in the air, sudden drops in temperature, then you could say we had a ghost, yes. But you wouldn't. No. No. I mean, what must this poor mother think? Pardon, Vera. That toad. I mean, you can say what you like about our Terry, but it's not that way inclined. Never has been. Which I suppose in this day and age, it's something to be grateful for her. Tell her, thanks, bye. Yeah, thank you. That were Bessie ringing back, and yes, yeah, she's coming in tonight, so just for the two of you, that's all right, isn't it? So you can go out with Charlie? Yeah. Please? Will you not? Oh, Mum, I thought we'd go over all this. I'm sorry, but I have to say something. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. And yes, I know you think it's jealousy, but it's not. So what is it, then? 
It's just, I, d I don't trust the man. I see. I think he's a liar and a womanizer and a bad lot. And your reason for thinking this? I can't tell you. Oh, really? Well, I do have a reason, I do, it's just I can't tell you. Well, shall I tell you what I think? Yeah. I think Charlie has been really patient with me, especially after last night. I think he's good company and somebody I want to get to know better. And I'm sorry to have to say this, Mum, but I think you are jealous. Yeah. And I'm really, really disappointed. I really am. So you'll be going out with him? Yeah, of course I will. I had hoped you'd be happy for me, but if you're not, you're not. There's not a lot I can do about that, is there? I get some glasses. Hello. Uh, yeah, but can you make sure that uh, they knock three times so she knows it's you? Tap. Not in yet, are you? Can you switch that off? Now, 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 Eileen. You know the golden rule. We never switch off. Just there's something I'd like to say, and I'd rather we weren't interrupted. We'll make it quick. You've sold my house. Karen told you, did she? No, not Karen. There was a knock at the door. It was a nice man. Turned out to be a surveyor. Eileen, I'm sorry. I was going to tell you. Telling us would have been nice. Although I have to admit, we've been hard to get hold of, you know, what with the funeral and everything. No, I'm sorry. Although, even if you had told us, even if you'd shown us that small courtesy, it wouldn't alter what you're doing, would it? Selling the roof from over our heads? Ah, well, no. See? Now, listen, OK? Selling the house it doesn't affect you. It doesn't change a thing. Except you pay your rent to somebody else. It's just a different rent book, that's all. So somebody's buying the house? With you in it. You. So, uh, yeah. I should have, uh, I should have told you, I'm sorry. But... Don't worry about being thrown out, because you won't be. So you sold the house and me with it? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Just about sums up my life, that, doesn't it? You can buy me when you want me to work, and you can sell me when you don't want me as a tenant. My opinions count for nothing. But as my son reminded me, I can't afford to have any. So, yeah, go on. Buy me, sell me, do what you want. Just hope you got a good price for me. What now? I haven't told you the truth. What about? Last night. Charlie did come in, and he had a lot to drink. And that's supposed to put me off him, is it? And I had a lot to drink. And then, when everybody had gone, him and me, we... We went upstairs, and we went to bed together. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, you went to bed with my boyfriend last night. Oh, nice one. Tell me, Mum, which part of your overactive imagination did you dig this one from? Oh, I'm not making it up, Shelley, you have to believe me. It happened, and it was my fault, but it was his as well. Charlie, the fellow you call your boyfriend. And I'm supposed to believe you? It wasn't long ago that you said he was seeing Deirdre, and the other week you made up an imaginary day for yourself. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Mum. I found the ticket stub. So you went to the cinema on your own big deal. Why lie and say you went someplace with a fella? OK, yes, I made that up, but only to prove that I wasn't bothered about you seeing Charlie. I'm not making this up now, I'm not. It's just like when I was with Peter. You're always there, pouring the poison in. 
And I was right, wasn't I? And I'm right now. Oh, Shelley, please listen to me for once in your life. That fella, the one you think is Mr. Wonderful, he kissed me. He took me upstairs and he made love to me. I don't believe you. Then ask him. I'd never say something like this if it wasn't true. I don't want to see you hurt. Then why say it, Mum? Why say it? It's the truth. Take some mints as well. Them round ones, love. I like to keep them behind the bar, you uh -huh. know. What's <laughs> up with him? Oh, he's trying to contact the other side. <laughs> the other side of what? Ah, well, now, that's a question I keep asking myself. Ah, I can't smell anything. What exactly were you hoping to smell? Well, I, I don't know, but th this woman in here says you can definitely smell, you know, spirits. Hey, are you insinuating I've been drinking? Oh, no, 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 no. Spirits, ghosts, apparitions. I, I, I've been flicking through this magazine on the paranormal. It's most enlightening. He thinks the back room's haunted. No, I don't. It was you that said that. No, what I did say was it, it gets very cold in there and... Well, you get this feeling as if, well, as if you're being watched. Oh, we'll say. I hope you're going to pay for that after bending it back and creasing it. Take the notice, Betty. It's today's obsession. Tomorrow it'll be fly fishing. Hey, do you get this tingling at the back of your neck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, I've had that. I saw something. Well, someone, actually. Oh, many years ago in the pub. I had folk telling me it was this and it was that, trying to explain it away, but... Uh, I know what I saw, and it wasn't of this world. Oh. Mm. Go on, Rita. Make fun of Betty like you've been making fun of me. Creeping up behind me, she was this morning, while I was pouring teas, going, whoa. For all you know, somebody could be trying to contact me back there. And it stands to reason, out of the two of us, it would be me they'd try and get through to. Any ghost would take one look at you and wouldn't bother. No, you've a very closed mind, Rita. Your aura is definitely hostile. So can I wait till then? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got your number. Any trouble, and I'll call you. Yeah. To what do I owe this pleasure? Did you sleep with my mother? I mean, last night. Did you take my mother to bed last night? You what? Honey, that's the tale she's telling. And I want to know, did you? No. No, I didn't. Because it's not too late, you know. We've only just started seeing each other properly. I mean, we haven't even, we haven't even been to bed yet. I mean, we could end it all now if you want. I wouldn't want to end it. Look, Shelley. I don't know what game your mother's playing, but I swear, fetch me a Bible and I will swear on it. I haven't touched your mother in months. Hiya. Hiya, is uh, Audrey in? No, she just went to the old sailors. Can I help? Uh, yeah, I was just after the cup. All oh, right. Well, my name's Maria and I'm a stylist. And you've just caught me to an appointment, so I'm free. Oh, lucky me. Candice, can you just take this lady's jacket, please? Is it just to cut you after? Yeah, please. I stay behind for a few drinks. That's all. A couple of pints, and then I left. I didn't even give her a pet goodbye. I want to believe you. And believe me. Honest, Shelley, you and me, we're building someone. Why would I jeopardise all that for a fling with your mother? I mean, couldn't you think of anything more realistic? Even the one about me seeing Deirdre was more feasible than this one. But she really liked you. What can I say? I liked her. I still do when she's being sane, but not in the same way as I like you. I want a relationship with you. The only thing I wanted with Bev was... I thought we dealt with all this. So did I. She's trying to split us up. That's all this is about. Don't let her shell. We've really got someone. Look, we'll go out on our date tonight and show her nasty little lies haven't worked. Tonight? Yeah, we're going out, remember? I can't. Not tonight. To sort things out in my head. Somebody is lying to me. It's either you or me, Mum. 
I'll speak to you later. So are you from round here then? It's not seen you before. Oh yeah, I've just been away travelling. Mmm, dead envious. I once went to Canada. Really? Yeah, with my fiance. Only it wasn't my fiance at the time. <laughs> oh, you're engaged? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very nice. So what's it like then, your fiance? Nick. Is that his name? Yeah. Nick. Well, he's really gorgeous and sexy. And he's dead considerate and sappy. He's always buying little teddies and things like that. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's dead daft like that. So when are you getting married then? Oh, not yet. I've got to save up first. I want a really big wedding, you see, but it's hard finding a vicar or Mario's because he's already been married once. Got divorced. Oh? Why? What happened? Oh, I said she was a right cow. They were dead young, you see, and he just used to do everything she sold him to. You know the sort. Mm. From the sounds of it, she's a right common tart. I hope we have a quiet night tonight. My veins are playing up to it rotten. Have you seen him? Yeah. And what did he say? Betty, could you um, go and check on the crisps for me? Yeah, of course I can. What did he say? Mum, could you just help Betty, please? I don't want to know. I don't want to talk to you. Not now. I need to think. Come on. Go on. Turn that off, we've got a visitor. What do you want? To apologise. Oh, thanks very much. See you wait tomorrow. Well, don't be like that. Don't be like what? You might be my boss and be able to uh, sell us on when you decide you want to get rid of this place, but you don't have the right to tell me how or how not to be. Yeah, so get lost. What I don't understand, Steve, and this is what really gets to me, is you didn't even think to tell me. I find some moron in a suit on my doorstep carrying out a survey and I don't know what's going on. Do you think that little of me just didn't tell me? Look, it wasn't like that. I mean, you had problems at home, what, with... with Todd and, um... and the baby and everything. I just didn't want to give you any more worry. Yeah, well, it's easy to make excuses, isn't it? You should have said. I know, and I'm sorry, I didn't. I took you in when Karen threw you out. Not because you're my boss or my landlord, because I thought you were my friend. Turns out I was wrong. Here we are. Oh, <laughs> cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. See what I've got. Dominoes? I found them at the back of the sideboard when I was trying to free a knitting needle. No, I didn't know you knitted, Blanche. No, I don't. Only there was a spider in the sink and I wanted the needle to prod it down the drain. I've uh, been having a word with Betty, Rita, you know, about her uh, experience. What experience? She saw a ghost once. Just the once? I'd have thought at her age she'd be seeing them all the time. It just goes to show how layered life is. Dimensions and, and planes. And, and it stands to reason that from time to time these things will brush against each other. What are you talking about? Well, what happens when we die, eh? Now, now the Bible tells us there's an afterlife, doesn't it, Emily? Heaven. So... Suppose this afterlife w w was running now, with all them that have died walking around as usual, but in another dimension. I mean, maybe there's a poor soul trapped in our back room. Has anybody ever died in Stout Room? Of course not, Norris. You're talking absolute nonsense. Oh, we might not be. I mean, when you die, your soul has to go someplace. Your stock room is as likely a place as any. And, and before the cabin was built, what, what was on that side? Community centre. And before that, the mission. Mission? The Glad Tidings Mission. It was a lovely Victorian building. I worked there for a while. Oh, now, that sounds the sort of place where people would have died. Very Charles Dickens. Oh, I don't think anyone died there. Mm -hmm. Mrs Sharples used to live there. Who oh, was her daughter? Yeah, I rather think that she died in the vestry. What was her name? Oh, Vera. Vera Lomax. It was in the 60s. Vera Lomax, hmm? Did you feel that? What? It was like an 
icy hand on the back of my neck. Vera Lomax, it happened again. Hiya. Oh, hiya. Fancy seeing you here. Oh, it is my local. <laughs> Who are you with? I'm just on my own. Oh, why don't I get a drink then and join you? Said I'd meet my fiance in here. Oh, Nick. Yeah, you get to meet him. <laughs> Can't wait. could do with a bit of help in there. She won't talk to me. She won't let me explain. Explain what? I've done something stupid. Unforgivable. I, was, I wasn't the only one at fault, but she won't see that. <laughs> she hates me. Of course she doesn't hate you. She thinks the world of you, love. She used to. But now she'll never forgive me. I've ruined everything. Well, would you like me to go and have a word with her? Oh, yes, Betty. If you could just get her to talk to me yeah. about it, if I can just make her see that I'm not the one to blame. Right, well, I'll go and see her. You go and serve Maria. Right. Hiya. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Have a drink. Uh, mm, you're right, I'll get in. Oh, well, do you mind getting me from one then as well? Vodka and lemonade. Your friend? Yes, yeah, she's just gone to the toilet. You don't mind, do you? She was sat on her own. And you didn't want her to be lonely. Oh. Aren't you cute? <laughs> It's years since I played dominoes. Oh, it's like riding a bike. It'll soon come back to you. This, this Vera thingy, well, what did she die of? Was it anything contagious? So, how many do we kick off with? Is it seven? TB, rickets. No, it was the 60s, not the Victorian times. You've got to have a double to go first. Oh, well, suppose none of us has a double. Uh, I seem to remember it being something connected with her brain. Used to complain of headaches. Oh, headaches. Perhaps that's why she wanted to contact you. Get some paracetamol. How many do we need? Here you go. Oh, here she is. Nick, this is. Do you know what? I don't even know your name, do I? Hello, Nick. Yeah. Leanne? Yeah. As in the wife. As in common tart. Jason reckons we should do a flit. Well, don't. Oh, don't worry. My days of running off into the night are well and truly over. Oh, I'm sorry. So you keep saying. Well, don't worry, I'll be at work tomorrow. Big smile on my face, pretending all's well. I'm very good at that. I buried my grandson the other day. Never even held him. I've got one son kidding himself that he's God's gift and the other one on the brink of God knows what. They need security. They need a home. They've still got a home. Look, the only difference is, is that the rent is going to go into another guy's pocket. You've got a rent book. You've got rights. It's the principal. I'm 43. I should have my own place by now. I've worked hard all my life. I've held down some crummy jobs. And what have I got to show for it? A few sticks of furniture and debt hanging around my neck. Oh, don't listen to me. Could be worse. Could be shacked up with one of the idiots on the street. <laughs> what about Les Battersby or Jack Duckworth? Yeah, or you. Me? Why me? Uh, Steve, you're so easy to manipulate. I mean, you just don't see it coming, do you, when Karen swoops in for the kill? I bet this were her idea, selling this place. Well... Of course it was. It always is. <laughs> you should be thanking me. What for? For not taking advantage of you. You coming round here, not wanting me to be upset. I could have worked you over for a pay rise. Still could. Sure you couldn't. <laughs> Steve, look. Cheers. You've really cheered me up. <laughs> oh, I do wish you'd tell me what it is, love. I mean, I hate to see you like this. Why isn't life simple, eh, Betty? Well, what's happened? It's something to do with your mother, is it? She said she slept with Charlie. My Charlie, last night when I wasn't here. Oh, no. Well, I've been to see Charlie, and he said it's a lie. It's all a lie, and I don't know. I don't know who to believe. Well, why would you say such a wicked thing as that as it wasn't true? Charlie reckons she's trying to split us up. Oh, look, it strikes me. As soon as sex rears its head, common sense goes straight through the window. I mean, you think... Oh, no. 
Surely Bev wouldn't do that to you. Oh, where's the sense in it? I mean, look, she might be your mother, but, well, she is a woman, love. You know, same as you. So, you think it happened that they did what she said? Oh, I don't know. You know them both better than anybody. I mean, maybe Charlie is right and she's trying to split you up. Maybe she's right and she doesn't trust him. One of them's lying, love. All I can suggest to you is, well, go by your own instincts, love. You knew who I was. No, I never. Yeah, you did. You knew who was talking about Nick. No, I didn't. You kept going on about this wonderful fiancé, this kind and considerate, sexy Mr. Perfect. It sounded at all like the Nick I was married to. Let's just go. No, not wasting the drink. We're not running away just because she's turned up. There. That's no good to you, is it? Because you haven't got a five. <laughs> Come on, Norris, you'll go. Oh, I, I, I was just thinking. Oh, here we go. This, this Vera Lomax, she, she died suddenly, you said. Oh, yes, it was a great shock. Yes, well, perhaps she left things unsaid. Look, are we playing or not? I mean, maybe that's why she's trying to contact somebody from this side. Well, if she is, I know how she feels. Now, are you laying a domino or not? Right. Now, you knock, Emily. Oh, I don't need to knock. That's not the one you just picked up. That were a three and a two. How do you know what she picked up? Anyone could see. She should keep her tiles close. I must have had it all along. <laughs> oh, dear. I did tell you I haven't played for years. It's no good, oh, dearing. I can't go now. I was going to be out, but now I've got to knock. Of course, the real question we should be asking ourselves is why now? Why is she trying to make contact now? There's so many things we'll never understand. How is she? What did she say? Oh, she says she'll see you. Oh, Betty, thank you. Don't thank me. What kind of a mother are you? Can see I was right about you. You are common. Have you looked in the mirror today? <laughs> and you can stop with the miscongeniality bit. I know all about you, Nick and my sister's fella. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. Yes, it was. You broke her heart. She said you were a selfish, whoring little cow, and she was right. <laughs> Just remember that you hit me first. Tell you might have ran away from you, but you're dealing with a different matters be now. Oh, Leanne, stop it! Get off me! Leanne, 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 stop it! Get off, get off me! Get off me, Nick! Just stay away from us. You come nearer again, and so help me, Al. What? So help you what, Nicky? What are you gonna do, eh? Try and ruin my life like you did last time? Force me to have another abortion? Oh, yeah. I was weak when I was married to you, Nick, but I'm not anymore. Oh, you might have put me behind you playing happy families with that stealing cow. But I pity you. You're pathetic. You deserve each other. So I'll tell you what, why don't we have a toast, eh? To the happy couple. Oh. Congratulations, Nick. <laughs> so tell me again. Tell me what happened, the truth. We had a few too many drinks. There was no one else here. I don't know whose idea it was. It wasn't planned, it just happened. Suddenly we were kissing. The next thing I knew, he was leading me upstairs. He led you? Yeah, and then, well, I'm not gonna draw diagrams. No? Oh, I thought the sordid details would be right up your street. Give your imagination something to really get to grips with. You still don't believe me, do you? No. I don't. I'm sorry, Mum, but you've given me no cause to believe you after everything you've lied about and made up. What's he said, Charlie boy? Denied it, has he? Yeah. He has. Seeing as it never happened in the first place. It did. It happened just like I'm telling you. I might have known he denied it. He's a fella, isn't he? I bet he's been sleeping around behind your back the whole time he's been seeing you. He's playing you for a fool, Shelley. No, Mum. The only one who's doing that is you. Why? Why would I make this up? Because you're jealous. Because I'm getting somewhere with a decent fella and you just keep getting rejected all the time. You throw yourself at men, make a complete fool of yourself, then sit round licking your wounds like an embittered cat. You poison. You can't bear to see anybody that's happy because you're so 
washed up and pathetic. You can't talk to me like that. I'm your mother. I never thought the day would come when I would say this. But you are no mother of mine. I want you out. I want you out of this pub. And I want you out of my life. You don't mean that. Oh, oh yes I do. Now go and pack your bags and get out. Shelley, I were open. Once you'd had time to sleep on it, you think I've slept? We shouldn't let this split us up. But it's all right to split me and Charlie up. No. I'm sorry, Mum. I've made my choice. But it's the wrong one. Charlie lured me into bed the moment your back were turned. I wouldn't make something like that up. You do anything to wreck him and me. It took me a long time to see it, but I do now. Shelley, you can't trust him. Oh, and I'm not falling for that one either. I am sick of living with your poison. I want you out. What's happened? You're never having another row. It's more than a row, Fred. You've got to the end of the day. Whatever happens this time? If your Ashley were heading for disaster, would you just stand there and watch, or would you try and warn him? I'd warn him, of course. I'm not saying he'd listen, mind. Well, there you have it. Is this to do with Charlie? <coughs> ah. On the other hand, sometimes it pays to send out. Let them learn from their own mistakes. Never learnt from mine, more's the pity. No, neither did I. I say I didn't either. I don't know what was said between a pair of you. But I'm sure she'll come round. I don't think so. You heard her. And I shall make her come round. And you know, she can't, she can't just go sacking people and leaving me short-staffed. I'll wait till she cools down and then have a word. Toast? Keeping me up all night with your coughing and your wheezing. I've got a cold coming on. Have you, Kazakh? It's, it's exercise you need, that's what it is. Look, it's a well-known fact that men die younger than women without you speeding up the process. Well, you're managing that fast enough all by yourself. Well, you can think what you like. I'm going to do something about it. Oh, about time. I've been stuck in here on my own since 8 o'clock. I'm sorry, all right, but you're going to have to cope just a little bit longer because I've got to get to Swinson to help with a stock check. You are going to get someone to cover well talks off, aren't you? Yes, yes, but it's not that easy. I mean, who is going to take on a job just for a few weeks? Who? In other words, why bother when Muggins here can do it all? Mm -hmm. All right, let me do that. No, I can manage. No, don't be stupid. It's I heavy. said it's I can heavy. manage. Oh! I'm sorry. Oh, here, come on, sit down. Uh, come on. My t what did she go and do that for? It what? was an accident. Oh. Oh, hey. Hey, can you, can you wiggle it? Oh, no. Oh, well, it's probably broke. Oh. Better get to doctors right away, then. It's OK, really. I think maybe Jack's right. Mm. Great. That's all I need. Oh. Would you like anything with that? Uh, no. Bacon and egg, uh, sausage balm cake? Bit of peace and quiet will do me fine. Right? You really expect me to believe you didn't know the hammer back? I didn't. Look, it was as much a shock to me as it was to you. Smug cow. Like me get all friendly with her just so she could have a laugh. Oh, guess what? I used to be married to your fiance. Yeah, well, I'm sure she'd be gone soon. She better have be. But meanwhile, I want you to stay away from her, all right? I'm worried I'm tempting. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry that I ever doubted you. I shouldn't have listened to her. I know what she's like. She'd do anything to split us up. Yeah. Well, I thought she'd succeeded this time. I know, and I'm sorry. I'm surprised you still want to go out with me. You do, don't you? Of course I do. They're more than the mad mother to put me off. Well, it won't happen again. I've told her to sling her up. You what? She's got till the end of the day to pack her bags and to get out. Oh. Don't you think you're being a bit hard on her? After what she did. I don't want to be the cause of you two falling out. If she's the cause, not you. What have you got to feel guilty about? Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I've had enough. I suppose if you feel that strongly about it. I do. Making something up as sick as that. I can't forgive her this time. I'm surprised you can. Well, she's your mother, ain't she? <laughs> 
In name only. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's best if she does go. It's a bit of a coincidence, don't you think, that Vera Lomax turns out to have died in the very place where I've been feeling a cold presence? Oh, a huge coincidence. Mm, just because you're not paranormally sensitive. I'm becoming very sensitive, Norris, to the whole business. Now stop banging on about it and hurry up with that tea. <laughs> what on earth? That box just, just, just threw itself at me. Boxes do not pick themselves up and fling themselves across the room, Norris. Exactly. It fell off the shelf. That's hardly convincing proof of paranormal activity. Now, oh, come on, put that kettle on. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that is it. Either the ghost goes or I do. Oh, for goodness sake. What will you do for stuff? I'll find someone. You've had rows before. What's so special about this one? This one will be the last, because after today, I'm never going to have to see her again. No, no, you don't mean that. Oh, I do, Fred. I want her out of here, and I want her out of my life. For good. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happened between you two, but she's not for shifting. I say she's not. It's all right, Fred. Thanks, anyway. Thanks for trying. You never guess what's happened. Shelley's chucked Bearville. All right. But you don't happen to know why, do you? Customer waiting. You don't seem very surprised. After your lies? <laughs> I'm not. They weren't lies. Oh. Well, he condemned them, aren't you? Whichever way you look at it. And Charlie gets off scot-free, does he? We'll see about that. Did you see the doctor? Yep. I'm fine. He said it's just bruised. Good. I'm sorry you got in a move before. No, you're absolutely right. I should help out more. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you a hand. Right, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and um, never mind that. Um, take a proper lunch break. Shut the shop. Shut the shop? Shut the shop. You feeling all right? Never felt better. Bev, I'm sorry the way things have turned out. No, you're not. You've got my daughter and you've got rid of me all in one stroke. Congratulations. Neither of us had to lose out. If you just kept your mouth shut, like I said... Then she'd be none the wiser. Then nobody would have been hurt. And that's what counts, is it? I want you to tell her the truth. You what? If you really care about her, then you'll be honest with her. And if she really cares about you... She'll forgive you. Yeah, right. Nice try, Beth. Please! Don't do this to me, Charlie. I'm begging you. She's all I've got left. Sorry. But I'm not prepared to take the risk. No. I suppose you're not. Because for all your macho male swaggering, when it comes down to it, you're just a pathetic little coward. You don't know what love is. You're too selfish. Look, I care about Shelley. That's why I want to keep her. And you'll destroy her family to do it. Oh, I think you did that all by yourself, Beth. I mean, what kind of a mother would do that to her own daughter anyway? <sighs> one day she'll do that to you and all. Because one day she'll see you for what you really are. Don't blame me for not speaking. 
Been a bit of an idiot, haven't I? Yeah, you could say that. Well, just put it down to the drink. <laughs> or maybe it's just in the blood. Whatever they are. Look, can we start again? It wasn't the best reunion, was it? Well, I'm not really into reunions. Oh, you know what I mean. Look, I don't want all this bad feeling. What happened between us were years back. We were just a couple of kids who didn't know what we were doing. It's not how you felt at the time. Yeah, well, didn't know any better then. If I had have had that baby, I would have been saddled for life, wouldn't I? You were right. We were too young to get tied down like that. You did me a favour, really. Well, you didn't do me one with Maria. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Never could keep me gob shut, could I? No. <laughs> so anyway, how are you? I thought you were abroad. Yeah, I was, but after a bit you miss the beer and chips, don't you? Is that why you left Canada? No, I fell out with my uncle. But I'm doing all right now. I'm manager in a textile factory. Oh, very nice. And about to get married. You've done really well for yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I like to think so. You know, it's... It's really good to see you again. Yeah, you too. What's all this? Kieran says you're chucking your mum out. That's right. But why? What's happened? She keeps interfering between me and Charlie. Wants to split us up. She always has. That was mother's for you. Man used to do it all the time. Well, you're sensible, aren't you? You got away from yours. Don't mean I don't miss her like mad. Just leave it, will you? No, I won't. She's your mum, Shell. Don't do what I did, cos I tell you, you'll regret it every single day. When the going gets tough, it doesn't matter how old you are, your mum's the first person you run to. And if she's not there, it's hard. Believe me, you and her have been through so much together. You've supported each other all the way. That counts for a lot, does that? Well, she's not supporting me now, is she? It's like I get another chance of happiness and she wants to wreck it. Wants to make me miserable like her. But why? What's she done? What can be that bad for you to want to chuck her out? All right, I'll tell you. She reckons Charlie slept with her. Oh, my God. Did he? No. Of course he didn't. She's making it up. How do you know that? Because I asked him and he said no. And he's caring and he's decent and he'd never do that to me. Yeah, but all the same, why would she make up something like that? Because she's had it in for him ever since he dumped her. Because she's a malicious, twisted old cow who wants her own back. How can you talk about her like that? Because it's true! I'm sorry, Shell, I'm finding this really hard to believe. She's always struck me as a really nice person. Oh, she has, has she? Then why did she sleep with Kieran when you were still engaged to him? What? what? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I never meant to tell you that. Kieran and... No, I don't believe you. Then ask her. Shall I? It's not true, is it? Not with Kieran. <gasps> so need to wait. It wasn't like it sounds. How could you? What have I ever done to you to deserve that? Oh, nothing. I never meant to hurt you, Sunita. You and Kieran have been rowing. Don't and I... you dare try and justify it. I've just been stood in there defending you to Shelley. But everything she said about you's right. You are malicious and twisted, and you deserve everything you get. A poltergeist. Oh yes, yes, it fits the criteria exactly. Objects being launched through the air. Uh, and see here, see interference with household objects such as radios, appliances. The kettle. It'll have blown a fuse, that's all. Honestly, he's got me thinking I can feel cold spots now. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. I've had headache all morning, and what did Vera Lomax die of? A brain tumour. It's empathy. It's being hit on Ted with a box of folders, more like. Oh, I don't know. I think he's got something there. I reckon he's definitely possessed myself. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You, you can <laughs> laugh, but I tell you, that room needs exercising. <laughs> yes, love. <laughs> Ten cigarettes, please. Oh dear, what brand? Any. I didn't know you smoked. I don't normally.
Are you okay? Oh, Deirdre. I've made such a mess of things. <laughs> I feel terrible. It's a bit late for that. And if you've come to apologise, it's a bit late for that and all. I know, but I want to. It was just the once, and she came on to me, not the other way around. That's not an apology, that's an excuse. Why do men always confuse them? It was strictly speaking, I wasn't being unfaithful. I mean, we were split up at the time. I don't remember us being split up. Well, I thought we were split up. The nearest we got to splitting up was when I was mad at you for not taking any time off. And you ended up sleeping over at the Rovers. You didn't waste much time, did you? I was only gone ten minutes. And then Bev, yeah? She actually looked me in the eye and said you'd slept on the sofa, the cow. I know, I was drunk. I was drowning me sorrows about us. And she more or less took advantage of me. Oh, no. Don't think you're getting off. I bet that's why you brought the wedding forward, isn't it? Because you were feeling guilty. No, honest. You would have let me marry you after you'd slept with her and I'd have been none the wiser. And there was me, feeling bad about letting you down, you creep. At least you know you made the right decision. Yeah, and it's a pity I didn't make it sooner, isn't it? When you first came back and messed things up between me and Dev. If it wasn't for you, I could have been married to him by now. Well, there you go. Everything has its upside. Get out. Come on, let's not have any hard feelings between Get us. Get out! Uh, I, I took the liberty of adding two sugars. I, I, mean, I do say it's, it's good for shock. And, uh, well, you, it looks as if you needed it. Thanks very much, Roy. Rather mm. you than me. I don't even take the sugar. There's someone else being kind to me when I don't deserve it. After what I did to him, making that stupid bet, causing all that trouble. Seems like everyone who's ever been nice to me I've done the dirty on. I mean, you couldn't wish to meet a sweeter girl than Sunita. Sunita? Why? What? And then there's you. Could have been my best mate if I hadn't messed that up and all. Now I've gone and done the same to me own daughter. Do you want to tell me what's happened? She hates me, Deirdre. She's throwing me out. Why? The other night when she were out, me and Charlie went to bed together. You and Charlie? I know it were a terrible thing to do, but I can't help myself where he's concerned. And I were drunk. Oh, listen to me, trying to make excuses even now. There's no excuse. It were an awful thing to do, and I hate myself for it. But I have to say, Beth, I don't blame her for chucking you out. Your daughter's boyfriend. I just hope she's chucking him out as well. That's the worst of it, she isn't. He denied it all, so she thinks I've made it up to spite. I see. You don't believe me either, do you? It's difficult for me to know what to believe and what not to believe, Bev. I've been on the receiving end of your accusations, remember? Oh, that would be different. I got hold of the wrong end of the stick with you and Charlie, but I'm not lying now. We slept together. I know that makes it worse than if I had been lying. That's why I held off telling her. But I'd rather have her hate me than see her get hurt again. And she will if he can do that with me and lie about it. He'll do it again with another woman. Woman, I was watching that. Never mind that. I've got a present for you. Present? What kind of present? Where did we go for our honeymoon? Cleethorpes. Why? Because I think you'll be going back there again. Oh, like a weekend break then. <laughs> oh, I think it'll be longer than that. Tyrone, bring it in. What the hell is that? I bought it. Oh, Fred Elliot. You're going to be cycling to Cleethorpes and back. You barmy woman. That's an exercise bike. You can't take that on the road. Well, I know that, you daft day, Perth. You're not really going to cycle to Cleethorpes. You'll just pretend you are. That was my idea, that was. Give you a target, motivate you. It's what all the top athletes do, set themselves a goal. 
Yeah, and your goal is to cycle 200 miles, which is about the same thing. You start staring mad, woman. There's no way you're getting me on that thing. Now, look here, Jack Duckworth. When you had your heart bypass, that doctor told me you had to have regular, gentle exercise. Yes, with an emphasis on gentle. Cycling 200 flaming miles is anything but gentle. Well, look, the next time you have a sip of this is when you lose the same in sweat. You're not dying on me. Yeah, probably will if you get me on that. Um, would you like me to make you a fresh cup, only that looks like it's gone cold. Are you all right? It's fine, really. What am I going to do, Deirdre? Well, whatever did or didn't happen between you and Charlie... It did. Yeah, well, Shelley obviously can't deal with it at the moment, so there's no point trying to force her. What, so we just give up and go? Let him take her from me? I don't think you've got much choice. I've already lost one daughter. I don't think I can bear it if I lose me <laughs> Oh, look, come here. <laughs> Try and drink some of this, if you can stand it. You know, when Jimmy died, what got me through it was knowing I still had to look after our Sharon. There were days I didn't want to get up in the morning, but I did because I knew she still needed me. Then when I lost her too, it all seemed pointless. You know, like when you come into a room and you forget what you're coming for, that feeling of trying to remember why you're there. It was like that all the time after Sharon died. When Shelley took me in... It was like a lifeline. Oh, we got so close, her and me. Malcolm and ruined it all. Aye. She'll come round eventually. How can she? When I think of the times that me and Tracy have fallen out, and I mean daggers drawn, I never want to see you again kind of thing. And look, she's back home, and I'm dandling me grandchild on me knee. <laughs> Whatever you've done, one day she will forgive you. She has to, because you're her mother and she's your daughter. And you can never break that bond, no matter how much one of you might want to. And believe me, there have been times when I have. I hope you're right. I am. Trust me. Hi. Did you get your lunch break? Yeah. And are you okay? Not really, no. no. I was in the pub this lunchtime and Shelley said to me that. Maya! <sighs> what do you think of this? Oh, fantastic. Mm, it is, isn't it? <laughs> you can wear it tonight when we celebrate. Oh, why? What are we celebrating? Oh, well, I went to the doctor's this afternoon. What's wrong? Oh, well, nothing. I just, uh, you know, dropped something on my foot, but uh, dong. I'm fine, <laughs> I'm fine. But while I was there, I asked the locum to um, check to see if the health test results were back. Mm. And? And they were. And I'm perfect. Oh, that's mm. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now we've both got the all clear. Yep, so you know what that means, don't you? Uh, we can give blood without worrying. Uh, no. Donate our organs. <laughs> we... Mm? can go ahead and set our wedding date. Oh, that. Tell you what. Mm. Why don't we go home? Mm. I'll slip into this and uh, we can celebrate now instead. Mm. Excuse me, can you... Um... Manage on my own, yeah. of course. Do you think I've done the right thing, Betty? What? Asking her to leave? Oh, I don't know, love. It was just something Sunita said. Got me thinking. I mean, I know my mum can be a right cow, but she has helped me through some really hard times. And all that stuff with Peter. I couldn't have coped without her. I wish I could help you, love, but, well, I can't. I mean, it's got to be your decision. Uh, Fred's just taking my cases through. I'll, I'll leave those to cool for a bit. Where will you go? Back to Bradford. I'm going to stay with some friends for now, you know, till I get myself sorted. I know I might get my old job back. I'll miss this place. I'll miss you. Taxi's here.
let's not keep it waiting. goes well. You know. Thanks, Betty. It's a damn shame it's come to this. I say a damn shame. I, for one, will miss you. You've been a belting barmaid. And more important, you've been a damn good friend. Right. Let's get off. Oh, you broken, is it? No. Ah, well, England's just as good this time of the year, That's though. It, just I... shut up and get on with it, will you? Sorry. I love you so much. Mum, it doesn't have to be like this, you know. If you could just accept me and Charlie. I can't love, not knowing what I know. Mum, I'm giving you a chance here. If you just admit that you were making it up, then I'll forgive you, I promise you. I'll never mention it again. But it's the truth. Well, just go, then. Shelley. Just go. I hope you can live with yourself. Mum, why can't you just be happy for me? How can I? One day he's going to break your heart. When he does that, you ring me and I'll come. Wherever I am, I'll come. You remember that. Everything all right? Let me see. A night of passion, followed by a full English, all served up by the gorgeous blonde who manages my local. What red-blooded bloke wouldn't think he'd died and gone to heaven, eh? Well, I'm not doing so badly either. Last night was really special. All the better for the way. Yeah. Feels good being able to trust again. I just wish my mum could come to terms with... I hope she's going to be all right on her own. Don't worry. Time's a great healer. Once she's sorted her hair, she'll be in touch. Oh, I didn't know we were expecting company. You're looking radiant this morning, Betty. Yeah. After a brew, are you? No, no, I've got to open up the yard. Uh, right. I shall see you later. Don't leave it too long. Mm. <clears throat> Bye, Betty. Ta-ta. I have thought about this, you know. Mm. After everything that happened with me, Mum, well, I need him. Well, yeah, it seems very nice. A word to the wise. Over the years, I've seen too many feet go under this table too quickly. A pretty face and a pub don't attract the right fella. Are you trying to poison us or what, Roy? <clears throat> Apologies. I'll see to it straight away. What's up? I neglected to prick the young man's Cumberland. Consequently, it's undercooked. Mm. Can't say I'm surprised. You've been miles away all morning. Like the matter? Oh, far from it. Uh, actually, uh, things couldn't be better. Why? What's happened? Everything comes to those that wait, but you make sure you're home promptly this evening and all will be revealed. Right, well, you can't do that to me. I'm going to be on pins at work. Highly appropriate for a garment factory. <laughs> <sighs> Go on. <laughs> you are a tease, very cropper. Anybody ever told you that? Uh, no, no, but I, I find it a strangely comforting epithet. <laughs> Excuse me. Ready soon. Mm. Oh, just a moment. Listen, 
don't know. This probably some Nita are wondering where I am. Come on, it's nearly 12 o'clock. Irresponsible for once in your life. No, 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 Yo! Hmm? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's uh, Devendra Alhan, right, yeah. No, stop it. Hmm? Oh, no, no, it's fine. I've, uh, I've picked him up yesterday. Yeah. Why, what's the, uh... Uh, well, no, I mean, I suppose I could uh, come in sometime tomorrow. It's... Right, um, is there anything, um... Right, I'll be over there shortly. Yeah. Bye. Who is that? Um, doctor surgery. The rest of my results are in. Oh, I thought you got them already. Yeah, so did I. Is something wrong? Uh, well, they didn't say, but they want me to uh, go and collect them today. So, uh... <laughs> What's the hurry? Why can't it wait till tomorrow? Hey, look, if it was anything serious, then one day wouldn't make a difference, would it? No, it's probably just uh, a mix-up. Look, I saw the locum yesterday, right? It's probably my own quack isn't up to speed. Oh, that must be it. Yeah. I mean, if they want a second opinion, I can tell them you're as fit as a fiddle. 30-year-old one at that. Mm-hmm. Progress as well, driving... But about time, me and the lad have been waiting for some scram, haven't we? He's been going flat out in that garage all morning, and, and I've been... And I bet good. you've been flat out on there, by the looks of things. Well, them days are over. Ta-da! What the hell is that? Cycling yeah. shorts, and I've got a map, and, and I've got a book of trails. I am going to plot the most scenic route from here to Cleethorpes, and they say them moors are beautiful this time of year. You were going out with your tiny mind, woman. Now, listen here. That doctor said it'll work wonders. You'll feel good and you'll look good. Hey, you could look like this. Yeah, don't you want a body like that? To show off in Rovers? That won't be the only damn thing I'll be showing off if I put these on. It'll be like, like a, a, a pound of loose oranges. <laughs> Overwrite sapsobers, you mean. <laughs> and then I'll stick your bike on the map and we'll move it along each night, show how far you've pedalled. I'll tell you where you can stick that bike and I don't need a grid reference. And I'm not doing it! We'll see. Where are you going? And what about my dinner? I'm standing in for Roy, aren't I? Now, look, you'll have to make your own. Only make some at light. You don't be cycling on a full stomach. Oh, what do you want? I, I won't incommode you any longer than necessary. H have your annulment papers come through yet? Oh, uh, well, not that I remember, but let me think. There was, um... Catalogue, mobile phone bill. Oh, and a postcard. I don't her. understand it. Mine came through this morning. You should have received yours too. Oh, so you mean we're still married? You know, maybe this is a sign, Roy. Maybe we've been too hasty. What? Well, maybe we should forget about the past. Move on. You know, I'm game, and uh, well, you're looking mighty fine today. Yes, sir. You're joking. <sighs> Nothing gets past you, does it, Roy? Don't get your wife fronts in a twist. Papers came this morning. I'm no longer Mrs. Roy Cropper, and I am grateful of that. Well, rest assured, the feeling is mutual. Well, that doesn't take long. Didn't it? No, I, uh, I lost track. So what's the verdict? <sighs> Dev? The locum, uh, he'd uh, made a mistake. The test results, they weren't complete. And? <sighs> they found something wrong, haven't they? Haven't they? Maya, let's calm down. Oh, this is all my fault. I should never have made you take those stupid tests in the first place. No, it's, it's always best to know. To right? know what? Tell me what? Dev! To know, uh... <laughs> what? To know that everything's um, okay. You're all right. Uh, slightly um, anemic, you know, but nothing for you to um, worry about. I'm fine. Oh, thank heaven! Promise me you will never scare me like that again. No. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you. Yeah, good. Oh, cheers. Okay. Is your boss not coming in this lunchtime? No, I think he's having a break from hot pot. 
I can't get enough of it. So any time he's not around, Shell, you can always rely on me. Betty sees to the hot pot, Jason. You know, he play these games with your mother. You don't have to start on you next, do you? Oh, don't be daft, Betty. Mm. Oh, uh, good afternoon, Kenneth. Uh, I, I was just wondering if I might pick your brains, as that fellow said to Trotsky. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just about to get some lunch, actually. Well, I won't keep you. Only I, I've been researching the paranormal. Oh, it's a wonderful tome, this. Uh, the tale of the Bolton Banshee is enough to make your hair curl. What hair? You uh, might have known uh, that uh, we have an airy presence in the cabin. Aye. I don't know why Rita keeps you on. And I'm holding a seance, you see, to exorcise it. And I, I just wondered if you might know of anything I might need. Well, I don't know much beyond bell, button, candle, I'm afraid. Um, incense, perhaps, or a, a priest, of course. Yes, yes, well, I was going to enlist the local vicar, but uh, Emily put the kibosh on that. Uh, apparently, she doesn't believe in the forces of evil, despite living next door to Les Battersby. <laughs> well, Emily's probably very wise. Best not to dabble in these things, you know. The mind can play some strange tricks. Have you thought about going on holiday? I thought you were more enlightened than that, Kenneth. Folk like you have persecuted those with sight down the ages. You'd, you'd had the lights of me burnt at the stake. <laughs> those were the days. I take it you won't be joining me to me tonight. <sighs> well, it's not quite my cup of tea. I'll come to your little seconds, Norris. There's a few people I'd like to have a natter with. No, thank you. I'm not holding a bingo club reunion. I'm trying to commune with the spirit of Vera Lomax. You won't make a circle with just two people. Well, well, all right, then. I'll see you in here tonight. I wouldn't get involved if I were you. What? You must be joking. I wouldn't miss Norris making a fool of himself for all the world. This one or the next. Soup on there. You up? Those are pineapple chunks. You're right. You okay? You've only said two words since this morning. I'm uh, I'm fine. <coughs> have, you, have you got any incense, Deb? What? You know, you know the, the the smelly stuff. Yeah, look, I, I know what it is. Try the second shelf, Norris. Oh. Air freshener. I need something for an exorcism. I mean, fruits of the forest might banish lingering odours, but they're hardly likely to see off the undead. Well, what do you expect, Norris? This is the corner shop, you know? And if you don't like what we sell here, then please, you know, find somewhere else. In fact, I insist. Oh, sir, Michelle, I think your boss needs some lessons in customer relations. I said get out! I don't have the time to wait on the likes of him, all right? I don't have the time. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing, all right? I said I'm fine. I don't believe you. This is me you're talking to, Dev. <laughs> I went to the doctor's. It was just a, a, a routine checkup, you know, just routine. That's what I thought. What does that mean? They found something. Oh, nothing, um, definitely, you know, probably nothing, but, you know, they have to, to cover their backs, you know? They need to, um, carry out some more tests. For what, Dev? Please? Cancer. They think I might have bowel cancer. <laughs> Please, gorgeous. Jason tells me you've gone off up, Paul. No, I just wanted to have a shower and get changed before I saw you again. I am taking no for granted. Mm, that's two pounds then, thanks. Uh, ale's the one thing that's not on the house. Never expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pity we're going to have to share our night with this lot, though. We don't have to. As soon as it gets quiet, we'll go through to the back if you like. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and Betty's coming as well, so that'll make four. Norris, the only ghosts that are in that stock room are last year's Halloween masks. Then how do you explain the unearthly smell and the cold chills I get? 
No, no, I tell you, Rita, I felt the cold, gnarled fingers of the supernatural on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, who's jumpy tonight? Well, can you blame me? It's bad enough having lost souls sneaking up on me without you. The seance still on? Yes. Yes, everything's prepared. We just have to wait for the sun to go down. Oh, time for a livener. Rita? Oh, a vodka and tonic, please, love. Well, under the circumstances, I'll have a scotch as well. That and they'll be the only spirits you see tonight. How many more times, Warren? I want no to do with it. No to do with what? Look, I bought him an exercise bike. Only he's too thick-headed to get on it. Oh, I should. You need a bit more colour in your cheeks. The last chap I saw with your pallor had pennies on his eyes. <laughs> I'll see you off, you old buzzard. Hey, Jack! Look, I am fighting fit me! Good do we losing a few pounds, Jack. You know, Shelley Jack, she can't help saying it like it is. However much it might hurt some people. No, no, this is all muscle, this. There's a six-pack under there, you know. A firkin, more like. Take no notice, Jack. You've worked hard for that beer belly, mate. You should wear it like a badge of honour. So long as you don't start wearing it like a badge of honour. Oh, you have no worries there, love. Charlie doesn't look like the type to let himself go. Right, that's it. Tomorrow I'm on the bike. And I shall be having fish and chips on the front of Cleethorpe before you know it. <laughs> hey, why don't you leave that? <laughs> and do... Uh... What? Well, I understand if you need some time alone. Truth be told, I need some time myself. But you shouldn't keep this bottled up, so I'm here if you ever want to talk. Thanks, but uh, there's really nothing uh, to be said. I mean, you can't talk this thing away. I mean, you can't haggle with it. It won't do business, and it's going to do what it's going to do regardless. So... Which might be nothing. Chances are you're going to be perfectly OK. Well, great. Well, remind me, when did you become a cancer specialist, babe? Sorry. It's OK. I must have sounded pretty glib. No, it's, it's my fault. I mean, from where you are, there are only platitudes. Well meant, but no use. Um, I've got to face the worst, right? What does Barry think? I haven't told her. What? No, I'm not sure she could handle it. It's, um... You've got to put her in the picture, Dev. How would you feel if it was the other way around and she never gave you the chance to support her? Maya's in love with you. I've seen it in her face. That entitles her to the truth. If you love her, you'll tell her. <laughs> love her? She means more to me than, uh... What's more than this? Then tell her. Shelley! Oh. Shelley, love? She's just nipped down the shop. She won't be long. <coughs> she invited you in here, did she? That's right. Well, she shouldn't have sold you that with Topsail on. She didn't sell it to me. It's from a fridge. You're more than welcome to wait for her if you want. Is that Frankie Vaughan? <laughs> he of the golden tonsils, no left, left, left. Oh, oh come on, Roy, put me out of my misery. I can't stand much more of this. Right. You can open your eyes. Oh, if I'd have known that I got dressed up. I think you look quite lovely enough. <gasps> What's the occasion? Uh. <gasps> <gasps> it's over. Evening, Fred. Wasn't expecting you here. Obviously not. What do you mean? It's a rum do when I find the likes of Charlie Stubbs lording it in my own parlour. Now, hang on. For a start, it's me who lives here, not you. So if it's anyone's parlour, it's mine. And I can have anyone I want back there. It's my name over that door. Yeah, but I'm the one who keeps the place running. Now, when my private life starts interfering with my work... But it has, though, hasn't it? I say it has. We lost a damn good barmaid, your own mother, because of Casanova in yon. 
Now, instead of gallivanting about back here, I suggest you get up front and do some work. I know how to do my job. I am going to a Newton and Ridley junket in Brighton. I hope that the stuffing problems will be solved by the time I get back. Hmm? I feel I'm at a kid's party. Aye, and we all know who the kid is. Mm. Look, I had trouble getting a tablecloth and candles. I I've had to improvise out of our stock. Oh, you did? Oh, well, I hope you've paid for this lot. The money's already in the till. I I I'm trying to create a mood here. Now, let us all link hands. And breathe very deeply. Completely emptying our minds. It's that easy for some than others. Now repeat after me. Spirit of Vera Lomax. Spirit of Vera Lomax. We ask that you commune with us and move amongst us. We ask that you commune with us and move amongst us. And signify your presence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did you see his face? Whoever you paid, Rita, they've earned their money. Their timing was was spot on. I didn't pay anybody anything. There's nobody else here. Where have you been? Oh, it's not that nice, is it? Yes, it is. I've been waiting for you all night. You could have phoned. I'm sorry. Any more of that left? In the fridge. The reason I didn't call is because I wanted to give you the good news in person. I ran into an old workmate this afternoon. We went out for dinner. Yeah? Mm. She knows of a job coming up. She's going to put in a good word for me in the morning and let me know as soon as possible. Isn't that wonderful? <sighs> yeah, it's uh, great. Don't go overboard, will you? No, I'm just uh, starting to worry about you. That's why it's, it's, it's terrific. It is. You don't get this lucky every day. Cheers. So, how was your afternoon? Mm -hmm. Well, the um, usual. Mm -hmm. Look, what say you we go and celebrate, you know? Lunch tomorrow, somewhere nice? Well, I haven't got that job yet. Besides, I thought you were working. Yeah, well, some things are more important than work, no? Doesn't sound like the dev Alain, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought you wanted me to be a bit more irresponsible. Mm, absolutely. For your sake as much as mine. After all, you don't see, uh, I wish I'd spent more time at the shop carved on many tombstones. Mm. Oh, Sam, love. Do you know I thought you were going to shut me out for a sec? It's gone closing. I know, well, I won't be a tick. Have you got any of them uh, sports drinks that bike riders use? In the fridge. It's just that I've got our jack on this exercise bike and... Oh, these are them, aren't they? And a jibousting drink. I don't know, it used to be pints of ale when we were courting, but now it just sends him to Kip. It's 2.40, please. Well, that's a bit steep, isn't it? Still, there's no premium on your health, is there? Our Jack hates exercise. I said to him, it's better to sweat now than tears later. Bye, love. How did she take it? You didn't tell her, did you? Oh, Deb, why? I don't know. I mean, she bounced in just so full of life. She just heard that she had a, a new job. I couldn't face it. I couldn't face bringing her down. You idiot. Yeah, I know. Now you're going to have to tell her why you kept it from her, and that's going to make her mad as well as upset. I should have seen her. She just seemed so happy. It doesn't I just matter. Could... I know it's hard, but you're going to have to tell... Hiya. Morning. Hiya. Look, I'm, um, I'm meeting for lunch. I'll, I'll tell her then. Yeah, just make sure you do. You OK here? You don't mind yeah, if I don't see I'm fine. I'm fine. You get off. And good luck. Are you on your own and all? Yeah. I've got no one till Kieran comes back. Fred's off on a jolly, of course. And he wants to be fine more stuff by the time he gets back. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, no. no. Sunita, what's up? What's the matter? It's dead. Oh, 
What's he been doing? He thinks he might have cancer. Cancer? So when he just found out. Oh, no. You won't say anything, will you? No, 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 of course I won't. He hasn't even told Maya yet. You're kidding. Is it serious? We don't know. He's got to have more tests. I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Yeah, all the same. It takes me right back to our Sharon. If you're going through what I went through with her, you must feel terrible. Yeah, I do, really. It's really not me for six, has this? Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> what kind of cancer has he got? I think maybe I've said too much. I shouldn't have said anything, really. I'm sorry for putting this on you. Oh, God, don't be daft. You've got to share these things. I tell you, Jack, this is the best thing you've done for ages, is this. I'm going to show them doubters, them having a go at me. Absolutely. How far has he gone this morning? Oh, let me check the mileometer. Uh, six and a half miles. That means he's at uh, Denton. You what? Yeah, just this side of Hattersley. I know where it is. Is that all I've done? Right, there's got to be something wrong with this speedo, then. Oh, go on, blame the tools. Right. I'm going to have a rest. Oh, look, he's getting up me now, and he hasn't even got out of Manchester yet. Look, you're never going to get anywhere at this rate. Look, Vera, you can't go overboard, not when you've not done it for a while. No, he's right, Vera. You've got to break yourself in gradual, or it could kill you. Well, you just make sure he gets on again, cos I want more than six and a half miles by the time I get back. Or I'll kill you. Oh, there used to be a pub here. I'm going as fast as I can, Liz. The rover's return, they called it. Well, he should stay in his travels if it's a drink he's after. Exactly. That's 4 90 please. Do you think standing there bleating will get you served any faster? Well, at least it got us noticed. I'm off somewhere else if I don't get a drink soon, I know that. Yeah, well, you ought to be the only one from the look of this lot. Look, I'm a barmaid down. I've got no help until Karen gets here. Oh, well, you could always give me a job if you're short staffed. You? Yeah, I used to work here. Yeah, don't say it like that. That's the best idea I've heard this morning. Is it two pints of lager and a red wine? Punters came all over to see her. What, instead of watching Jerry Springer? Heard about your aunt six the other night. Yeah, well, Maria started that. Oh, that's all right, then. Do you think I would have kept my job if it were like that all the time? Yeah, she worked here for ages. Ask anyone. They'd soon tell you if she was no good. Oh, go on, give me a trial. You can take me if I'm rubbish. Well, it's either that I tell this lot they've got a ten-minute wait before they get served. Shh! Oh, all right, then. Yes! Well, hey, hey, pint of bitter. Hey, we're moving now, lads. Even if we have a ghost, what harm can it do us? Ghost? Norris thinks the back room's haunted. Right, well, there are plenty of skeletons rattling around here. Take your pick. Spirits don't take kindly to mockery, Mike. Oh, dear. i better be careful, then. If they can take up residence in blasphemous souls, they hide in the shadows feeding off the life force. Right, well, uh, give me a packet of my cigars and I'll be out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. We seem to be out. Oh, there, there, there's, there's plenty more in the back. Uh, I'll let you go in there, as there's nothing to worry about. I rest my case. Not you as well. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll get them myself. Where are they? On the right, third shelf up. Hey, be careful, Mike. God, it stinks in here. Yes, a well-known sign of possession. It's cold as well. It's very perceptive, isn't it? Uh, have you ever thought you might have the gift, Mike? Yeah, the gift of common sense. There, love, isn't it? That's it, thank you. And I'll tell you what, if you want my advice, you need a builder, you need a holiday. See ya. See ya. Sorry. Mm. Maybe that mind has started without you. No. You look like you could do with a glass. Thank you. Sinisa have been giving you a hard time? Yeah, something like that. Listen, well, my, I've got there's good a... news and bad news. That job that came up, um, not going to be happening just yet. Right, listen, Oh, darling, but the good news a... is, um, I went to the printers to see about wedding invitations. Wedding invitations? Yeah, you know, weddings, when people vow to spend their lives together. We haven't even said a date. Well, no, but just the styling. Look, that one's quite classic. Um, this one's a bit more decorative. 
and uh, if we really want to cap it up, is this. Well, don't look so enthusiastic. Maya, there's something I need to say. What is it? What's wrong? You're leaving me, aren't you? <laughs> Those uh, test results the other day, when I said everything was fine, it's not strictly true. Why, what's happened? Oh, it's probably nothing, uh, but they found some abnormalities. We need to have some more tests. Check it out. Well, what do they think is wrong? Cancer. Wedding invites might have to be put on hold, no? <laughs> I know we said we'd see him Rovers, but this is ridiculous. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> hey, you fit a good in there, shall I? Come on, better. Three booze for us now, eh? Don't push your luck. It's going to be just like the old times. And don't push your luck there, neither. I'm not pushing me luck. Afternoon, Norris. What can I get you? Um, a small brandy, please. Right, yeah. I didn't realise you were lowering the tone of the place, shall I? You are. Well, can't be from me to judge you appoint the personnel in here and you obviously do your homework on their backgrounds. Watch what you're saying, Doris. Uh, what are you saying? The other night, obviously. Come on, prepare to overlook the other night. Fine. Well, that was comedy capers compared to what she used to get up to. Now, listen, you. It wasn't safe to walk the streets when her associates were around. Well, I haven't seen any of them since and one of them's dead. Criminals, drug addicts. <laughs> Do I look like a junkie to you? I don't know. They come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? Just tell me this, Norris. Apart from that one time, was she good behind that bar or not? Well, yes, I suppose. Then there's your answer. She saved your bait in this dinner time. Yeah, I haven't let you down, have I? Well, no, no. Right, well, I'm staying. I'm going. Staying. But I've got my eye on you. 150. I don't know. I don't want to upset you. What am I, a child? You looked so worried when I came back. Yeah, I just couldn't face it. So you lied to me? I should have told you. Is that how you see me? Someone who go to pieces when I hear some bad news? I'm sorry, OK? When will they know? Once they've done the tests, you know, a week, ten days. And if you have got it? Depends how bad it is. I mean, if they catch it in time, then, um... Be okay. And if they don't? <sighs> How long will you have? I don't know. Oh, do you see why I wanted you to have that medical? Yeah. Well, thanks for that, sweetheart. How would I live without you? Oh. So you think this is funny, do you? <sighs> Darling. Dying is the worst case scenario, right? They're saying it's unlikely in men my age, so let's look on the bright side. Is that what you're doing? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but I've got to know how you feel first, and I'll understand if this changes everything. Do you trust me at all? You didn't bargain for this when you agreed to marry me? It doesn't alter anything. Yes, it does. No. In sickness and in health, isn't that what we swear? Not yet, we don't. No, you've got to think about it. You've got to think where it's going to take us. You want to spend the next whatever, like, nursing a dying man? No, you've got time to back out. You can back out. There's nothing to think about. You don't get rid of me that easily. Just what I've always fancied, a climber's daughter. Yeah, I'll have a minute, hurry. Oh, you can spare a couple of minutes for me, though, can't you? Haven't you got any work to do? I can wait. Oh, later, Charlie. I'm rushed off my feet today. Oh, never mind them pies. I might do with Betty's hot pot for a bit. <laughs> Betty's off today. Well, let them feast their eyes on you, then. <laughs> I'll have to get back for him to do that. Look, come over later when it quiets down, yeah? All right. Uh, what are you doing out here? Well, it's as good a place as any now I've been sacked. You are? Fred's just giving me my cards. Fred's in Brighton. <laughs> you want to bet? It's a flaming liberty, is this? You can't just sack people. Let's call it relieving her of responsibilities to which she is totally unsuited. Oh, yes. 
Well, she can set you to a tribunal. Oh, I. For unfair dismissal. Well, that's how far see you there, then. How long does it take to get in here in these days? Twelve months, eighteen? You won't be this smug at the end of it, I'm telling you. Hello, Shelley, love. What's going on? My, them pork pies look grand. Is it true? What's that? That you sat me on. Oh, we don't eat extra stuff. Uh, that's not what you were saying the other day. Oh, well, so much happened since then. Like what? Like me finding the answer to all those problems. Right. I'm all ready. Where do you want me to start? Oh. All right. Did you see Dan? Yeah. What of it? He just said he had a meeting with you, that's all. What else did he say? Nothing. When shall I expect him back? I expect he's going on somewhere. He's told you, hasn't he? Told me what? <sighs> this shop assistant hears it before me. It wasn't like that. When did he tell you? The other day. Congratulations. You obviously mean more to him than I do. He was scared of telling you. I had to drag it out of him when I saw something was wrong. Oh, so I'm not sensitive enough. Is that it? He hid it from me because he cares about you. I told him a dozen times it'll only make things worse not telling you. He was in agony over it. How did he seem? Relieved. To be getting it off his chest. Relieved to know you'll be standing by him as well, I expect. How's it left you feeling? I'm still taking it in. Anyway, first thing is to find out if he's got it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, there might be nothing wrong with him. They said it's rare. I'm sure it'll be fine. And um, if not, now we'll just all have to be very brave, won't we? <laughs> It would a stroke of luck running into Elizabeth in Brighton like that, I say, a stroke of luck. I appoint the staff in this pub. You're not saying she's no good, are you? That is not the point, Leanne. Get back behind that bar and start serving. Nice one, Shelley. Now, see! No, now you see. I'm the manager, and as far as I'm concerned, she has still got a job. Go on, Leanne. Thank you. I'll take over now, Liz. Oh, no, you won't, young lady. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll keep them both. Two hands are better than one. Only you'll be footing the bill for the extra barmaid. I put my stuff in the spare room, by the way, Fred, like you said. Very good. Do you mean my mum's room? Your mother's old room. Now, that is seriously out of order. You manage this pub, I own it. I live in it, you don't. I'm sure you'll get on very well together. This is because you found Charlie back there the other night. It has nought to do with that. Well, if I can't decide what goes on... In I'm all sure. other matters, you have a free reign. But on this one, Elizabeth is stopping and Leanne is going. Leanne is staying. My decision is final. And so is mine. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've been thinking, Rita. I, I have a bit of leave to use up. So, so if it's all the same to you, I, I, I will take some time off. I, I've been finding it very stressful lately. Well, I found your ghost. I took Mike's advice. Well, look. Don't worry, Norris. It won't spook you. There it is. This crack's been causing you problems. You got damp, which is what you've been smelling, and you've got movement as well. Look, all up here. That's pushed your shelves away from the wall, and it's caused the stuff to fall off. Yeah, well, yeah, but, but the, the, there were noises as well. Well, it would be with that little lot going on. What was it? Cracking now and again, groaning. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, there's your answer. Sorry, it's not more exciting. Honey, I'm home. Darling, are you there?
I will not, I say I will not, have a Battersby in this bar. Hey, you watch what you're saying. She's worked here before. I don't care if she's four pints for the Pope. She's not working in this pub. She'll be giving freebies to all and sundry. She's on a trial. If she puts her foot wrong, she'll be out on her backside. By which time, them junky friends of hers will have torched the place to ground. Oh, I've had enough of this. You can stick your stupid job. Now what will you have done? Good result, I'd say. I think you've been very hard on her, Fred. If you think she's that wonderful, you'll give her a job. Ah, see, got you. Well, as it happens, I do need somebody for a week while Norris is away. Would you be interested, Leanne? Yeah, that'd be great. Good. Pop in tomorrow morning. We'll soon have you up to speed. Nice one, Rita. Are you sure this is wise? Oh, she did a good job when she worked for me before. I don't remember anybody injecting on the premises or setting fire to the place. I think it's an excellent idea. And that's got you. So I suppose I should say thank you, Fred. Your loss, my gain. What are you looking at? Nothing. You finished? I've finished with today, yeah. Oh, them chips smell nicely. Yep, yeah, well, they're not going to help you get fit, are they? Let's have a look how far you've got today. Barnsley, at least. You are right. Croden. Where? Start of the Pennines. Oh, is that all? That's well, not bad, I suppose. I mean, you are out of condition. How far have I got to go now? About 85 miles to Cleethorpe and then another 100 back. Flaming Nora. It's going to take you two weeks at this rate, unless you speed up. But I can't pedal any faster, can I? Well, there's no time limit, is there? No, but it's my pride at stake, isn't it? A fortnight is titled to Cleethorpe's and back. This folk round here could work it faster than that. Yeah, and Vera's not going to like that. Unless... What? You clock the bike like you would a car. Me? Yeah, quick 40 mile every day, no do no harm. And don't tell me you've never done, done it before. Yeah, but I don't do it now. Yeah, but you know how to do it. I can't. It's digital. They can't be clocked. Well, what about you doing a bit of pedalling for me, then? What, not tell nobody? I'll pay you. <laughs> I mean, you'll be happy. I'll be happy. And what's most important, our Vera will be happy. Come on, a few extra quid come in handy, won't it? Couldn't. Of course you can, for an old coffin dodger like me, of course you can. Yeah, but it's not right, is it, Conning Vera? I mean, what if she found out? Come on, son, she won't tumble, will she? Well, what do you say? Five in a session. You're on. I know what else we can do with the money from the house. What do you mean, else? We haven't decided anything yet. I just want the simplest pair of diamond earrings. I'm sorry? Well, see if it's investment, because they last forever, and you will never have to buy me another pair. Until you get bored of them. No, so I'm not asking for big, huge, expensive ones. How much? About two grand, Tom. Two thousand pounds! All right, about 1,500 quid, then. Still bleeding him dry, Karen. Mum, well, what are you doing here? Just started. Fred's given me a room upstairs, so you're going to be seeing lots of me. Now, then, what are you drinking? You usually have a pint, don't you, Karen? That's right. Right. This one's on me. But she told me she was going to stand by you. <laughs> well, she told me the same. No, but uh, too quickly, now that I think about it, she hadn't thought it through properly, right? now. Have you tried a mobile? <laughs> her mobile, her parents. She's gone. She might just need a bit of space. <laughs> it's not what it says there, though, is it? Mm. So, um... How come you, uh, talked to her about it? I didn't blurt it out or anything. We got talking and she just guessed. <laughs> I bet that made her day, right? Can I explain why it happened? How did she take that? She was a bit miffed, but she soon calmed down. I'm sorry if this is my fault. No, it's not you. She can't face being with a man who's going to die an ugly death and who can blame her, right? Don't talk like that. <laughs> like what? Yeah, but let's face it, there's a good chance that it will. So what am I going to do? You'll get through this. No. I won't. Not without her, I won't. There's other people. There's your family and your friends. Oh, give me a break, honey. It's not them I need. And if I've lost her, I might as well be... Don't. 
Look, I know your friends aren't the same, and I know I'm no replacement, but I'm here if you want me. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean it, Dad. Any time. You've got me now, and you always will. Yo, there's no brekkie at yours. Hey, Leanne, could you bung us some fags when you start at Rita's? I'm skint. You want me nicking cigs already? I'm gasping. No, I can't. Huh, gone soft on us, have you? Well, I'm not starting proper till tomorrow. She's only showing me ropes today. Don't encourage her to rob stuff. If she does well there, she could take over from Doris. Oh, another life goal achieved. Once she's impermanent, she can get a proper scam running. But that doesn't get me smoking. No. Pants off the girls. I can only do that till dinner. They start to notice after that. I tell you what, you get Chesney's dinner today and I'll see you right for a couple of packets. Two packets for that? <laughs> Deal. You do know how much fags cost, don't you? I do, Kirky Squire. I do. Right, well, I'm going to Skype her before you change your mind. Come on, lady, please. See ya. Try it. She sticks you right up. That's nearly a tenner for getting one dinner. Old Les is craftier than a box of donkeys. Do you mean barrel of monkeys? That's what I said, isn't it? Well, are you going to stick around then after your little stint in shop or what? Dunno, depends on what. I've got some unfinished business to see to first. Oh, I see. What's that then? Now to do with little Nicky Tilsley, is it? Right, Jan. <laughs> on your way in. No, I thought I'd lounge around on a beach in Acapulco today. <laughs> do you want to come? Uh, well, I would, but if I don't sew knickers, then Baldwin won't be able to afford his next jag. And I couldn't live without on my conscience. Well, when you put it like that, neither can I. I'll have to go on my jollies tomorrow. <laughs> Are you Fizz? Uh, yeah. Leanne. Oh, right, all right. I thought he's told me all about you. Oh, I hope she didn't tell you the truth. <laughs> oh, don't worry, she only said good things. She hasn't, then. Come on. <laughs> Very funny, Jenny. Do you <laughs> Very nice. And here's yours. You cannot be serious. Oh, what's the matter? A name badge? Yeah, all the best places have them. They're going to make us look more professional and modern. I'm not here to help. I'm here to fix cars. And if I want them to know my name, I'll tell them. Oh, come on, Tommy, what's your problem? It's just the badge. This is so modern. And it's a disease and it's spreading. Trains, banks, tyre shops, even pubs. You've got some poor sod trying to earn a few quid wearing a cheap uniform, looking like a dodgy schoolboy with his badge and his stupid title. I'm a mechanic, a skilled working man, an adult. I don't want to look like I'm flipping burgers. Morning. Morning. Oh, smart badges. Have I got one? Of course you have. Cool. Oh, give up. Do you know, I think Tyrone really understands what we're trying to do here in a way that Tommy never will. Oh, is it all right? Tyrone needs encouraging. He deserves a reward. He gets paid. That's his reward. So you swear you knew nothing about it? How many times do I have to tell you I haven't spoke to her for weeks? Really? Would I lie to you? No, Steve, not if you want to keep all your assets. All right. A little bird told me, well, it was Rita, actually, that Liz is back in the Rovers. Is it true? Yeah. And we're thinking of throwing a street party for her, if we can get enough flags. Oh, not everybody's pleased, then. Anyway, if you see her, tell her I'll call in later. Ta-da. See ya. Pleased? Doesn't even begin to describe it, Steve. I'm sorry to say it, but your mother is a scheming bitch. Oi. No, Steve, she's planning something. Like what? Well, why don't you just try A-M-Y? No. Yes, Steve. And I bet you this ring that Granny Grimble will be rocking that cradle by the end of the week. <laughs> I didn't mean to get you out of bed. You didn't! <coughs> you look terrible. Oh, thank you, darling. Shh. Haven't slept. I brought you some breakfast. Mm. I've got you some fresh orange juice and some fruit. It's all organic. Oh, well, isn't that uh, bolting the stable door a bit? Mm. No. Don't be silly. We don't know if there's anything wrong with you yet. Oh, but there's something very wrong with me, babe, isn't there? Hey, Maya, she's gone! <laughs> Did you make the appointment for the follow-up tests? Mm -hmm. Ugh, I haven't thought about them. Dev? Yeah. 
this is serious. <sighs> if it's bad news, and I'm not saying that it is, the blah, earlier they make the diagnosis, blah, blah, the better blah, your chances. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not thinking about the tests. Do you want to make me beg? Please. Don't use Myers leaving as an excuse. You can't ignore this. Yeah, I find it really hard to believe that I so misjudged that I really do. I know you're upset. <coughs> Some people, they can't cope with illness. They're not strong enough. It doesn't make her a bad person. You can cope. I'll call them for you. I'll make the appointment. There's no need. I'll do it. Promise? Cross my heart and hope to th I promise. Good. Well, I'll tidy up here and then I'll get back to the shop. Perhaps you should get some sleep. Thank you. You're a friend. I said I would be. I do apologise for disturbing you both, but is Madam at home to visitors while I'm getting the bar ready? Hiya! Are you ready, Betty? Looks like we're on our own. No change there, then. Excuse I'll me. I'll be out in a minute. Yeah, right. It's a bad time, is it? Oh, no, not at all. Don't take any notice of them, I don't. That's right. You ease yourself in gentle, Elizabeth. You're an asset to this establishment. That's why you're in my employ. And you'll give that Shelley a punch up the dirty air that she's been asking for. <laughs> it's been ever so good, you know. <clears throat> well, going all the way to Brighton to fetch you back is pretty good. Well, it didn't fetch me. That was coincidence. A coincidence? Yeah, they do happen. So why'd you say yes? Well, why should I refuse? You know, I always love working here and I'm near Jim. Got me mates. You're just down the road. Although you can stop there if you're going to be like this. Like what? Suspicious. Well, yeah. Yeah, Mum, I am, actually. Why? Come on, you're not telling me that you coming all the way back here has got nothing to do with Amy. Oh, I'm not saying that. Not at all. I want my family around me. Well, all except one bit. Could do without her. What? You know who. And I know you're here snooping for her. Well, if she wants to know why I'm here, tell her to come and ask me herself. Or better still, tell her to mind her own flaming business. <laughs> right, everybody, gather round. Now, I know you're all getting used to all the changes we've been making. Uh, we've been making? And we don't want you to think that you're not getting anything out of it. Oh, perish the thought. So, we're introducing Employee of the Month Award to show how much we value excellence. And our first employee of the month this month is... Tyro! Speech, speech, speech. Um, I'd like to thank Jack and Vera, my faithful dog Monica, my workmate Tommy. I think the dog gets thanked before me. <laughs> and I'd just like to thank everybody that knows me. <laughs> All right, Tyron, that's enough. And as a mark of our appreciation, I'd like to present you with the employee of the month cap. Oh, wow. Yowzy, yowzy, yowzy. Oh, I'm so jealous. And a £50 bonus. You are? 50 quid? You never mentioned that. Well, I can't just give him a stupid hat. Sorry, Tyrone, can I? 50 is a good amount. Uh, two, right, it is. <laughs> a 50 quid note? Come on, boys, bears on me. You're not kidding. Hey, that's not the idea. Oh, well, I'm going as well. Get some of my money back. Yeah. Okay, look, just wait a minute. I got some news. Oh, I am so excited. I could burst. It's wonderful, wonderful news. I got a letter from the council. Well, what's wonderful about that? They're building a fountain. Yes, ma'am, that's what they do. It's the job. So, why are you so excited? They're naming it the Alf Roberts Memorial Fountain. They're building it in honour of my Alf. <laughs> oh, ma'am, well, it's about time something good happened to us. Yes. <laughs> Hey, oh, that's badge tie. Oh, not you at all. You know what this cap means? Employee of the month. Yeah, well, come on, you. Get the beers in. When you're ready, please, love. Uh, four pints. Oh, you're trying to impress me. What's up? Don't you get many £50 notes in here? 
We don't get any, because Fred says I can't take them. There's so many forgeries about. Sorry. <laughs> oh, never mind. Lisa will change it. I'll get them in. So where is she, then? I don't know. Disappeared. Carted back to the asylum she broke out of with any luck. <laughs> He's thrown dead right off kilter. What do you mean? He was supposed to have booked his test by now, and he hadn't. He promised me he'd do it today. Good job you're there for him, isn't it? Yeah, she didn't deserve him. There is a mad rush on behind the barrier, you know. I wish she'd disappear. Yeah. Pigeons. Oh, Room for a little one. <clears throat> Room for an annoying old hag. I've had a word. And? That's what we thought, really. Yeah, she wants to be near to me and be dad. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, you know what date it is at the end of the week, don't you? Oh, are we interfering? You're only 31, so you've got to do something. Uh, well, I'll probably have an easy one, actually, Mum. Probably just stay in with Karen. You can't do that. Oh, he can do what he wants. He's a big boy now. I'm going to go and sit with the girls. She's a miserable Ken. As far as I can see, she just sits in his office and whinges all day. Yeah, she needs to get alive. <laughs> you need to get alive. You've done nothing but slag her off since she got here. Yeah, you've done your share. I know, but I've decided she could be a lot worse. Exactly. We've hardly given her a chance, have we? She could be very nice. Hello, girls. Nice to see Danny's uncle hasn't banned the liquid lunch. Oh, we'd be looking for a new workforce if we did that, lot. See, hey, not too bad. <laughs> nah, she's a slapper. What are you drinking? Large VAT slimline. That's a vast. Vast? Yeah. Are you whining about my behind again? No, look, a VAT is a vodka and tonic, but a vodka and slimline tonic is a VAST vast. Well, I'll tell you what then, Chuck. I'll have a pint of mild and a pickled egg instead. Oh, shut up, keep it down. Well, you want a bigger bum. I'm working on it. I aim to please. You're determined to cop this up, ain't you? I, I thought you were going to try. I am trying. In fact, I'm getting into this northern thing. How's that then? Well, I'm living in a shoebox in a road that smells of fish and chips. You can't get more northern than that, can you? Come for your stuff? No. I've come for you. I'm so sorry. You don't owe me anything. I'm just so glad to have you back. No, look, I know it doesn't reflect well on me. But I panicked. I couldn't bear to think of you being ill. You're so healthy, so full of life. <laughs> so we both thought, yeah? When I realised you told Sunita before me... No, I shouldn't have said no, anything. That gave me the excuse I needed to bolt. <laughs> I know why you told her. I'm sorry. I'm here for you, whatever you need. <laughs> I need you. <sighs> Yo, -oh! look at that for a domestic scene. Hey, it's like we're a proper family again. Where's Chesney? Bez is. He rang. Uh, so don't try and worm your way out of this deal. I've still made his dinner. How do I know? Les, we're eating smiley-faced potatoes. Of course you did. There you go, then. Right, come on. Cough up. Two packets of bags. If you remember, we said two packets. We didn't exactly say what the two packets were. Hey! The joke's on you, Janice. Have you got me fags, so what? Two packets. Take them or leave them. Not big, not funny, not clever. Hey, I've, I've got your bags. I was larking about. Oh. You shouldn't jest with Janice when she's got nicotine withdrawal. She's not going to laugh. Yeah, Facebook. I'll give up. I never get it right with her. Whenever I think we've got something going, I go and make a mess of it and it's back to nowhere. You need to raise the stakes. How do you mean? A romantic gesture. Something that's going to impress her. Show her that you'll do anything. No matter how stupid you look, anything to win her back. 
And I think I know just what that romantic gesture is. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Mr Baldwin, uh, do you want us to get on with the barrels of Bolton order when we get back? We should get it finished today. Finished? Yeah, for crack on. Cushy house, that's exactly the news I like to hear. Well done, girl. <laughs> You know you were saying how I need to try harder to fit into the north? Yeah. Cushty makes you seem all right, Cockney git. Leave off, come on. Hey, Rochelle, there's another one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, am I going to have to listen to that witch cackling every time I come in here? Afraid so. Well, you know, if you have a shot of someone to slag her off to, then I'm your girl. I think there'll be plenty of takers for that job, but, um, thanks, Karen. See you later. Come on, my lads, back to work. Yeah, come on. Worker of the month, sup up. <laughs> Employee, thank you. And I'll catch up, I've uh, got to go for a Jimmy Riddle. Yeah, well, don't be too long, eh? Two pints, please, better. OK, look. Are you sure? Will you get told off? Nah, I'm well in there, me. If the star grafter can't stay for a few beers, then who can, eh? Cheers. Hey, Liz, it's great to have you back. Seeing you behind that bar, it's like you've come home. It <laughs> is, isn't it? Except it's not home, it's work. So if you want to spend all day gassing, get a job in a call centre. Hey, at least I don't disappear when it's busy. I'm the boss. I can disappear when I want. Like now! <laughs> Are you uh, treading on someone's toes? It does seem that way. Well, you don't want to make an enemy of her. Well, it's not of my making, but, well, if that's what she wants. You know what they say? Keep your enemies close. Yeah, keep them close. Don't live with them. Absolutely over the moon. Yeah, I think we can see that, Mum. Oh. That's all you should be. I said, so you should be. It's richly deserved. Alf was a fine man. Yeah, he was that. <laughs> uh, was there any mention of me in the letter? You? No. Why should the bear? Well, there was his lady mayoress. Ah, well, that was just an honorary thing, wasn't it, Better? Come on. I mean, you never actually did anything for the community, did you? Not like Alf. Uh. <laughs> oh, no, they're never going to name a fountain after you, Better. <laughs> well, I think it's a total waste of money. That's what nobody asked you. Absolutely. There not. you are. I'd ask you what you're doing, but it's obvious. This isn't good enough, Tyrone. Hey, you can't say that. He's the employee of the month. Yeah. Not anymore, he's not. Two minutes. She took me up. She's only been there one night, used the last of my toothpaste. We'll have to start living like a student, putting labels on everything. Yeah, are you all right? What? Oh, sorry, I'm smiles away. Is it Dev again? I have to say something. Like what? You're already doing what you can for it. This crisis, yeah? Well, it's made me realise what he means to me. I really love him, Shell. Oh, and now be careful. You've been here before. Y yeah, but he should know. I don't want you getting hurt. I know what you and him are like. You're leaving yourself too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I best get back. Look who turned up. So you deign to return, then? <sighs> Evidently. How long for? For always. Dev and I had a little misunderstanding. It's all cleared up now. Yeah, look, we've all had a nasty shock, and shock affects people in different ways, but Maya, she's, um, she's come through for me. I'm very pleased for you. Thanks for looking after Dev while I was away. Uh, I'll take over now. Did you arrange the tests? Uh, no, he didn't. I did. And the only other call I have to make now is the one that books our wedding. Well, shouldn't we wait for our test results? That doesn't make any difference. I want to marry you anyway. Let's do it. Whatever you say. I hope you'll be very happy. We will be. We already are. <laughs> What's going on with you? Nothing. Do you think I'm daft? You're talking about me. Come on, Spill. You're talking about what a scrounging get you are. Have we got any stickers yet? Les let me down. Of course Les let you down. Letting people down is a full-time job for Les. <laughs> yeah, well, don't start having a pop at Les. That is my fault. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. If you want a tin, go what? over to Boozer. Tin bar. Love. Oh, uh, well, we're on course, Mr Baldwin. Good. Well, let's keep it that way. So, come on. What is it? Uh, you wouldn't believe me, even if I told you. And I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he dressed as a lass? Because he's a cigarette girl, like in pictures. I'm sorry about that. Hey, 
There, madam, are your packets of facts. What the... Don't interfere, Danny. Might be a quaint northern custom. You've seen the Wicker Man, haven't you? Why are you playing that? It's our song. No, it isn't. I love you. Janice, I stop playing around. How about me and you getting back together proper? Once and for all. And do you reckon that this is a good way of asking? What do you look like? Yeah. Go on, get out, you flaming moron. Is that a no? Yes, that's a no. You look all right. Go on, get out of my sight. Hurry up, get out. Go on. Oh. <sighs> It's a bit tight, Janice. Well, he's a fool. I thought it was quite sweet. Yeah, for Les, anyway. Not for Les, that was like Ira in a golden carriage and white horses, Jan. Yeah, yeah, for Les, that's like a, a thousand doves and a surprise holiday in Venice. You knew that were going to happen, didn't you? Well, um, I might have had an inkling. It was your idea, weren't it? No, not really. It was more, it was more Leanne's. Leanne's? Yeah. Well, she's taking the mick. So I hope you're happy now, now you've made him look a complete div, and me. I don't think either of you would have looked silly, Janice, if you'd have said yeah. Sort of romantic, like an officer and a gentleman. Yeah, with Lily Savage as Richard Gale. <laughs> <laughs> really meant it. Yeah, go and get him, Janice. <gasps> oh, 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 no! I reckon they're jealous because I'm a better looking bird than most of them bulldozers. Dad. Les, come here. I can't believe you've found a new way of showing me up after all these years. Do you want to know what you look like? What? You look like my man. Anyway, in a bit, Ben, so... All right, Chesney love. What's up? Aren't you going to give your mum a hug? Hi, oh, Shell. Hi, Les, what can I get you? Have you noticed anything different? Oh, you're wearing makeup. Oh, come here. Now, her hand, my hand, entwined. Is he drug, yeah? <laughs> the only drug coursing through her veins is love. Brian Ferry, 1973. Do you think I'm mad? I think I'm mad. No, love, I'm very happy for you. For, for both of you. And to celebrate, we'd like a bottle of your finest bubbly. Oh, I'm happy with a pint, me. I want this to be a night we can remember. One we can look back on forever. Tell our grandkids about it. Yeah, I suppose. Got some new stuff in, actually. Bottled in Hartlepool. Very reasonably priced. We'll have a bottle and two glasses. Take a seat, I'll bring it over. Thanks, love. Hey, I still can't believe it. First of Leanne comes back to me. Now you. I feel like the luckiest fella in the world. <laughs> see, I'm like one of them big cats you see on wildlife programmes. How do you make that up? They leave the young sometimes, go off looking for food, don't they? They might be gone days, but they always come back. None of you brought any food. Look behind you. Isn't that a beauty? I had considered turning the place into an old-fashioned ice cream parlour, serving Knickerbocker glories, Pete's Melba's and the like. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I must be in your bad boots. You never even formed. I could be dead for all you care. I knew you'd be well looked after, otherwise I never would have gone. Were you at Uncle Ronnie's? Ronnie were very kind to me, yeah. He took me in when nobody else wanted to know. And now he's chucked you out? There wasn't a day gone by when I had sobbed my heart out over you. I mean it. Anyway, it's all right you thinking I should have come to see you. I didn't know you'd want to see me. Of course I want to see you. You're my mum. Yeah. And when they all ganged up on me, you joined in. You friends put me in care. That were a joke. I'd never do that. I was happy to see you. I still am. I can't tell you what a relief it is to hear you say that. I know what I'm like, Chesney. 
but I do love you. And there's not a flying visit either. I'm back for good. I'll never leave you again. You always say that. This time I mean it. I've learnt my lesson. Anyway, how have you been? You look well. OK. I don't always stop at Uncle Les's. Sometimes I go on to visit. A flatmate, Claire. Oh, gorgeous. Hey, you're not just being passed from pillar to post as it suits them, I hope. No, no, I get best of both worlds. Good. Does your Uncle Les ever mention me? No. He doesn't show his feelings a lot. But I bet deep down he's missing me. To you and me. Cheers. Les, can I say something? Of course you can, my sweet. I don't want you getting carried away with these celebrations. But this is the happiest day of my life. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And I'm really flattered that you feel the way you do. Hey, we haven't told Kurt yet. Should we go round after this? There's no rush, is there? Mind, he won't be too chuffed when he realises he's got to leave. Has he? Well, I presume you're moving in. Am I? Look, we haven't discussed it, have we? We haven't discussed anything. This is what I'm saying to you, Les. Well, we might as well go the whole hog. There's no point in pussyfooting around. Yeah, I suppose you're right, but I just want to talk about it first. Right. I'll just make one quick announcement. Announcement? To the pub. Stop tongues wagging. Les. Ahem. Uh, can I have everyone's attention, please? Come on, Les, on your feet. Please don't do this. Why? Because you're going to make a fool of yourself, aren't you? There's nobody in here, is there? You're right, yeah. Sorry. <sighs> Come here. I thought you wanted to play this cool. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean that I can't give you a cuddle, does it? Whoa. <laughs> hey, where's my cash? <laughs> hey, Zeb, mate! <laughs> Look. Me and Jan, back together. Right, congratulations. Uh, g and please, Shell, and uh, do you reckon I should stick to soft drinks? Oh, not until someone actually tells you to. Yeah, you're right. Get it in. And a large brandy for me, babe. Coming up. By the way, I've decided mm. I'm coming with you when you go for those tests next week. <laughs> I love it when you take control, but there's no need. I'm going to be by your side every step of the way from now on. Yeah, but darling, I don't even know if there's anything wrong with me. I mean, I feel fine. Well, you look fine and you're in great shape, but it's still stressful for you. <laughs> She's gone all Florence Nightingale on me. <laughs> you wait till we're married. I'll show you the meaning of the word devotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry to disturb you two lovebirds. Have you seen our Chesney? Hey, uh, it's your turn to have him, not mine. Yeah, I know, but he hasn't come back. Well, it's, it's only early yet. Yeah, but I told him to come straight home. We're supposed to be going to the flicks. Oh, he'll be back soon. Cheers. No way I was in my little love people. So where is she? Oh, look at her. How does she grow? Can I get you a coffee or anything? Oh, no, no, thanks. I've been drinking coffee all day. When did you get back? Mm -hmm. Yesterday. I would have come round sooner, but I thought I'd better show Will in at pub. Pub? Yeah, that's why I'm here. Fred's taking me on behind the bar. Oh, great. Oh, so it's not just a social call, then? No, I mean, it's early days. We have to see how things go, but uh, I'm hoping to stick around for a bit. Hey. I can't get over how much he's changed. So are you stopping with uh, Stephen Curran, then? You're joking. That'd be the last place I'd stop. No, I'm living in at the pub. So, when you need a babysitter... Yeah, well, I'll put you on the list. Oh! No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's great to see you. Well, it's great to be back. We one or two reservations. Not Karen, by any chance? Well, I'm not tiptoeing round her anymore. Not when I've got a son and a beautiful granddaughter living round corner from each other. Yeah, that is you I'm talking about. It is. I ain't talking to Steve. I hope he's still paying his way. Hey, that's supposed to be our little secret. You're going to get me into trouble. Well, I don't know why he can't just come out and tell Karen the truth. Well, because he's scared of her, isn't he? Well, it's time he stood up to her. And if he doesn't, I will. Chesney! Oh, it's not here. Unless he's upstairs. Chesney! Chesney, are you up there? Maybe he's gone round the mate's house. No, not without telling someone first. He knows better than that, Jan. He'll be dawdling somewhere, or playing at the Red Wreck. No, he always comes home straight away. You know he does, Les. I'm worried about him now. Come on, it's only quarter to five. Yeah, and he normally comes home at quarter to four. Look, you go back to the flat in case he turns up there. Me and Jan will have a ride round in a cab, see if we can find him. Are you sure you're all right to drive? I've only had half a glass. 
Right. Oh, but I feel like I'm spoiling your big day now. No. We've got years ahead of us, haven't we, Jan? Mm. I'm gonna kill him when I get my hands on him. Well done. Cheers. Oh, I, are. I wondered how long she'd last. Oh, can't you at least wait until October? Miss September's well fit. Watch it, Tyrone. You're skating on very thin ice. I thought you'd like something more educational to go, Pat. Pictures of camshafts and gearboxes. Mottos. Business mottos. And today's business motto is, if I'm to sell what Mr Smith buys, then I must see through Mr Smith's eyes. What's all that about? Empathy. Seeing things from a customer's point of view. We're mechanics. Not salesmen. Oh, did you hear that, Kelly? But they're not salesmen. Well, they're not. No? Well, have you never recommended that a customer has extra work done or a more expensive part fitted? That's different. No, it is selling. And it's what you should be doing every time somebody walks through that door. See what I'm up against? I used to like working here. Yeah, me too. Nah, I feel like every move's being watched and analysed. Seeing if it can be done quicker or cheaper. I keep expecting to come in and find two monkeys doing our job. Oh, she's had some good ideas, then. <laughs> come on, Kev, we're working our butts off here. Yeah, and we don't need her little pearls of wisdom trying to wring another hour's work out of us. Make yourself lucky. At least you two are not on 24 hour call out. We ain't doing other hairdressers here. No, you're doing fine. But just get a move on. The Gazette want me down the town hall in half an hour. Well, haven't they got anything more interesting to write about than some stupid fountain? Oh, what about the interviews you read in those stupid magazines of yours? Yeah, well, at least the people I read about are famous. Look, there was more people recognise my Alfie round here than all your so-called celebrities. It was very highly thought of. Oh, Joe, will you keep your head still? Oh, c come on, give it to you. Right, I'm going under the dryer. You can't, there's none free. Uh, what do you mean there's none free? Of course there's one free. Yeah, they're my dryers. Yeah, and there's a customer under every one of them. Oh, well, uh, pull out Mrs Neymar. She's not got much hair to speak of. We can't do that. Oh, well, I can't go to a photo shoot at the town hall with wet hair, can I? Right, I'll crank her up to full wax. Sit down. Let Candice do your nails. Oh. Mm. Any joy? Has he not showed up at yours? No. Well, where is he, then? Look, calm down. There's no use panicking. We'll just go inside and we'll think about what we're going to do next. Oh. Where have you been? We've been searching high and low. Oh, with me, Mum. I couldn't come and see Chesney without popping in to say hello. Yeah, well, now you've said it, shove off. Not exactly welcome we're hoping for. You heard him, love. Sling your hook. If we want the parrot to speak, we'll chuck it an almond. Oi! That's my girlfriend you're talking to. <laughs> you are? We're back together. Well, of all the... Would you jump in my grave as quick? For your information, we've only just got back together. Not that it's any of your business. I see. You thought it could just waltz in here, didn't you? And wrap Les round your little finger. Oh. As your little plan backfired. Don't you talk down to me. Go on, get out. <gasps> I'm not going anywhere. Chesney invited me round, didn't you? Yeah. And as long as he wants me here, I'm staying put. <laughs> Large brandy, please, Shell, and uh, Sunita. Oh, where is Shell? I'll have a glass of red wine, please. Okay, love. Where's Maya? Uh, ladies, listen, you've been a great friend the past couple of weeks. I'm just pleased to see you back tonight. Well, if you can call life with uh, Maya normal, well, actually, you know, the past couple of days I've seen a different side of her. Not before time. I'm sorry if I've completely freaked about this whole business. Does Maya know that? About this moat. She's your fiance, you should talk to her. I will, I do. Turns are something. Don't let me interrupt. Carry on with whatever you were talking about. <laughs> shop. <laughs> talking shop. Uh, right. Uh, Steve's not in, is there? Well, he's at the office. Said he's going to go straight home. Right, good. Uh, can I borrow you for five minutes then? Karen, I've just got a drink. Yeah, I know, but it's uh, Steve's birthday tomorrow and I'm planning a little surprise and I need your help. To do. Well, come with me and I'll show you. <laughs> Sounds intriguing. Excuse me, ladies. Come 
on, ma'am, don't make a scene. I'm sticking up for myself. I've got as much right to live here as she has. Did I not make it clear when I chucked you out? You're not welcome. I'm sorry, Les, but you can't do that. You can't just chuck somebody out like they're a bag of rubbish. Yes, I can. This is my house. Yeah, and you asked me and Chesney to move in with you. Well, didn't you? Yes, but I didn't know you were sleeping with another fellow at the same time. I wasn't. Not then. And anyway, that's beside the point. No, it's not. It's the only point. You were cheating on me. I found out. Yeah, and you were angry and upset. I accept that. But that don't give you the right to make me homeless. And that's what you did. What did you want? Half of everything? We weren't even married. We were cohabiting, sharing everything. I'd given up a lot to be with you. This is just stupid. She's bonkers. Oh, aye. No, Les. I'm angry and upset. And I demand justice. Oh, we all know what happens when you demand justice. I'm stopping here with my son, whether you like it or not. No way. Come on. What? Out. Oh! Ah! Fetch a Bobby Chesney. I'm being molested. Get off. You're hurting right enough. Leave her alone. Karen, Steve's a good mate, but I'm not shinning up a lamppost for him. Yeah, so they've got to be somewhere where he can see them. There's more than one? Yeah, there's ten. Because I want them all over here so that he sees them when he gets here. Right. Darling, I have got a drink and a fiancé waiting for me. OK, so we're going to do a freeze and we'll put one here, a couple in the office window. That Liz. Hiya, Karen. Uh, we just taking the baby for a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I can see that. Lovely evening for it, don't you think? What about you? I'm just planning a surprise for Steve's birthday. Oh, yeah, it's 30th, yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. Right. I'll see you later. Yeah, see you later. Bitch. Which one? Both of them. Yeah. Thank you. Lucky Deb. Having you to pick up the pieces when I had my little, um, wobble. I only did what any friend would do. Oh, no, you went far beyond the call of duty. I just wanted to offer Deb some comfort. And I knew you'd been right in there the minute my back was turned. I don't know what you mean. So you were a good friend I am, Dev. I wouldn't desert you in your hour of need. Don't judge me by your own standards. Well, I'm back now. And I'm watching you. So you just stay behind that counter where you belong, eh? Pensioners today, you don't know you're born. I beg your pardon? Well, you get concessions galore for shopping, pictures, you name it, and all you do is moan. With some justification in this instance, Norris, they're planning to increase the council tax by 9%. Yes, but not just for pensioners, for everybody. You don't hear me complain. That's because you don't pay it. Yes, I do. It's taken into account when you calculate me rent. Yes, but you're still earning. You can afford it. We're on a pension. Oh, you're not short of a bob or two. You bought a house for cash. For me granddaughter with me life savings. That's not the point, is it? I mean, you're not struggling to make ends meet, are you? And even if you were, the council's got to raise the revenue somehow to pay for public services. We're not objecting to paying our fair share, Norris. We're objecting to this astronomical hike in council tax. Yeah, but it's An not... astronomical rise in council tax when the state pension rose by only a couple of pounds a week. We can still afford to drink in here every night. Oh, he'll soon change his tune when he's got to live on a pension. Oh, you, you, you think I'm on mega books, do you? Working for Rita Sullivan? <laughs> I don't know what the council find to spend the money on in the first place. It's all explained in the leaflet they sent with the bill. Oh, shall we go and sit at another table? I thought we were just having a healthy debate. Oh, uh, oh but waste of time having my hair done. Why? to wear a hard hat. <laughs> oh, wow, you're building the fountain yourself, are you? <laughs> <laughs> For the photograph, me in a hard hat with a spade. <laughs> hey, I hope you haven't scuffed your nails. They took me ages. The photographer will love me, really, because he made me feel really at ease, you know. So where exactly is this fountain going to be? Oh, in that small quadrangle just behind the main investiture room. What's an investiture room? It's a quadrangle. Oh, have you never been inside the town hall? I once went to a flea market in the crypt. Oh. So, is the light going to be a statue of your elf on top of this fountain? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, we weren't ostentatious, you know, me and Alf. No, no, we're just, well, humble public servants, really. No, simple plaque will suffice. 
I'm losing my patience here. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. It's a day of all days. Well, she's some brass neck. I'll give her that. I know you're talking about me. I won't let myself be walked over. Don't start playing the victim with me. It's usually you that walks all over folk. I'm not being lectured to by an old slapper like you. That's enough. If you don't get out, I'm calling the cops. Call them. I don't care. See who they believe. That's if they even want to get involved in a domestic dispute like this. You've got answer for everything, you, haven't you? Call Rent a Kill. They'll soon flush her out. Do you want a smacking cop? I'd like to hey, see you try. Cut out the both of you! Whose side are you on? Yours. But you lay a finger on her and she'll definitely have the police round. Well, there's nothing you or me can do about her visiting the kid. A visit, yeah. But parading it up and down the street like the proud grandparent. You were the last person she expected to bump into. No, Steve, she knew exactly that she was going to bump into me and she had Tracy in tow. I mean, how's that meant to make me feel? Well, it's rotten, I know, but we're going to have to get used to it. I mean, she's working round here now. Well, it's every time I walk down the street or go in the cafe. I just dread seeing Tracy and that baby. Yeah, well, me and all. Well, then how are we going to cope? Now that Dot and Granny's back and she is on a mission to make you face your responsibilities. Hey, my only responsibilities are to you and myself. I've told you. Anyway, listen, I've got some good news. I exchanged on the house. Did you get the cheque? Not yet. And when I do, it will be to pay off the debts, that's all. Well, it's just a shame you can't pay your mother off and send her on a long, long holiday. I took some more flyers round to Rita, so they should be in the papers tomorrow. Not that she wants to do it. You should have seen the face she pulled. So were you. Nothing. You've not said a word to me all night. You're not still annoyed with me, are you, over that stupid calendar? No. You are, aren't you? Honestly, Kevin, Tommy and Tyrone need a rocket up the backside. Look, Sal, it's not just a calendar. It's your whole attitude. And what's that supposed to mean? Throwing your weight around. Getting on people's cases all the time. I'm trying to put the business on the map. Yeah, well, it's not working out. Oh, I see. Well, it was ticking over nicely as it was. So what, you don't need any fresh ideas or another pair of hands? Well, frankly, no. All right, we might need a bit of tinkering with. We don't need a total refurb. You're too full on, so. Oh, it's nice to feel appreciated. Yeah, well, I'm just being honest. Yeah, well, can I just point out that since I've been running the... helping out... Ah, slips up then, didn't you? All right, running the place, because the business side does need running, Kevin. You're a mechanic, you haven't got time. Since I've taken over, turnover has gone up by 20%, so you can't say that it's not working. Oh, great. We're earning more money. What's the point if I'm going to be dead by the time I'm 50? Do you know what your problem is? You don't like being told what to do by a woman. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's true. So you better get used to it, because I'm going nowhere. You're not stopping Ursula, no way. You're being ridiculous. Stubborn, Les. There's a difference. Right. I've had enough. I'm off. What do you mean? Where are you going? Well, she's not going to budge, is she? And there's no way I'm stopping under the same roof as her. But you can't just go. This is our first night back together. Yes. And she's ruined it. You can't just run off at the first sight of trouble. You should stand by me. Or else why did we bother getting back together? Look. You and her have stuffed to sort out. It's now to do with me. On second thoughts, <sighs> you're right. Why let her put the kibosh on our special night? Come on, lover boy, come back to my place. Let us stew in her own juices. Good idea. If you think you'll get rid of me that way, you're wrong. I mean it. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> Bye, it's good to be back. <laughs> the look on Rita Sullivan's face when she saw me. She's dead nice to me now. She feels sorry for you on account of all lies people have been spreading about me. Saying I deserted you. You did. <laughs> I always meant to come back. And anyway, I'm not going over it again. I'm back now, and this time it's for good. Not Uncle Les has out to do with it. He just needs to get used to idea. He's still in shock. Hey, 
Why didn't you tell me Misery Guts Janice were back on scene? I didn't know. You must have known. How often has she been coming round? Dunno. A few times. Does she stay the night? Come on, Ches. I need inside info if I'm to win Les round. What are they like together? Did they cuddle on the sofa or what? Well, I think he's wanted to get back over for ages, but she won't show. Is that right? She's dead nice as well. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have bothered coming back if you've got Rita and wonderful Janice to look after you. I'm glad you came back. I'm sorry I ever went. But I'm going to make it up to you, you know. What do you fancy for your tea tonight? I won't go shopping if I were you. Why not? If you leave the house, you might not get back in again. Hello. Happy birthday. <laughs> Very funny. Now put Mission Impossible back on. Killjoy. Well, I don't want reminding that I'm over the hill every time I phone you. You are not over the hill. It's your birthday. You should be chuffed. you got cards and presents. I love birthdays. All oh, right. Would you want it? Because you're more than welcome to it. Can't give you birthday away, Steve. No, well, uh, I can ignore it. Treat it like a normal day and pray it goes quickly. Steve, I can't let you do that. Why not? Because it's your 30th. Will you stop reminding me? I supposed to be a millionaire before I was 30. And look at me now. Well, if my love for you was money, then you'd be a billionaire. Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. I still don't want any celebrations, though. Mm, just sit down, open your cards, and um, I, and I'll make you some breakfast. I mean it. I want a nice, easy, low-key day. No surprises. <laughs> Have to chuck your cards in the bin. It was from Amy. Well, at least that's what it said on the card. I don't think Amy can reach the post box, I mean. Leanne's right, you know. For all we know, she'll have changed a lot by now. Well, she's gonna have to move out sooner or later. She's now but a squatter. Well, aren't you heard of squatters, right? Uh, this is different. You can't squat in a house that somebody already lives in. Yeah, but she used to live there. A little boy lives there. Sounds like she's got a good case to me. Good case for what? Are you saying she might be entitled to stop there? Well, from what you and Rita have told me, she's capable of pulling all kinds of stunts. Ah, ha, ha. She's after compensation, because you threw her out, remember? It's me she wants, not money. Oh, you oh. big head. I'm right, though. That's why I'm going to go down there this morning and see her. Uh, and do what, like? Put her right. Once she realises she can't have me, she'll be off like a shot. <laughs> oh, there he is, cheeky tops. <laughs> It's not a funny chance your birthday. <laughs> I'll put the kettle on. Aha! Uh -huh. Wondered what Kelly was up to. I saw her out here last night with Dev. Oh, that when you were out with Tracy, was it? I was out with Amy. All three of you, I heard. Getting on like a house on fire. She asked me if I wanted to go for a walk with them. I said yeah. Well, it's bound to get up Karen's nose and mine. Me even being here gets up Karen's nose. Here, happy birthday. And if you come in the pub later, I shall give you your present. What? Amy is a spitting image of you when you were a baby. Why would anyone shave a chunk out of their eyebrow? Is it so the punters will know that you're employee of the month? Oh, very funny. It's fashion, isn't it? Looks cool. Looks stupid. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you made it go all pointy you now. I look like Mr. Spock. <laughs> oh. At Blue Mondale, Mr. Gould needs booking in for about a month's time. Ah. Oh. Is that your suggestion or his? Mine. Ah, you see, you'll make a salesman yet. Kevin, why don't you and me go out for a meal tonight? Enjoy the fruits of our ill-gotten games. I thought we had to save every penny we made so we can send Rosa at this posh skill. Well, if business is going well, we all benefit. Whether it's meals out or holidays. Well, it's up to you. 
Well, it'd be good to go out tonight, because the girls have both been invited to stop at a pal's house, so we'd have the place to ourselves. Yeah? Yeah. But if you're not keen... No, no, you're right. I mean, we've not been out for ages, have we? All right, I'll book it. Oh, Ches is much better off without her. I thought we'd seen the back of her. <laughs> no chance. She staged a sit-in. Janice and my dad had to stop in flat to get away from her. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Calm down. What's the hurry? But she's going to be in it, didn't you know? Everybody else does. Uh, 60 pila. Oh, I'm you. entitled to be excited, Betty. My owl finally getting the recognition he deserves. Here. Yeah. Oh, good. Hey, Leanne. Didn't you put these leaflets in paper this morning? My leaflets? These were the Webster's garage. I said we'd put one in every paper. Oh, well, nobody told me. Oh! Sorry. There it is, look. Oh, isn't it big? So what's it all in aid of? Uh, former councillor Audrey Roberts pictured here at the planned site of a commemorative fountain. Oh, to be built in honour of her late husband and former mayor, Alf Roberts. If Sally finds out these haven't gone out, they'll be held to pay. Oh, stick them in tomorrow's papers. Oh, you don't understand. It's not worth the aggravation. Oh, he was a good man, bless him. Yes, it was, Betty. Yeah. He really was. The £45,000 construction will be completed by summer 2005. Oh. Uh, uh, how much? Love me, Nick. He's an ex-councillor, not Winston Churchill. It's an awful lot of money, Audrey. It's obscene. Well, I'm sure the contract went out to tender Blanche. I mean, the council are very strict about things like that. They shouldn't be spending that kind of money in the first place. No wonder our council tax is so high. Look, where are they going to be putting it up? Well, in the council gardens, behind the investiture rooms. The back of the building? When you were going to see it there? Well... Council employees, uh, visitors, dignitaries. As opposed to common folk like you and me who won't get a look in. Honestly, it's like the flaming Kremlin down there. Well, you can always ring the town hall and I'm sure they'll give you a viewing. Look, that is not the point. It's being paid for by public money and it should be in a public place. So she's right, Audrey. But don't blame me. I didn't decide where it was going. Oh, good gracious, honestly. It's supposed to be a nice gesture and all you're doing is pouring cold water on it. <laughs> cold water fountain, good that. <laughs> You'd think they'd got money to burn, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not standing for it. Mm. I'm going to make my feelings known. Not like you, Blanche. David, my saviour, how would you like to earn yourself ten pound this dinner time? What's he in such a good mood for? Positive mental attitude. You are. Have you not seen today's motto on the calendar? All right. Little Stevie was so cute. <laughs> Didn't make you laugh. Yeah. I wish I'd have been there to see your face. <laughs> Yes, I promise. All right, I'll see you tonight. Love you. <laughs> Love you. <sighs> I am such a good liar. Why? What are you planning? Only the most romantic night of Steve's life. Champagne, oysters. Me. Oh, <laughs> never fancied oysters. You eat them raw, don't you? Do you? Yeah, you split them open, squirt a lemon, fit of Tabasco, down the hatch. Yeah, and straight back up the hatch. <laughs> used to be a working man's food till them Ponzi restaurants started doing them. In fact, my old man used to get them from a whelk stall in the Mile End Road. So you just uh, split them open then, yeah? That's it, split them open, squirt, squirt, bosh, bosh, wallop, wallop. <laughs> Lovely. Easy when you get the hang of it. Don't worry, I come in peace. Are you on your own? Yeah. I've come back to talk to you. They sent you round, haven't they? Nobody sent me! I live here! You'll have to go eventually. You know that. Don't see why. Because you don't live here anymore. If Chesney wants This is me... not to do with Chesney, is it? I want to do what's right by the lad. Oh, I. And what's brought all this on all of a sudden? You didn't give a damn about Chesney when you left. <laughs> you threw me out! I'd know where to go! And it wouldn't be right to drag Chesney with me. There's not a day gone by when I haven't sobbed my heart out over that little lad. Oh, no, tell me the truth. <gasps> that is the truth! Ronnie's chucked you out, hasn't he? <gasps> he wanted to marry me. Move into this big new house with him. Oh, yeah, then why didn't you do it? Be more secure than living round here. I couldn't. I miss Chesney. Oh, yeah. Ronnie and Chesney don't get on, do they? And OK, yeah, I missed you. And I knew it was a long shot and you probably wouldn't want to know, but I had to try. Try it on, you mean? 
<sighs> Living here where you and Chesney were the happiest days of my life. And I blew it. Big time. I know that. But I also know what a big heart you've got. What a good man you are. So I finished with Ronnie. Cos you can't edge your bets. Not where someone like this is concerned. I finished with him and I came home. How many times do I have to tell you? This is not your home. I came back because I love you. I love you. And I always will. <laughs> Not a park bench or a plaque, a fountain. But you try ringing up to ask why there's been graffiti on the bus stop for the last six months. It's true, there has. Or why they haven't fixed the broken flags down the snicket between the Red Wreck and Martha Street. What's their answer? Cuts. Cuts. Never mind fountains. It's proper lighting we want. And our bins emptying on time. What shall we do? Should we write to the Gazette? A waste of time and energy. We need to go straight to them in power. The council. March there. Hammer the door down. Occupy the investiture rooms. I think we should take a more diplomatic approach to begin with. I'll go to the town hall and voice our protest to the highest authority. Well, you can if you like, but you'll be wasting your time. There's only one language these people understand. Oof. The only reason you've come back is because you think I'm a soft touch. <sighs> Last thing I expected was for you to welcome me with open arms. I knew we'd have to work at it. Read my lips. I wouldn't take you back if you were the last woman alive. Read mine. I don't care. I still want you. You're mad. Get back. Back, you here. What are you scared of, Les? It's only me. Exactly. I know what you're like. I'll take that as a compliment. It makes my flesh creep every time I look at you. I don't know what I ever saw in you. <sighs> this is her doing, isn't it? She's poisoned your mind. The only person who turned me against you is you. If anyone thinks you're a soft touch, it's her. What other fellow would take her back after what she put you through? Water under the bridge. I might have known she'd sink her claws in as soon as my back were turned. I've been chasing her for weeks. Years. Let me guess. She kept giving you knock back. She needed time to think about it. She doesn't want you. She never wanted you. Only as a last option, a stopgap. I love Janice. I've always loved Janice. So much you can't see her for what she is. I'm saying this cos I care about you, Les. No, you're not. You're saying it because you're poison. You're evil. <sighs> Give me another try, Les. I'll make you happier than you've ever been in your life. I promise. When are you going to get into that thick skull of yours? I don't want you back. I hate you. Everyone round here hates you. If you're still here when I get in from work tonight, I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, you didn't half wolf that pizza down. Yeah, well, I was hungry, wasn't I? Oh, you should have had a dessert. You complain if I don't give you a dessert. Then you had tiramisu and you like tiramisu. OK, I've been numbled. I just wanted you all on my own. Oh, Come here. Mmm, mm, you're keen. I thought we could have a glass of wine first. Oh, yeah, OK, if you want. Uh, some in that cupboard. Hey, Kev, I'm sorry we fell out last night. Uh, husband and wife teams have TV in trouble all the time, don't they? Yeah. And that's what I want us to be, a, a team. I'm not trying to take over. Yeah, I know. And you're right about the lads. They are stuck in the ways. And you were right about me. I am trying to run before I can walk. I'm going to tread a bit more carefully from now on. Well, should we go in there? <laughs> yeah. It's not much, cos I'm not exactly flush at the moment. <laughs> oh, no, it's great, thanks. <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to upset Karen, or you, but I can't stay away from Amy altogether. I know. So, what are you doing tonight, then? Anything exciting? Nah, quite nice. On your birthday? 
I'm not interested. I can't be bothered. Well, at least let me get you a drink while you're in here. Go on, then. I'll have a pint. <clears throat> Did you get on? Oh, I'd say it was a complete waste of time. I told you it would be. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it was a humiliating waste of time. Let me guess. They wouldn't even see you. I saw a receptionist who can't have been older than 16. Old enough to know how to talk down to people, of course. In fact, I'd say she had an NVQ in sarcasm. Of course, there is another way, though I'm loath to use me influence. What influence? My daughter is a council official. Well, a typist, but at least she's on the inside. And more importantly, she can't be written off as a doddery old fool. Shall I speak to her, then? Why not? No, thanks, I'm off home. Come on, it's your birthday. I will stop reminding me. Give another pint, Liz. And a whiskey chaser. This time 30 years ago, I was screaming the roof off the Belfast Royal. Oh. Difficult birth, was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not as difficult as the next 30 years, eh, Mum? No, I'm dead proud of you and your brother. Did he ring you, by the way? Text. What about your dad? No. Nope. Mind you, I suppose we should be grateful he hasn't broken out of prison and delivered the card in person, so we should. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to bed. Oh, ignore it, ignore it. No, we can't ignore it. it. Might be somebody important. <phone rings> Webster's Auto Centre, Sally speaking. How can I help you? Oh, uh, can you speak up a bit? Cos you're breaking up. If it's a customer, tell them we'll get help. Yes, yeah, we do do a 24-hour recovery <laughs> service. Yeah, whereabouts are you? All oh, right, hold on, let me just write that down. Yep. Yeah, I've got that. Turn left, yep. All right. He'll be with you as quick as he can. All right, thanks for calling. Bye. What you going to do that for? Oh, he's only in Eccles. You'll be back within the hour if you put your foot down. Yeah, well, you should have said we couldn't help. There's loads of other garages out there. But I don't want him to go to other garages. I want him to go to our garage. Yeah, well, I can't. I've been drinking. One with food. And one in there. Half. You're well under the limit. <sighs> we was having a really good night. It's oh. been ruined now. Well, I'll still be waiting for you when you get back. <sighs> I've got to open the garage, load my tools. <sighs> After you, gorgeous. <laughs> I've only got five minutes because that Shelley watches me like a hawk. Hey, happy birthday! Hey. Happy oh, birthday, son! Get us down, you there. Oh, oh, yes, hey, oh, yes, oh, yes. 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 you didn't want to celebrate? Hey, babe. Just having a drink. Uh, or is it that you just didn't want to celebrate with me because... That's how it looks. No, no, no. You got the wrong idea. Come and have a drink. Oh, no. Don't want to gatecrash your private party. So, uh, you organised this, did you, Liz? No, it's not a party. We're just wishing him happy birthday. Funny face. Uh, yeah. I've got it on an oyster shell. It's nasty. Oh, baby, you haven't... Oh, what? I've been sat at home on my own with oysters, champagne and smoked salmon? Yes, Steve, I have. Maybe I said I didn't want anything. Oh, believe me, if I'd known you were planning an evening with your mother, then I wouldn't have bothered. And you were drunk. I'm a bit tiddly, have I? Don't let me spoil your fun! Karen! Oh, I'm gonna have to go after now. Karen! <laughs> hey, it's not funny, this you know. Haven't you seen facial attraction? Well, she doesn't look a lot like Glenn Close to me. What's happened to you since I've been away? Have you been at the high karate? These are dark horses, aren't Les? Right, come on then, what are we gonna do now? Well, I'm working some nights. Maybe we should leave her there another night. You are? Are you mad? There's one of her, there's four of us. I vote we take direct action. Oh, it can't be in. Whatever it is you're planning. Why is it you're planning? What are you doing? What's, what's going on? I said get off! Come on, Lizzie, 
it's only early. That is not the point. What are you saying that? Get off me. Leave me alone. Right. Get up. Go on and don't come back. Good night, Stella.
It's Anita. It's Anita. What do you want? Penny for your thoughts. They're not for sale. Oh, well, I know that old trick. You're just trying to run the price up. OK, I'll go to a um, pound. I mean it, Dave. Oh, well, now you got me really curious. Tell you what, why don't you name your price, hmm? Take what you want from the till. Come on, Sunita, what's the matter? Come on, let me in. Let it go, please. Don't you break your ass? Not hungry. Not hungry? It's a full monte. Fried bread and all. My heart's not in it. I was getting used to having Janice around. She'll be round soon. Just give her time. No. She's marked my card over Sewer's latest daft trick. As if it were my fault. Did I give her the idea to set them up as shoplifters? Well, just talk to her. She'll come round. Oh, no, no, no. I hate talking to women. Me and Jan, we're great as long as we don't talk. But as soon as we start talking about all that touchy, touchy, feely stuff, it always turns out bad. I know what you mean, mate. Baffles me and all, all that. They seem dead keen on it, but you've got to do it. There's no choice. Oh, I suppose not. I'll catch you later. Let her cool down a bit. Right. Oh, better make an effort, I suppose. Morning. Morning, Liz. Do you have a nice lie-in? That's good. So, all finished here. What do you think? Well, I'm sure you're not interested in my opinion. Oh, but I am. I'm all ears. Oh, well, all I can say is it's it's not really to my taste. Oh. oh, I'm really disappointed. Problem is, we couldn't run to flock wallpaper and uh, the tarts boudoir look just isn't me. What a shame. Yeah, still, I'm the one who'll be living here long term, it being my living room. So there you go. Put the kettle on, eh? Dying for a cup of tea. Wes is just going to have to get rid of her. He's no choice. Yeah, but how can he, Jack? I can think of a dozen ways. Starting with rat poison, moving slowly on to Chinese water torture. I'm sorry, Fizz, I know she's your mum. No, you don't have to stop for me. I've spent my whole life dreaming thoughts like yours. But what I'm saying about Les is, I mean, he can't just ban her from the house. She's got a right to see Chesney now and again. Do you really think she cares out about him? Watch out, boss's missus. Morning, Mum. My husband around. Oh, you can tell us now you're here. How do you feel about your husband working in women's underwear? You don't know how old that joke is. Oh, she does. Janice invented it. Whose side are you on? Who's taking sides? See, she likes to be in with the management, Karen. She's got a thing for bosses, especially young ones. The last but one. Thank you, Janice. Oh, sorry. <gasps> My big mouth. What's she talking about? Nothing. It's a past history, forget it. Uh, you, your husband's in there, I think. <laughs> well, what are you staring at? Lovely air. All right, thank you. <laughs> you ought to be careful. Hmm? With the length. Don't want to get it caught in the machine. Oh, I'm always careful. I can imagine you are, but nevertheless. You're the one they call Bolshe. Oh, you've got her number quick enough. <laughs> Not difficult, Lippy. Who do you think you're called? Oi, watch it. Everything all right, girls? Yeah, yeah. We're just having a nice little chat with your missus. Oh, I don't pay you for chats. Oh, you should. It's dead interesting. Where's he hiding? What? Deb? Come out. Come out wherever you are. I know you're in there. Come out with your hands up. It's like dragging a small boy off for a haircut. Mm. There's nothing to worry about. No, 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 I'm not uh, uh, worried. I was just around there doing the, the uh, VAT, and I have to be uh, honest, I forgot about it. Liar. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> forgot about what? Oh, it's a personal matter. Yeah, appointment with the uh, consultant. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Uh, I'm sorry, I just... I didn't forget about it. Um, I woke up thinking about it. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, don't worry yourself. He's got me to hold his hand. I don't need anybody to hold my hand. Oh, I'm sure you don't, but I do. It's going to be all right, Dad. Thank you. 
Are you all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah. Good luck. Come on. Shouldn't be long. It's no problem. Well, why should there be? After all, it's what you're paid for, isn't it? No! I am not wearing a Listen. helmet! Listen. Listen. It has been put to me that if there was an industrial accident, it's doubtful the insurance company would pay out. It would be seen as wanton negligence on my part, not yours. So I cannot take that risk, can I? And we have just recovered from a fire as it is. You know, it's for your own good. So it's either crop or net, work or walk. The message could not be any clearer. Anyway, you won't look so bad. And after all, you're not the models for this underwear, are you? You're just the workers. Nobody cares how you look. Right, come on to lunch, love. Take me somewhere nice. Yes, the best little bistro in town. Our bistro here. This is because you went and wound her up. Sorry? Was it me that started it? I think it was her that started it. Right, well, while the cat's away, I'm going to go outside and grab myself a lung full of fresh air. Uh, come on, Liz. Right, right, lad. Too crisp. Sorry, what was that? The bacon on that bacon butty. I took one bite out of it and exploded like flaming shrapnel. Oh, I am sorry, Jack. I'll pass your reservations on to the chef. A matter like this should be rectified instantly. No. Vera, we have a complaint no, over no, here. No. I thought, no, I thought you made it. No, no, no. Best to take your problem straight to the source. Are you moaning, Jack? No, I'm not moaning, no. It's about his bacon sandwich. Well, he shouldn't be having a bacon sandwich. Oh, now, come on, Vera. I've cycled the length of the flaming ship canal this morning on that infernal machine, and a man needs some sustenance. Well, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. You mean it was a misunderstanding him? See, the, the top come off the brown sauce, didn't it? And then it squirted all over it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother you. No, I'll try not to lose any sleep over it. Hey, old babe, Manchester's finest. You are joking. <laughs> I've got a lot to do, sweetheart. I can't go trekking all over town. Uh, can we have a coffee while we decide what to order? What? You do do coffee, don't you? Yeah. Can I have a cafe latte? No. Cappuccino? No. I suppose there's no chance of an espresso. Yeah, you're right. There isn't, no. Do you just have one sort of coffee? We have two. What, regular or decaf? Cool. I don't know. <laughs> right, uh, I think I'll go for the cup. Well, you better order at the counter, then. Got her right in there. See that lady mug. Welcome. <laughs> all this concerned mam number. It's all a con. All that troll at once is to get back with Les. She don't give a monkey's for Chesney. And the only one who don't know it is that poor lad. I don't know, maybe he does. She's still his man, though. Ooh. Talk of the devil. Oi, you misery guts! Dennis, wait! Don't you go calling me names, you old slag! Slag? You calling me a slag? They don't have slag eaves on docks as big as you. Well, you should know. You probably worked them, haven't you? Did you do a good business? Right, that is it. I have had enough of you. Calm down, Janice. Just tell Big Mouth here to close a gob so I can slide past and get on with my business. And what business would that be, fatty? Just get out me robe. Don't you lay one finger on me or I'll snap your flaming arms off. Come on, cool it, the pair of you. What are you up to, ma'am? Tell this friend of yours I'm a mother going to see a kid. Oh, <laughs> you're such a loving mother. So loving, you don't even know it's a school day. Have you ever heard of school? You're just hanging round here to slime all over Les. It's not to do with you what I'm doing here. Just cos you're frightened of losing your boyfriend. It's got nothing to do with Les. It's about that daft stunt you pulled on me yesterday. Don't know what you're talking about. Right, come on, pack it in the pair of you. Back off. I'm warning you. What's all this? High noon? Your mate here thinks she's a cowboy. Dead right. And you can play the part of the cow. That shouldn't be very difficult for you. Come on, bring it on. I love a good barbecue, me. A nice big piece of prime steak. Come on, make my day. Mum, she means it. I'll pick Jess up from school. 
This town ain't big enough for the pair of us. Well, what am I supposed to do for the rest of the day? I don't care. Just don't go shopping, all right? Look, I'll settle up. You go and earn the daily bread. All right, babe. Ta-ra. Café Latte, Vera, is exactly as the name suggests. Well, it doesn't suggest out to me. Well, it's, it's from the Italian for milk. But it's just a milky coffee. There's no posh about that. Nobody said there was. Well, her ladyship was making out it was. Well. Hey, hang on, hold your arses. Where do you think you're going? Shopping. Well, it's traditional to settle up first. I left a £10 note on the table. <laughs> oh, did you? All right. <laughs> Right, I'll get you change. I don't want any. What do you mean? It's a tip. Don't be daft. There's more than an affair. Terribly sorry. Have I done something wrong? I always make it a point to reward good service. It's rare enough nowadays, don't you think? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Mm. Here, now she's different, isn't she? That's class, is that? If we'd more people like her coming in, Will it be worth ordering more milk? Sorry. I, I was just wondering how you were. You OK? What do you care? Listen, Sunita, I know in some ways we got off on the wrong foot. Well, actually, it's the other way round, isn't it? Cos, you know, I, I guess we started off really well. Well, at least I thought we did. And at the time, to be honest, I was fancy free. I, I had no idea my wife was going to turn up. You know, that's the last thing I expected. Obviously. No, what? No, I mean, you know, I thought we broke up. We had problems. None of my business. Yeah, but I just wanted to come and square things with you. How? I don't know. Maybe get some change from me pizzas. Is that supposed to be funny? Yeah. Exactly. We put those in water when you finish playing with them. Would you accept these as a uh... I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for. But uh, whatever it is, I can probably find it in here, by the looks of it. Amazing, isn't it? What things you can pack into a little shop. You don't have to go further than the corner of the road and there's everything you could possibly want. Well, that's what my husband says at any rate. Perhaps you know him. I don't. I might. He works across the road. Bet he's popped in. You're convenient for so many things, aren't you? His name's Danny. A dome. It takes me a long time to remember people's names. Really? And I'd heard how friendly people were up north. I'm not saying we're not friendly. No. I'm sure you're not. My name's Frankie. Sunita. Sunita. Lovely name. Oh, yeah. Of course. What? Now, what did I come looking for? No. Well, I'm sure it'll come back to me. And uh, when it does, I'll pop back. Well, it's nothing. He just wants to run a simple test, a colonoscopy. I won't even have to stay in. Well, that's good. Yeah, it is, unless they find something, right? Oh, even if they do, and it's very likely that they won't, but even if they do, it'll probably turn out to be benign. <laughs> Strange word, that, isn't it? Benign. That makes you think of the Pope or something, not the big C. Whatever it is, it's going to be OK. Yeah, of course, yeah. Come on. Let's get you a drink. Uh, listen, I should get back to Sunita. Why? Well, she'll be needing a break. Oh, look, my concern is what you need. She'll cope. Come on, they kept us waiting around here for hours. It's not your fault. She'll understand. Let's just get you a quick drink on the way back. Yeah, best, best we get back. We'll go out later, yeah? Oh, 
if that's what you want. No, no. Has Deirdre said anything about them starting on the digging for the fountain? Because I know this council. Once they've dug a hole, they'd rather bury us in it than back down. Oh, she said nothing about diggers. Mm, right. Yes, well, perhaps they're doing it under cover of darkness, expecting resistance, and if they're not, more fool them. This gives us our opening. Doris, what's this phone call? Look, I can't stay long. I want you back at the Rovers in ten minutes' time. I thought you should be in on this, Betty, before you see your good money just frittered away. What's the about? Resistance. The barricades. Oh, <clears throat> dear. Hey. How was it? Yes. Oh, nothing <laughs> serious. Just a few tests. Mm -hmm. When the results come through, everything will be fine. Mm. Good. That, that's good. What's the matter? Hmm? So to come on, believe me, I'm I'm fine. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I've just had a very. I don't feel very well. I need some fresh air. Hey, hey, Sunita, oh, there's a. Leave her. What do you think's the matter with her? She's always been emotionally unstable. I don't know how you manage to get a day's work out of her. And judging by today, you clearly don't. What exactly are we planning to do about it? I've already made my mind up on that. I'm simply not going to pay the council tax. Well, hey, won't they take you straight to court? Oh, what, and, and lock up a bunch of frail old ladies? I don't think so, somehow. Norris, you may think we're so frail we'd blow away in the slightest breeze, but we've still got some fight left. I shall get straight onto the press and tell them of my intent. What's all this talk about fighting? Did you not call Rita to this meeting? It doesn't do to go blathering to everybody, and, and we don't want to divulge too much to those doubters who might be sleeping with the enemy. I beg your pardon, Norris. Who am I reported to be sleeping with? Audrey Roberts. Has the time come to have him put down? Oh, no, no, what I meant... We've decided what? to take action over the squandering of public money on Alf's fountain. Well, you see, the time's come for us all to decide who we're sleeping with. Will you stop that silly talk, Norris? Are you with us, Rita? Wasn't it David Crockett or somebody at this stage decided to draw a line down the centre of the Alamo? Oh, I'll, I'll get some chalk. Don't bother. Oh, all right, then, go on. Count me in. I'm trying to get out of it. I know it's my round. Oh, if we ever get served. You know, tomorrow we should come in with this hair next on and then maybe they can let us old folks get to the bar. Uh, can we just not talk about the hair next, thanks? Oh, well, she is spoken. Shelley Law, can we have our usuals when you're ready? On its way. Yeah. Oh, here comes trouble. Evening, ladies. My husband here. He was locking up when we left. Yeah, working all hours, trying to keep you in fancy shopping bags. I mean, my axe out to him. It really does. Sorry, I've forgotten. What's your name again? <laughs> Karen. Karen. Thank you. She's asking for it. Uh, watch your back, Karen. It's not her that's going to lose her job. Jan, you get him in? Go on, Miss. Miss. Now's your chance. Oh, no, I hate this. We have to do these things. Hey, be careful. She'll bite you, darling. Oh, great. Uh, Janice, uh, I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. No? You do, really, at heart. But what? You're a woman. And? No one just... What? Well, it's not just you being a woman who's got feelings. I mean, I've got them as well. And where do you keep a middle? Under bed in that cardboard box. What, what, what do you know about that? What feelings have you got, Les? I'm speaking from the heart now. Oh, can't wait. Come on, move in with me. Oh. What and have breakfast in bed every morning? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Okay. That'll be grand, will that? Do you think you could tell Scylla not to burn me toast? Yeah, right, no problem. What? Oh, grow up, Les, will you? Until you get rid of that cow, I'm coming nowhere near you. Thank you, Shelley. Oh, I gave it my best shot. Yeah, I heard. Oh, what more can you do? Oh, forget it. Can I have a quick word, Shell? Hang on a minute, love. It's like a madhouse in here. Yes, love? Do you know what in the wise, please? It's Sunita, yeah? Oh, it is a small world, isn't it? So, um, you two have met then, have you? Sunita here wasn't too sure. Well, I, uh. Um... She works in the corner shop? Oh, right, yeah, the corner shop. Of course, mm. I popped in. Yeah, there was a queue, no reason you'd remember me. 
Yeah, I think I do. You bought a couple of pies. Yeah. Gotcha. You. There you go then. Memory jogged. Nobody can forget my Danny, can they? Sorry, love. Where have you been, Betty? Oh, well, signing up for the Land Army all over again. You are? Oh, don't ask. Anybody want seven? Yeah, rum and coke, please, Bet. Right. Get okay. the lady a drink in, please, Danny. Oh, no, no, that's very kind of you, but I've just come in for a quick word with my friend Shell. Can I come through? Y yeah, it, uh, sorry to drag her away from you. It's just I want her opinion on my new decor. Yeah, some other time, then. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Do you know, I'm beginning to like it here. People are so friendly. Don't you find that, Danny? Well then, love, what's the matter? Is it bad news about Dev? No. He's got more tests. But, but he's going to be all right. Yeah, probably. Whatever. He's got another shoulder to cry on now. You've got to learn that, Sunita. It's not Dev. Though I am worried about him, of course. Well, what is it then? Is it that Danny's wife? Has she been sniffing around again? I can handle her. I am so... For doing what? Sleeping with him. Well, you weren't to know. You can't blame yourself. I can't. Well, you mustn't. It was him that led you on. Blokes lie until they're blue in the face. They're experts at it. We shouldn't whip ourselves for falling for them. I've done enough of that. Don't go down that road. I'm not whipping myself for sleeping with him. But I am for getting pregnant by him. Are you sure? Have you done a test? No. Well, there's nothing to go panicking about then, is there? You're probably late, it happens. Not to me. You know what you like with dates. Do you remember that time you chucked all them muffins out because you thought they were past a sell by date? I know when I was due, Shell. I bet all that worrying about Dev hasn't helped. I mean, things can go haywire when you're upset. It's happened to me. If you are, are you sure it's Danny's? Yes. I am so stupid. Stupid. No, you're not. Oh, the dove by a married man? You don't know that yet. You've probably got yourself so wound up, you're not giving your body a chance. Listen, you need to find out properly. But before you do that, you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to relax. How? He's out with her now. Not forgetting the wife he never said he had. Maybe she should go up to her and tell her it's not just pizzas I deliver. It's unwanted babies and all. Hiya, Betty, I'm here. Uh, you all right, lovey? Well, yeah, I am, but there's somebody not right in the back. Do you think I should go and knock? No, I wouldn't bother. Sunita went through there a little while ago. Oh. So what's going on? Search me. Oh, well, you get yourself off home. OK, no, troll off. See you later. <laughs> Never a dull moment round here. That's Sunita? Yeah. She seemed all right a minute ago. We haven't done nothing to upset her, have we, Dan? I don't know, Frank. Have you? So, and tears have got nothing to do with you, eh? Oh, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Did you sleep with her? No, I didn't. Are you sure? Of course I am. You came along. And what if I hadn't? Ah, there's a question. Dan. Frankie, you know me. I'm all about the best things in life. And it's a choice between you and her, then there's no contest. But if steak ain't on the menu, I might get tempted by a little bit of pizza. Do you get my meaning? And what if you get tempted again? Well, just make sure I ain't. That is your job, darling. How was Wales? Did you have a good time? Go on, tell him, mate. Go on. <laughs> yeah, we had a top time. <laughs> oh, guess what? Dad's got his job back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had my suspension lifted. Oh, what a relief. We had visions of you being drummed out of nursing for good. Well, I'll be under the microscope from now on, but hey, small price to pay. Certainly. I mean, much better than being struck off and having to stand in the door queue. Yeah, nice to see you still got the faith in me, Audrey. Oh, sure. <laughs> Martin, you know what I'm saying. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I don't know. Facing Carl Foster every day is not going to be much fun, though, is it? Yeah, well, he deserved what you did to him. Mm. Have you told Gail? Uh, no, I haven't, actually, so go on. You can have that one on me. Oh, she'll be made up a bit of good news for once. Oh, yes, not half as thrilled as she's going to be having seen you again. So come on. Yeah, don't forget this. See you later. Catch you later, sunshine. So, how are you? All right? Yeah, I'm all right. Most days, anyway. Yeah, it's going to take time. 
listen, I know. You're going to have to share me now with the sick and the wounded, but well, you mustn't be afraid to ask me or your mum if you want to talk. Yes, I know. Mm. So how are things with you and Katie? Come on, if I'm supposed to talk... Look, if she wants to see me, Of then... course she will. She's crazy about you. And how'd you work that out? Bet it was a stupid argument that split you up in the first place. No, I don't know. Oh, just go and see her. She looks dead unhappy. Except she don't want to make the first move because she thinks you hate her. No, I don't. I'm far from it. Well, then, just be honest with her. Bet you she'll listen. Bye, Blanche. What are you doing? What you should have done when Sunita walked out. Home. <clears throat> I'm going to run you a bath. OK. All right. I'll just pop up and see how she is. Oh, yeah. Why not just give her exactly what she wants? <sighs> well, something's obviously wrong, babe. And nothing's wrong down here. Look, here you are, left to quibble over change when you've had consultants prodding and probing you all day. Yeah, I'm aware of that. And this from the Angel of Mercy. She's keen enough to offer free counselling, but when it comes to doing what she's paid for... OK. You prepared to stand in for her? Are you going to be here at seven in the morning when they deliver the bread? Because if I'm going to be out of action for who knows how long, I need to know I've got a member of staff that I can rely on. We've been through this together, Dev. Please don't <sighs> take it out on me. Well, let me do this. Well, hey, you took your time. I've got a burger mashed up and waiting for this fella. Oh, Doberman at Kennels had pups. And Mr Sutherland let us watch. Oh, I Got your eye on another one? No. They've got to stay with the mum till the weaned, and then she's got eight weeks to teach him how to survive. What happens then? Mr Sutherland's going to sell them and make a right bomb, so they won't see her again. Oh, it's a dog's life, eh? They don't mind. He said Schmeichel's probably forgotten his mum already. Is that right? Well, you know how she smells, but that's it. Don't matter, really. As long as he's got someone to look after him, he's all right. Aren't you, mate? Hey, what's up? Nothing. Give him to me. Come on, Schmeichel. Over it, boy. I miss my mum. Yeah, you still see her. Not like when she lived here, though. Especially now she's banned. Hey. You listen to me. There's no one going to stop you from seeing your mum. But Janice hates her guts. And you like Janice. Don't you worry. Your uncle Les will have a word. Come here. Dev's going to be on the warpath. Hey, don't let that Maya give you any lip. Look, are you sure you don't want me to come with you? No, I'm fine. I feel I can't really help you, though. But I can't till we know where you stand. I don't want to know. Oh, come on. I know, and I don't want to not know either. Look, if I pick the test up for you, would it make it easier? No, you've done enough. So, if I leave it to you, you do it yourself? No, I thought not. Please. Yeah. You'll be all right for a minute, won't you? I'm just nipping out. Oh, should be. I'm getting enough practice. Just in time. Oh, look, I'll call you later. I can't stop now. What's the rush? Leave me with my hands full, why don't you? Hey, join the club, love. <laughs> I'll say this. You don't get a killer instinct by baking cakes for the church bazaar. Yes, well, think again. She'll soon show that reporter she means business. Mm. She's been quite a firebrand in the past, as our Emily. Well, that's no good. She used to be the working men's delight in the Weatherfield Legion. Doesn't mean she can pack them in today. Well, that's as maybe. You're still selling her short. You've not seen her try to beat a rug. I'm telling you, she's past it. Hello, Hello, Emily. Hello. Now then, Emily, what did you tell them? I said I didn't believe that public funds should go towards a memorial situated in private grounds. At a girl. And this is your firebrand. More like a damp squib. Blanche. When my Donald was taken away from me, I didn't go round expecting people to stump up for a fountain in his name. You tell me why Alf Roberts should be different. Well, we're not here to vilify Alf. I mean, this was hardly his idea. No, no, let's not go using Alf Roberts as a political football. We've got to find some way to make them take notice in that ivory tower of theirs. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's just hope you haven't blown it. There she is. All right, thank you. I'm sorry about before. Your timing is impeccable. 
I wasn't mm-hmm. feeling well. So you vanished without a word. Did it not occur to you that Dev might be feeling just a bit below par himself? Right, you feeling better now? Yes, thanks. It won't happen again. Damn right, it won't. No, listen, ladies, we have all had a stressful day. I know, and I've just gone and made it worse. Don't you dare go fishing for sympathy. Maya! If there's anything I can do to help... Oh, well, what's the point when you won't help yourself? Will you tell her that she can't behave like Thank this? Thank you. I'm feeling fine now. Come on. So, do you know what was so important? Why did she have to go rushing up? Not a clue. Surprised you didn't ask. I only work here. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'm on my way. Right. Do us a favour, love. Tell the other half Mike wants a word and I'll see you back at the ranch. OK, love. Ladies, don't linger. I want your bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the morning. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. See ya. You know, he's sounding more and more like his uncle every day. Like that. I thought it was going to be a laugh at first. Well, we know we put paid to that, don't we? Oh, looks like you're on your toddler. Oh, you'd think he'd have waited till you'd spent a penny. His mobile went off. He had to go see Mike about something. Thanks. I thought your hubby were running that factory. He is. But he's still at Uncle Mike's beck and call. Not just at Uncle Mike's. Sorry, Karen? It was you that told him to put us in those air nets, wasn't it? It was explained to you, Karen. Health and safety. Yeah, right. Oh, hello. What are you smoking at? Nothing, love. But I'll be honest with you. I don't want any accidents. And from what I hear, you're accident prone. Especially where bosses are concerned. I'm happily married, love. So am I, darling. And as long as you don't go forgetting it, we're going to get along fine. Martin, how do you think it's going? Look, I thought I'd tell you. I've been reinstated at the hospital. What do I care about your job? Hmm? What are you asking how I am for now? Well, we got back this evening. No, I don't mean now as in tonight. We were over weeks ago. What do you want from me? Look, there's a few things that I'd say and do differently given the chance. And if we can just talk things through, sort a few of them out. That's what I want. No. Why? You didn't want to talk back then. I walked out of your flat and you were happy to see me go. It was a big weight off your shoulders, wasn't it? Trying to say. Sorry. Right, well, you have now, so... Oh, come on. I want us to talk properly. Do you? Because we're only talking now because my dad wants haddock and chips. Right. I've been looking out for you, you know. So talk. I've really missed you. But when we've got Sarah to think about now, I just I just don't want there to be any bad feeling between us. So there's not. I better go. It's not the same when you have to warm it up again. Who does she think she's talking to? Woman who's after her husband by sound of it. Oh, lighten up. Lighten up. It's you that started this by telling her about Joe Carter. I never. Well, not in so many words, anyway. Hey, I don't know what you're pointing the finger at, anyway. If a fit bloke walks in tomorrow and sees us in them air nets looking like a bunch of mingers, that's your doing. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. You uh... gave her something to think about. Mm, I know her type of my love. She tries to make out she's the Virgin Mary just because some poor saps put a ring on her finger. That's my son. Sorry. We are not uh, what you'd call close. If you see her throwing evils this way, most of them are meant for me. I'm sure she's a nice enough girl. Nice enough don't cut it when she's married to my blue-eyed boy. She's Chesney's mum. She's a malicious cow. You let her in the house again and you can kiss goodbye to Janice, and if you do that, you're a flaming idiot. It's not as if I'm going behind her back. 
She told that guard we had half a fresh ghost stuffed down our underwear, Dad. She wanted us banged up. And there's no excuse. If I promised little Chase she could pop round now and again just to say hello. Oh, if Jan says no, it'll break his little heart. Oh, knock it off, Dad. You weren't that bothered when I was a kid. Oh, no, that hurts. That hurts. Who was it who played with you for hours? Jigsaws, plasticine. I was there. What about all them things we used to make? Yeah, fake 50p's for the meter, mainly. And when they didn't work, who was it who sang you to sleep when you were scared of the dark? That's what little Chesney's never had. So what's more important to you? The kid who isn't even yours? Or Janice, who you say you love? Why should I have to choose? Because behind that kid is a scheming witch. She'll have worked on him so she can get to you so you'll let her in. And that's what Janice will think if I tell her. But you're wrong. And I know I'm not the greatest dad. But that kid likes me. So I must have done something right. So? Look. You're better at talking than what I am. You're my last hope. Or else what do I say to his little face? I was talking to Martin before. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he didn't meet anyone in Wales, put it that way. He was dead miserable because he hadn't seen you. Yeah, well, he has now. We're finished for good, if that's what you're wondering. Oh, you two need your heads banging together. Katie, he really likes you. He likes his family more. Well, I am his family. I want you to work things out. Do you really mean that? Of course I do, I always have. Well, maybe you can help. Cos you're the reason why we split up. What are you on about? Look, I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to like. But if it's out in the open and you've got over it, then there's no reason why me and Martin can't do the same. Just tell me. It's about Carl and Todd. I'm the one who found out that we're seeing each other. What do you mean you found out? Well, Carl told me. I know I should have told you, and it's... It's really stupid, but I thought I could stop it. Anyway, Martin found out and he went off on war. You knew? And... You both did? Look, I am so sorry. Sarah! Oh, I didn't hear you come in. What you got there, then? Nothing. Some up for me? No, no, no. Go just... on, eh? It's surprising. But we've been careful. It's not mine. Unless you've been playing around. It's for Sunita. Look, I, I promised her I wouldn't tell anyone. Right. Sunita up the stick, eh? Who would have thought that? Excuse me. Just so we know, are you planning on coming back on duty? Is there a problem? Well, yeah, there is. Not only are we very busy out there, but one at Lagers has gone as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I would be more than happy to see to it, but I can't leave the bar. Not with the crowd out there. Give us a pint and I'll do it for you. I can't ask you to do our job. You sure? Positive. Listen, I was settled in with my Marmaduke, so you better have a good reason for dragging me back in here. Look, we've got to plan the next stage in our campaign. Oh, surely we should wait to see how Emily's interview goes down. Uh, oh, don't know about this, does she? Look, come Friday, the whole of Weatherfield's going to know. I do think it's only courtesy to warn her. Norris, you're nominated. Oh, now, hang on, well, hang I'm on. I'm surprised at you coming out with that. And you, when you've lived through at least one world war. Sorry? The blackouts weren't just for canoodling, you know. The less we give away to the enemy, the more chance we've got of scuppering this memorial. I think this is becoming very underhand, if you don't mind me saying. Well, if you were in charge of Bomber Command, she'd be ditching up sauerkraut. So what comes next, then, after the big fancy house? Big fancy job? <laughs> Not if I can help it. I've never been a lady of leisure, have I? Don't knock it till you've tried it. You know, I think I'd get bored and I'd miss all the gossip flying around, for one thing. Oh, I get that for free. Perk of the boss's wife. I look at them girls and I can tell you the lot. Who they're seeing, whether they've been cheated on and where they'll be in ten years' time. Still clocking on, most of them. Mm. Well, you know that Sunita who was in here before in tears. What about her? No, I shouldn't tell you, really. Go on, Liz, spit it out. Well, don't spread it round. But I think she's just found out she's got a baby on the way and no boyfriend on the scene to speak of. 
thinks Anita's pregnant. It's a shame, really, because she's a sweet girl. Let's just hope Daddy does the right thing by her. But that's not likely with half the blokes round here. Same again. Uh, no, thanks. I'd better not. Oh, come on. Now, you're not listening to me. Right, I'm listening. Right, OK. Look, by the time I knew, so did you. It was all too late. I don't believe you. Oh, come on. I've been through it all with you. Don't you think I'd have done everything in my power to protect you if I could have? Your girlfriend didn't, did she? Well, it was all too much for her to handle, that's all. She panicked. It was too much for her to handle. She wasn't getting a kick out of it, if that's what you're saying. She was doing all she could to try and stop it, Are you were doing all you could to cover up for her. You're supposed to be my dad. I am your dad. So, so then why didn't you put me before your two-faced girlfriend? Hope you do get back together. You deserve each other. I am so sorry. You know, every time I try and do something right, it goes wrong. That's a come out sometime, eh? I just thought if there were no more secrets... I suppose that's me being immature. Oh, no. That was Sarah being immature. See, she still needs her dad to look up to. She's fragile and she needs me. Which is why we can't get back together. You understand that, don't you? Yeah. How are you, Jan? Thanks for coming round. <sighs> if you've got something to say, say it to me face. Don't go snivelling to all I am. I'm sorry. So go on, then. Say it to me face. All this... It's for the lad. That's all you had to say. You're going soft in your old age. Hey, not where it counts. Uh, shut up. I am speaking. I am not going to use that little kid against his mother, trollop though she is, because I refuse to sink down to her level, as much as I would love to give her a leather in. So she can visit him? Oh, bless you, Johnny. I'll be thrilled to bits. Yeah, 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 all right. And you behave yourself, and uh, I might just join you permanently. So, so you'll move in? Well, yeah, maybe. Only the next time she calls round here to see Chesney, you make sure that you tell her that, then we all know where we stood. All right, lover. Sorry, Frank, I couldn't get out of there, babe. How's Mike? Browned off. Henderson's have been trying to pull a fast one. I'll give him a rocket in the morning. That I'd like to hear. You seem a bit edgy, babe. Girls been sharpening their claws, have they? You might as well tell me where you've really been. Where'd you think I've been? <laughs> Haven't you got some front? What are you on about? Where have you been? I've been in Underworld, which is better than being stuck in here with a broken record. No, you're right. She wouldn't let you near anyway. State she's in. She's pregnant. That's right, Dan. Your pretty little pizza girl is in the club. With no boyfriend and no one else in the frame. Now, have you got something to say about that? Poor cow. Who, Dan? Her or me? Listen to me, Frankie. I am sick and tired of repeating myself. Sick and tired. Nothing happened, right? I'm with you and for my sins I love you. Now, why don't you just call it a day, eh? Before the pink elephants come marching through. Go on. Go on. Oh, yeah, you do that. So? Was it positive or negative? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? There's either a blue line there or there isn't. You, you, you did take the test, didn't you? Oh, Sunita. Well, I was hoping my period would start. Then I wouldn't have to, would I? Carry on like this and you won't, cos the baby will already be born. Morning. 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 Do you want some? Uh, no, I'm all right. I can wait. Serve Shelley first. Oh, we're just chatting. Right. I'll have one of these then. It's 40p. Okay. There you go. <coughs> oh. Did you say out? Of course not, no. He's probably just coming to chat you up again. Look. You're going to have to take this test, you know. You can't put it off forever. I know. 
Do you want me to be there with you? Oh, would you, Shell? I know it's pathetic. No, but... it isn't. I'd be just the same. Look, I'll call for you this dinner time. And don't worry, we'll probably find out it's a waste of money. I thought you'd be pleased. Well, yeah, I am. It's just, it's a long way, that's all. What is? Nottingham. Nick's firm are opening up a new branch there. Yeah, and I might be with a chance of running it. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Do you mind? This is a private conversation. Oh, sorry. Can I have a bacon butter, please, Vera? Uh, look, you'll have to wait your turn. Well, oh, that's all right. I've got plenty of time. Cheeky cat. It's just not because Nick won't have a lot to do with her. Uh, yeah, can we get back to what we're talking about, then? Because I need to let my boss know if I'm interested or not. Right, well, just, yeah, say you are. But, I mean, moving away. What about the salon? Well, you'll find something else, won't you? I mean, there's hairdressers everywhere. All oh, right, so you're saying my job isn't as important, are you? No, I'm not, but when you get down to it, I'll be earning loads more than you ever could, won't I? Thanks very much. Well, I might not get the job yet. Anyway, I've got to go. See you later. See you. <laughs> Jameson's want another 300 of the Black Beauty line. Am I talking to myself? Oi! Sorry. Uh, no, 300, right. Where are you going? Oi! What do you think you're playing at? Get them off. After you. <laughs> Get the airnets off now. They can't, it's health and safety. Yeah, you told us we have to wear them. Just didn't say where, that's all. <laughs> Maybe you should take them off now, girls. Eh? You heard her. OK, so we don't have to wear hairnets then. You might be bullshy, but you ain't brainy. Don't even dream you can put one over on me. All right. Keep your hair on. <laughs> <laughs> just put them back on your head now. It was just a joke. You. Get on with what you're being paid for. OK, Danny. Shall we get back to what we were doing? Now, what is going on? When my cleaner resigns and half my workforce walk out, I think I should know why. Sorry. I don't want an apology. I want an explanation. What is wrong with you today? The girl in the corner shop? Um, yeah, it's an eat, yeah. I might have got her pregnant. You idiot. This just gets worse and worse. So, you knew about Katie and all? I'll only after they'd split up. But neither of your thoughts tell me. You had a lot on your plate at the time. Oh, so you were just being thoughtful? Well, we were, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. You told her then? Oh, yeah, it's like true confessions in here. And she's told me how she kept it quiet from me and all. Well, you know now, don't you? But, look, Katie never meant to hurt you. Oh, I'm sorry. Joking about how Carl's new boyfriend might be someone local. Or how you can't tell if someone's gay by looking at them. She was well enjoying it. But no, no, you're right. You run back to her. It doesn't matter what she's done to me. Oh, well, yeah, it does, actually, because that's why we split up, remember? And we're not getting back together. That's what I came to tell you. Well, it's good to know at least someone's conscience is pricking him. Here you go, guys. By way of an apology for this morning. No hard feelings, eh? What? You think we can be bought that easy? No, no, no. I'm going to do a bit of grovelling and all. I just want you to know that I think you're the best bunch of workers ever. And, well, I shouldn't have gone off at you like that today, so... What can I say? I was having a bad hair day. So, uh, we can scrap the air nets, then? I'm working on it. Oh. Well, uh, I think that's a very nice gesture. <laughs> You deserve a second chance. Yeah, go on then. There's one for you and all, Harry. Uh, no thanks. Suit yourself. Shame to waste it, Harry. That do you? Well, at least they're smiling again, which is more than can be said about you. Mm. Hiya, sorry I'm a bit late. Oh, you're all right. Uh, listen, Liz, um, last night when you came to the living room, you know, when me and Charlie were talking, did you, um, hear what we were talking about? No, I can't say I did. I was rushed off my feet, if you remember. <laughs> Why, anyway? Oh, uh, nothing. Doesn't matter. 
I'll just get me back. Selena, I need to talk to you. Yeah, well, I don't need to talk to you. Just five minutes, that's all I'm asking. And I'm telling you, I'm not interested. Are you all right, Sunita? Yeah, I'm fine. Hello, Frankie, love. Right, look, love, you've just got to give him some time. How much time? I mean, am I meant to wait till Sarah's left home again? Or maybe it's till Davis left home and he's finally free of his flaming kids. That were always going to be one of problems, weren't it? Oh, don't you start. It's bad enough with Dad. I'm just saying, that's all. Hey, now there's a sight for sore eyes. My two favourite women sunning themselves. Oh. Well, it would be. One of them didn't look so upset. You should be out having fun now that your exams are finished. Not sat around here moping. And who am I supposed to have fun with? Sarah hates my guts. And my boyfriend, well, he don't want to know. Oh, and before you say it, go out and find a young I wasn't going to. Look, I know that you still love him. And I know that you're hurting. But if you think I'd see you miserable rather than happy, even if it is with him, then you're wrong. Do you mean that? Of course I do. You're my daughter. I want to see you smile again. Come here. Oh. Hey, it'll all work out in the end. Now go and wash your face, come and have something to eat, and I might even fit in another driving lesson before I go back to work. Hmm. You feeling all right? Yeah, why? Well, because you more or less just said that you wouldn't mind her getting back with him. Yeah, well, I've learnt my lesson, haven't I? Gloating might send her back. Treading carefully might keep her here. Right, I uh, better be off. Right, OK. No, it's all right, you stay here, finish your drink. I'll see you in a bit. All right. You know, I'm beginning to like it here. Hey, see, I told you you'd get used to it. Yeah. I reckon we can make a real go of it, you and me. Hmm. Of course, it depends a bit on the menu. What do you mean? Well, you know, pizza, I can just about stomach. But a bun in the oven, well, that's a different thing, isn't it? See, what I'm saying is, sweetheart, if you think you're off the hook, forget it. Because if that bun turns out to be yours, I'm going to be out of here faster than that little trollop can say maintenance. That's after I've made sure you can't bake no more. Mm. They're such a loving couple, aren't they? Do you want another copper? No, thanks. How about another biscuit? No, I don't want another biscuit either. Look, love, I think you've put it off long enough, don't you? I'm scared, Shell. I mean, what if I am pregnant? What am I going to do? Hey, you don't even know if you are yet. You could be torturing yourself over nothing. That's why you need to get in there and find out. Yeah, you're right. So, come on, then. Right. Wish me luck. Here, yeah, have you done your cycling yet? I'll well, be fair, Vera, you've got her a day off. Yeah, but God won't open to cycle to Cleethorpes and that. Well, neither am I. It's an exercise bike with a map on the wall. It's not real, woman. Yeah, but your health is. Listen, I want you to do double today. Double? Well, why not? You should be feeling fitter by now. I'm going to check that myelometer when I go on. Oh, hello, Mrs Baldwin. What can I get you? A cup of tea, please. Milk and sugar? Just milk. Skimmed or unskimmed? You're taking a mick. Eh? Ten miles. What have you got? Uh, oh, now, come on, so we had an agreement, didn't we? Yeah, ten miles a day. I don't know about twenty. No, I'm right, right. Do fifteen, I'll tell I had a pain in the chest. Or something. Right, I'll tell you what. I'll do it for a tenner in advance. Tenner? Take it or leave it. Right. Yeah. Cheers. There you are. And if there's anything else you want, you only have to ask. You know the shop on the corner of Coronation Street? The one that sells veg? Any 
pretty good, is it? Oh, yeah. Shop there all the time. Bit pricey, mine. The girl seems nice. What's her name? Sunita. Oh, yeah, she is. Pretty, isn't she? Surprised she ain't got a boyfriend. Well, she used to go out with Dev at one time, I think. Really? Yeah, and then there were Kieran, you know, the Irish fella behind bar. Well, they were going to get married, but word had it that she jilted him. Puts herself about a bit, then, eh? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, there is some women round here that collect trousers, but Sunita's more of a romantic, you know. I see. Anyway, how are you settling in love? Not as fast as my husband seems to be. Well, it must be hard moving to another area. I nearly called round the other day, you know, just to be neighbourly, but I thought, no, she'll be thinking I'm nosy in that. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you pop round for a coffee when you're finished here? Hey, that'd be nice. See you later, then. Thank you. Sunita, you all right? Oh, Sunita, I'm so sorry. Look, it's not the end of the world, you know. If you decide to have the baby or not... It... I am not having it. Well, that's OK, I, and I will be with you all the I way. I am not having it! Yeah, I know. I'm not pregnant. Oh. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. It's just that... It's just that I kind of got used to the idea of being a mum. Now suddenly I'm not. <laughs> I know it's silly. Of course it isn't. I remember when I thought I was pregnant with Peter once. I was really caught up when I found out I wasn't. And the timing was all wrong. It's for the best, you know. I know. I don't want to be pregnant by some married man who I hardly know and don't even like very much. I do want a kid someday, though. And you'll have one someday. You'll meet some nice, caring fella who you'll fall for and you'll get married and you'll have loads of kids and you'll be dead happy. So will you. At least you've got a fella, eh? Oh, yeah. What we like, eh? Men. We don't know the half of it. Come here. <laughs> So what were your old house like, Ben? Oh, beautiful. Got it just how we wanted, you know. Great big kitchen with granite worktops on. The bathroom was to die for. Gold taps, power shower, the lot. Oh, mm. sounds wonderful. It was. Still, I'll have it all again, won't I? Once it's sold, I'll be rolling in it. <laughs> here, by the way, do you know of any gyms round here? Only me and Danny like to keep in shape. No, I don't, but, I mean, you can always come round to our house. Me and our Jack's got his own exercise bike. Oh, right. One of them fold-up jobs, is it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm, I used to have one of them. Not very comfy, though, are they? You should see the ones they had at our gym. Gel seats, the lot. Oh, yeah, but we're only using it until we get somewhere better. <laughs> you should join a gym yourself, cos then you've got the perks, you know, the solarium, the spa and all that. Yeah, do you know anywhere they do Pilates? Pilates? No, not really. But there's some fancy restaurants in town. I bet they do it. <laughs> you know what, V? I like you. And there's not many people I can say that about. Oh, thank you. In fact, I've got a proposition for you. You don't mind if I join you, do you? No, I suppose not. Well, Maria you must be chuffed about this job anyway. Yeah, she is. Well, I mean, she has a few doubts, but I guess I can't blame her, having to move and everything. <laughs> Call that moving. She should try Amsterdam or Canada come to that. Yeah, she did, but it only lasted a couple of weeks. I suppose it was a bit daunting not knowing anyone. Yeah, but you just have to go out there and meet people, don't you? Be adventurous. Still, I suppose not everybody's like that. Some folk are just happy to stay in the same place their whole lives, aren't they? I suppose Maria's just one of them. Oh, uh, well, she's not the only one. It's my pizza at Lou. So, come on, then. Tell me all about this job. You really want to know? Yeah, of course I do. It sounds dead exciting. OK, well, yeah, there'd be about 50 staff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be doing pretty much the same job as in Canada. What's he doing with her? Don't know. He's going to be keeping his distance. Ooh, yeah. Flipping short distance. Um, yeah, I suppose so.
You little toe rack. Uh, um, the mileometer, it has stuck. Was it ellers like stuck? Do you mean to tell me I've been giving you fibres for doing my exercises and you've been clocking it on there? Come on, own up. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you should be, you little cheat. I was going to do it, but I was knackered and I didn't want to let you down. You didn't want to miss out on the money, that's what you mean. You, you wait till I tell our Vera. I bet you can't, can you? Because then she'll know that I've been doing your exercise for you. Or pretending to, at least. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves trying to put wool over my eyes. Oh, now, after all I've done for you two. V, you're asking too much. And why were I asking? I don't want you back in hospital again. And then me going visiting you and then having to tell me you're dead. No, well, it won't come to that, will it? How do you know? Because I'll do me flaming exercise if it means that much to you. Do you mean it? Hi. Jack, I'm only thinking of you, you know. I know, I know, I know. Right, clock that back to now. I may as well make a start. Oh, you don't have to bother with that. How do you mean? <sighs> because it's out of date, isn't it? Nobody uses them anymore. They, they join a gym. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> 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 this is going to be getting on very well, considering the divorce, <laughs> huh? Yeah, they do, don't they? <gasps> Do you want oh, another drink? Um, no, I'd best get going. Maria will be wondering where I am. Yeah, she was, actually. Maria? What the hell do you think you're playing at? You promised me you'd stay away from her. But this is all you're doing, innit, you sly cow? Oh, are you always this friendly to people? Maria, we just... I don't want to know. Get lost, superior. Well? What? We just bumped into each other. Oh, and then you just tripped and fell into the seat next to her, did you? You must think I'm stupid. She bought me a drink, that's all. That's all? Yeah! To congratulate me on this promotion thing. No, 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 she just started asking about the job and I guess lost track of time. <laughs> must leave your senses more like. Nick, can't you see what she's doing? She's making a play for you. Maria, don't be ridiculous. She's shown an interest, that's all. At least someone is. Oh, and that's a dig at me, is it? No. Yeah, it is. All right, well, you could show a bit more enthusiasm, yeah. Well, she fed you that Oh, line. don't be stupid. Me stupid? She's got you eating out of her hand and you can't even see it. You feeling all right, woman? Well, if they can do it, why can't we? But because they're loaded and we're not. Exactly. But at least I'm making a start. I've got a second job now. All right, doing what? Working for Frankie. I'm doing her ironing and helping out in house a few hours. Oh, you mean you're a cleaner? No, I'm not. I'm a housekeeper. Look, I've got my own key. Oh? And how much is she paying you for this privilege? £10 for the ironing and £5 an hour for rest. Oh, why? Well, just what her window's doing. Oh, I don't know. Hey, could always ask her. Anyway, I'd better get started on this ironing. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've proper landed you in it there, Anna, having to join a gym and that. Oh, forget that, son. By the time she's saved up enough for that, I'll be long gone. Bit of advice. Always allow a woman her dreams. Keeps them occupied. Also keeps them off your back. Danny around? Uh, no, he's not at the moment. I thought he was working late. Yeah, yeah, he was, but uh, he's gone out to look at a house. Never mentioned it? No, he saw it in the paper. Thought he'd better go and have a look. I see. Well, the surprise is our Danny, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he is. Thanks. Bye. You again. Yeah. This time I'm not leaving till I've got some answers. Is it true you're pregnant? Who told you that? It don't matter who told me. Is it mine? Why? Are you going to offer to marry me? Oh, no, you can't, can you? Cos you're already married. Look! Just tell me, hey, I've got a right to know. If you're suggesting I sleep around, I can assure you I don't. So what are we going to do? We? It's none of your business. What are you talking about? Of course it's my business. Look, Sunita, other blokes would be asking you to prove it, but not me, mate. I'm holding my hands up and I'm willing to pay, so book yourself into somewhere private and I'll foot the bill, OK? No, it's not OK. You're not thinking of having it. Sunita! You're a young, attractive woman. You don't want to be tied down with a married bloke's kid. That is no life. That is no life. 
What are your family going to say? Get out. Well, they ain't going to be too Get pleased. Get out not. now! Sunita, listen. Oh, I need some answers and I want them now. There's too much at stake for me to be playing games. It's all right for you. I've got a marriage and a family You to... selfish, arrogant pig. You know what? I've a good mind to tell your wife what you're really like. You go anywhere near her. Get out! <laughs>